All right, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Six and a half minutes past the hour. It's a brand new hour and a brand new day. If you're joining us live, we thank you so much for being with us. The number 866-WE-BE-BIG. At any moment during this hour, we could do unscreened phone calls, and so that's there for you. Today, we'll uh, uh, talk about a great charity from last month, the beneficiary of the uh, Rick and Bubba Buffalo Wild Wings Charity Charge, uh, and uh, we'll introduce you to the folks with Find You Foundation uh, and talk about the next charity charge, which is coming up this Monday at Participating Buffalo Wild Wings. I say this Monday, then ne- next Monday. Uh, and uh, and so we look forward to that, uh, which means that we'll hang out, see Tim Spencer with Buffalo Wild Wings. The bu- We also have Adler back in town from uh, his trip to uh, Totality in Austin, Texas, with his three-year-old daughter, Ruby. All the stories that come with that. That's there for you. Bible study live today, noon central, and a whole lot more. Right now, uh, let's bring in over to my left, Mr. Greg Burgess, and to my right, it's Michael Helms. What's up, guys? How are y'all? Gentlemen. Yo. What's happening? Oh, I don't know it. You don't know it. How are y'all? Good, 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 good. Uh, we were discussing some things off air that will now trickle on air. Um and have you, whenever Greg Burgess gets something on his mind, buddy, let me just tell you, he's all in. Yeah. Uh, and he had seen a movie uh, that was on Netflix, a Mel Gibson movie, that he said, hey, man, have y'all seen this? And we'll do this from time to time. Matter sure. of fact, I use y'all a lot on some, like, street cred uh, with Terry yeah. on what we should watch. We hey, you know yeah. each other yeah, yeah. to hey, watch guys, certain things. The yeah. guy said, because we all have similar tastes, yep. hey, the guy said that this is really good, you know, yeah. and I've used y'all a lot I didn't necessarily say that. it was really good. I just said it uh, was the the end was really interesting. No, you said it was good. It was good. Yeah. Uh, but, I thought it was good. Yeah. And um, But I shouldn't have, I should have just said, hey, you need to watch that and left it at that. Yeah. Because but you never you kinda, do that. But you can <laughs> see, because I'll be Thank honest, you, and I'm very Thank good you, at seeing it. where movies are going. Yeah. But they got me on a part of it. Uh-huh. Now, another part they didn't get me on, but they right. did get me on, on the main part. Well, this is the 2022 movie where Mel Gibson is a shock jock radio host. It's overnight, uh, and the tables turn on him when he's live on air in the middle of the night where a caller calls in and – uh, and claims that he's got his family hostage, and it's because of something he's done to him, and this kind of, and then it, and then then it it takes you through them being on air and working through this. Uh, he does a uh, a radio show, a talk show, where he people call in and and talk about their problems, and he gives them advice and all this kind of. But he's way over the edge, very yeah, Howard Stern like. Right, shock job. And. Um, and so Greg said, you know, hey, and because it was radio, yeah. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. check this out. Mel Gibson. And, uh, you know, because we're on senior citizen schedule, uh, yesterday afternoon we had dinner early yeah. around 445. <laughs> and uh, we were just sitting down and being empty nesters right now, Reese being in Huntsville, uh, sometimes Terry and I will go, hey, what you want to watch for dinner? You know, like, yeah. like as we sit down, let's watch something. And a lot of times we don't have time for a movie. But last night – I was pressured, and you were pressured, Helms. We better watch this, yep. or, or or Greg declared he was going to tell the ending to us. Yeah, and so I was like, "Let's go all in, Terry." I said, "Greg is all about this movie. He won't." I hush. just said that the ending. That's one to see on that, and I thought it was a pretty good movie. An hour really and forty five minutes later, Terry was wanting to call you and said she'll never what get was this so time bad back. About it? What did you think was? I mean, uh, she, I, as she many did, movies, if we watch this, as good as any I, of the other. Well, she no, just, no, it's not. No, it's yeah, not. Number one, it's no, not. It's not a very good movie, Greg. It's I not. I watched. Uh, you, you'll be envious of my decision, Speedy. <laughs> okay. Because I watched 20, 25 minutes of it and was like, I'm not watching any more of this. But because of the ending. I went and watched the last 10 minutes to get the ending brilliant. because of That's this one over idea. here. That's, That's brilliant. And because I didn't want to, I didn't want, so I y'all wanted didn't to see. I'm just kidding. Let me give this right When the right family was kidnapped so, and all that, y'all didn't think that was interesting? I, I, well, no, I, I no, didn't that, watch that part of it. That was so, suspenseful. I, I did think, I was like, okay, wow, what I mean, in the was, world? If you didn't know that there was something, right. but then I thought the, it was about as the movie family being stressed and all that. But, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It's as yeah. good as any of that. I mean, I ain't say it was the greatest movie in the world. I thought it had a unique ending. I'll say now, this. the second part where they got it, get kind of get you, and then they get you again, I, was, I saw the second one yeah. coming. 
The yeah. guy fell down. The I, I liked it a little better than Terry. Not much, but you know Terry. Oh, you know our so wives. Sometimes our wives think. Ah. It just, Lisa was just mad because she thought she was caught up in the storyline, and then when it ended like it is, then she was mad. Do you know? Do you know she what? Said, I, it's stupid. Do you know yeah, what I felt like at the, when I finally went to the end and watched it? When I well, fast forwarded through all that? the stuff y'all are talking about and went to the end, I felt like this was Greg's way of getting us. Right. Guys, it, like, he set us up. He set us up. Time out. He set us up. Time out. As many movies as we talked about you're telling me this movie's that bad compared to i mean it wasn't a great it, it, as far oh, as mel gibson movie, movies it it's at good, the bottom it, it had a good gotcha part it, yeah it was a it was a little and that's my point story and, and that's my point is i think that's the only reason you wanted to watch it <laughs> yeah. us to watch it because you, it was almost like you yeah. were playing a prank on but us. i messed yeah. it up by yeah. i felt like you were pranking you us if i have just said hey watch that it would have been you. right because I honestly thought, well, this is one movie. This that somebody's got his family mm-hmm. captured. Because I don't care. If no, I did too. Right. I did too, Greg. And, you know, I thought that as well. And, and that was, it was, and I don't like that. And it was done pretty so well. I just bailed. Yeah. And and then I, they they got me on the they <clears> did <throat> they got me mm. on the on, first on the, part on the first part. Yeah. Well, because you hyped the ending well, so well, much, I was look it. I was looking. For, I was like, okay, he's talked about this ending a lot. Right, yeah. So about halfway through it, I told Tara, I was like. I think I know what's going on. Yeah. And, and I said, this is a bit, yeah. you know, uh, and, and it was. So and it, then when, it, when they got, when he got him mm-hmm. and, and they let him in on the joke, right. then they turn around and get Mel Gibson back. I right. saw that part. Right. I didn't think that guy was dead. Um, on the line is the name of it. And just understand. I said it's a great movie. It, I just said, I, I will, I will admit this. I, I thought that it was a movie about mm-hmm. the guys. Uh, I'm on the radio. You got to admit, that's a pretty good storyline. Yeah, yeah. You, you've, Cause stress, and I've got your family kidnapped. We're going live, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm making you pay for it. Yeah, and then come find out it was all a put on. Right, I thought that's pretty good. Um, boy, did you? You, I mean, you really, did. You, you, you really, really loved did. it. I didn't realize I mean, you y'all really were. Sold I didn't between, realize y'all were so highbrow movie yeah. critics. Uh, well, between that, you and hey, between, Siscoe Ebert. Yeah, yeah that's between what I'm you saying. and this, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Between y'all you and this one. truck, that's all we've heard. Yeah. yeah, this movie and the truck. I know. Um, I mean, good night. I thought you were a paid spokesman for the truck for a while. Yeah. I mean, for the movie for a while. Well, I'm just said it was a unique ending, which it was. <laughs> I didn't say it was the greatest movie ever made, but it's as good as some of the other crap. I know it ain't Halo. But I mean, it's as good as, as anything. Is it, he's injured now. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, Terry. I'm. It's a little bit like. Uh, well, Lisa was mad Lisa. because she got caught up in the fact she was like, "Oh my God, yeah. look what they're doing to his family," and it wasn't real. I sometimes that I made sh- her mad. She said, "I wouldn't have watched it if I'd known that." Yeah. I said, "To me, I and thought I, that actually made it better." Yeah. Yeah. It, it, correct. But to, to Terry, no. No, Lisa was mad yeah. about it because yeah. just like she got caught up in the storyline right. and right. you was all a suspense and all this is mm-hmm. going on. Oh wow. What, like when he shot the guy in the head right there, in in right before they told mm, him it was a joke in the studio. You know, I was like, "Wow, this is good." Uh, it had me the first probably thirty minutes of it. You to talk like when he called if in I about the stressed, family. Yeah, I think if, if you hadn't stressed the ending, I might have. Yeah, because you said there's going to be something that's going to happen. And, so I started. Well, that would be. I started looking a little bit more into it uh, because but, he but, went ahead and punked the guy right out of the gate. Remember when he had, like yeah. he threw him off the show? Yeah, immediately. Right. You know. But uh, in hindsight, around six thirty, Terry almost called you. Well, I'm sorry. I apologize. I she said. Talk. She said, "Give me his number." <laughs> I, again, I, I, now is it any one of Mel? It's no Patriot or no. you know. <laughs> but as far as Mel Gibson's selection, but I thought it, I thought it was pretty creative. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It's no Halo. Yeah, that's for sure. Ain't no none of that. <laughs> what was that other one? That baseball movie was so corny. Oh, Field of Dreams. Y'all never did watch it. Field of Dreams. And I oh, was, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Hill, the, the hill, hill, the Hill. I want y'all to watch that. Yeah, too. I haven't. Uh, I now haven't. I probably I, won't. I, I, some I'll corny tell you, spots. I tell you this: I was <laughs> going to watch it, and then you came in talking about it, and so I didn't. Yeah, probably won't now. No, I wanted y'all to give me the corn factor on it. No, what? No, let me. You, when you bashed it, talking about how corny it was, I was like, well, I said there's just a couple things we need to point out. The people of Israel need help, and we can all make a difference through Ma'oz Israel, a respected Messianic Jewish organization that believes in Christ just like we do. This top-rated charity has over 50 years in operation. The atrocities of war and its pain will last for years. Emergency war relief is needed to help folks regain hope, rebuild lives, have food, medical supplies to survive, even needs for children in school. Make a difference now by going to IsraelNeedsMe.com or RickandBubba.com under the sponsors. 
pictures. Oh, look, honey, the ants are back. Wow. We leave one itsy bitsy speck of food out and they appear out of nowhere. Yeah, it's pretty hard to believe we used to try to get rid of these guys. Now they're just part of the family. <laughs> To be honest, I liked our family the way it was before they came. I guess it's time to call Cooks. You don't have to live with pests. Get proven protection from Cooks Pest Control. Call or go online for a free quote. Cooks Pest Control. Resolving to eat healthier this year was easy. Actually doing it, not so easy. Well, Field of Greens is our healthy super fruit and vegetable habit in my house. Each super fruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you resolve to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. Get 15% off your first order with free rush shipping at fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba or go to rickandbubba.com. Patriot Mobile offers the same dependable nationwide coverage we all want, accessing all three major networks, but without funding agendas you don't agree with. Switching sends the message you support free speech, religious freedoms, our Constitution, as well as our military, veterans, and first responder heroes. Their 100% USA-based customer service team makes switching easy. You can keep your number, keep your phone, or you can upgrade. Your choice. Check them out at patriotmobile.com slash bub and get free activation or find the link at Rick and Bubba. Com. There's a popular saying out there, health is wealth. And folks, I couldn't agree more. If you're dealing with everyday aches and pains, I want to tell you about Relief Factor, a daily drug-free supplement developed by doctors. It's not just a pill that masks pain. Relief Factor uses a unique formula of natural ingredients that work together to help reduce or eliminate pain. Try their three-week quick start kit for only $19.95. Go to relieffactor.com or call 1-800-4-RELIEF. You can also find the link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsor. Debt keeps you tossing and turning at night. You can't get away from it. Insanely high interest credit cards and loans make it nearly impossible to pay off your debt. There's a new way out of the debt trap, Pivotal Debt Solutions. Pivotal Debt Solutions can cut or even eliminate interest. They can find programs to write off your balances. They find every solution possible to end your debt. Before you do anything, contact Pivotal Debt Solutions first. Talk to them for free. Find out how fast they can help you get out of debt. Just visit zapmydebt.com. That's zapmydebt.com. The best thing to bring with me wherever I go, my Raycon Everyday Earbuds. Raycons offer amazing audio quality at half the price of other premium audio brands with noise isolation, three customizable sound profiles, and a 32-hour battery life. They're perfect for listening to anything, anytime. That explains the tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Get 20% off plus free shipping at buyraycon.com. Slash Bubba. That's buyraycon.com slash Bubba or find the link at rickandbubba.com under sponsors. Springtime is all about fresh air, freshly clean homes. It's also the perfect time to give a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security, the only home security system we use and recommend. The system blankets your whole home in protection. It has sensors to detect break ins, fires, floods, and more. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you go to simplysafebubba.com. That's simplysafebubba.com for 20% off. Off. Also, find the link at rickandbubba.com under sponsors. There's no safe like Simply Safe. A wave of concern is washing over America. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of our fellow citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming presidential election. Hey, this is Rick. This is why we're standing with AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now listen, AMAC is more than a senior discount organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and hope our nation returns to traditional American values. Now, as an AMAC member, uh, we're not only going to enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, a free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community of like-minded patriots who love this country. Take advantage of this election year special. Four years for $30 and be part of the solution over the next four years by becoming an AMAC member. You're strengthening a movement dedicated to preserving the principles we hold dear. Join now amac.us slash Bubba. That's amac.us slash Bubba. There's also a link at rickandbubba.com. Rick and Bubba's in Ohio! Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Pass the gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Day without him, brother. Rick and 
20 minutes past the hour. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today here on the Rick and Bubba Show. Uh, Greg uh, has uh, some movies he wants to offer us uh, throughout the week. We'll go home, we'll watch them, and then we'll come on the air and critique them. Uh, But (laughs) we are here, and we thank all of you for being with us today. Uh, Yesterday, we had a, a, a funny caller call in and say that We've influenced him in a negative way, and it and it ended up backfiring on him uh, when it came to uh, "Hey Little Person." But uh, let's not hey. forget that it is Masters Week, and Mike Stone's uh, big hit "One Week in April" is a classic, and really the only week that we can play this and it make any sense. Uh, years ago, we discovered it, and it's "One Week in April." Uh, John Rahm, who has uh, left the tour and gone to live, he hosted the Champions Dinner at Augusta uh, yesterday in the media. Uh, Helmsy has brought it up a number of times to me uh, where he's tried to give golf something, but all they want to talk about is the controversy between Liv and the PGA Tour. Uh, he One treated um, 34 guests to uh, um, his... Uh, champions dinner last night the media is trying to make a big deal out of you know he was the latest big name to leave and go to live uh, oh here they come they're all back the, the 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 actual golfers they they don't really have a big deal with it they try to create controversy but it is master's week and my, my neighbor's going uh i think she left yesterday i think to head that mm-hmm. way yeah, I've been trying to give it a little bit, gave it a little bit yesterday, but I, I'm tired of these commentators. That's all they want to talk about. That's all they want to and, talk about. And, and I want to tell them, y'all are the only ones that care about this. Right. Like, I want to see the azaleas. Right. I want to see the players. I want to see this beautiful golf course. Can we just set it aside course. for this one? Right. Guys, I hate to break it to you, but if you're going to be mad at anybody and talk about it, get mad at PGA. They're the one that went and mm-hmm. tried to merge some deal. Let, they act as if that never happened. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me ask because I'm out of the loop. Did uh, they not merging now? Well, they just hadn't come to have, a to yeah. a. Because you remember, and, and, well, because everybody's oh, yeah. like, "You big hypocrite!" Now you're exactly. merging with them and all right. that, but I haven't heard anything since. Yeah. But they may they've be. never been able to get anything done. Nothing yeah, official. The, the they unless something has changed, and I just didn't know. Season about. two of Full Swing yeah. on Netflix kind of documented all this, Greg. I know you're into Mel Gibson movies, but you might want to watch. You know, that. I, I like any documentary. Yeah, I, um, I would have liked golf. I could yeah. live with golf. It's kind of behind the scenes of how, uh, to Helmsy's point, it all went down, and and the uh, you know all the all the guys that were the mouthpiece of piece of the PGA Tour, Rory and and all them are like blindsided, like because really? they all stood, are you serious? stood up against it and didn't go get the money, right? Yeah. And then and then they don't get a heads up. All of a sudden they're checking social media and TV coverage. That. They're like, what? I you can know, see, I can um, see being mad. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's they, the 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 deal hadn't finalized, so there's still controversy, or whatever. But um. Uh, I, Scotty Scheffler in his uh, press conference yesterday, uh, after they do a practice round, they come in. He was asked about John Rom and uh, the Champions Dinner and what was on the menu, and and that was a kind of a lighthearted moment. But he ended up serving his guests his grandma's stew and a ribeye steak. Okay. Uh, but um, uh, it was kind of an interesting moment yesterday because a lot of them are are still friends and text and and hang out uh you know away from the golf You talking course. about nothing like the media's portraying? No, no, not at all. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And I and and every I mean it they can't say a sentence without going, well you know he's on the live and he's here and I, mm. I he's probably been he's they've lost respect for him. Right. And probably not so much for him because he joined at this point in time mm. but this and I'm like would y'all shut up? Just right. talk about this week. Exactly. That's all we want to hear about. This yeah. is a major. Right. Anyway, I mean, good night. It's frustrating. I did watch. Uh, I, I watched Jordan Spieth's uh, press conference. Yeah, I uh, watched a little bit of some of the practice rounds. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I finally just abandoned the whole golf channel mm-hmm. thing because all they want to do is talk about live. Right. That's it. Um, I watched. Uh, I think it's I one had one week in April, y'all. Come on. It's one week. In I watched April. a little bit of live from last night. Okay. That's one of my. I love that show. Yeah. And they didn't. At the moment I came in, they didn't talk about it as much. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, Scotty Scheffler's uh, press conference, and this was a pretty cool moment uh, when he was asked what's, uh, what defines him. Can I follow up? What do you think defines you? Gosh, I don't know. You probably have to ask my wife. Um, <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, I'm a faithful guy. I believe in, in, in a creator. I believe in Jesus. Ultimately, I think that's what defines me the most. Um, 
yeah, I feel like I feel like I've given a plot, been given a platform to compete and you know show my talent. Um, it's not anything that I did. You know, I think I sat up here a couple of years ago doing the the interview after the 2022 Masters, and it's like, yeah, I was underprepared for what was about to happen. I I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't, um, you know, I was very anxious that morning. I didn't know what to expect. And um, it's hard to describe the feeling, but I think that's what defines me the most is my faith. You know, I believe in one creator and I've been called to come out here, do my best, compete and uh, glorify God. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the uh, the media room was pretty silent after that. Well, they he's expecting that. Yeah. He's been. I don't know why they are not expecting it because he's been of he's course. been outspoken about his fate oh, ever yeah. since he you know a few years ago when he you know started winning all the time. And one of the nicest guys on tour. Nobody's ever said a bad thing about Scotty mm-hmm. Scheffler, and so humble. Oh yeah. And um, just I, he's one of those good guys. And but yeah, you you won't see this all over Sports Center today. No. Uh, leading up to that, it was uh, the the question before then is is you know what makes you happy and what do you enjoy about being out? You know, and then it, then the guy followed up with that question, yeah. and uh, it was uh, it was a. Uh, it was, I commend it was the guy for asking the question because yeah. he knew what the answer was going to yeah, be because yeah. it's not the first time. No, no. But again, we'll see Masters coverage all morning, and you'll never see that. No, and uh, you just heard the video portion of that, but you can tell that that uh, Scotty got kind of emotional he when, when he was tell. asked that. Uh, but it was a, a great moment in the, uh, the 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 press conferences that they have after their practice rounds yesterday with Scotty Scheffler as he's coming in as the favorite, number one in the world, uh, and uh, so it's. Masters week. It's one week in April, and uh, it is uh, time one for Hey Little Person, too. Can't yeah. wait to get to know this has you. nothing to do I cannot with. Wait. Uh, I've been a How about the caller that claims that he was listening and and he was screaming hey, and singing Hey Little Person, and there was a little person. Listen, you got to give him credit. Him. Who is it singing this again? I can't remember. His name. Uh, Mike uh, Stone. All right, you got to give him credit. It's all about the hook, and in this one, I mean, it gets in your head, and you can't mm-hmm. get it out. Well, if you're a good songwriter, that's what you're going for. Mm. Now, doesn't mean that I love it, but it, it does get in my head. <laughs> Back to the Masters. You know what I like doing? Uh, this, one week on, hey, on all all, of, all the tournaments, but this one too. When they're doing the live from, mm-hmm. I like when they're just showing somebody on the driving range hitting yes. balls. And I'll sit there and watch it for. Yes. I watch the same person hit the same shot for thirty minutes. Yep. Uh, and yesterday they I had, do, Greg. They, they had the practice. <laughs> Strange, round. I know, but I do. That does sound real. And uh, they had the practice <laughs> round live where they would go to different holes, and you could see the pros. They would drop like another ball and hit it again, whatever kind of, <laughs> and like one or two would hit it in the water, and they'd drop another one. And go, okay, I got to hit this one again. But it was, it was. Uh, they get out and they they talk about the different hole locations, and then they putt a little bit and kind of get you know. It's a, it's kind of a laid back to your point, Helms. I, I think I watched day. Rory McIlroy hit a five iron for thirty minutes yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I really, I think yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Enjoyed every second. Of it. Better not DA movie. Now, that's what we say now. I get why you didn't like the movie. My yeah. God, if you like that, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, no wonder you didn't like the movie. It actually had action in it. You know, maybe and it changed. I, I got I got an idea how we can pull him in. If Mel Gibson played golf, sure. No, he, he took in. somebody's golf bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they held it. They held it to family. Uh, I know about the par three tournament today. I'll be watching that. Okay, good, good. There you go. Look, hey, did you see how you looked when uh-huh, he said yeah, it? Yeah, I know. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Resolving to eat healthier this year, that was easy. Actually doing it, not so easy. That's where Field of Greens comes in. Better nutrition is a key to health and longevity, and a healthy diet could even help you avoid health risks that run in your family. Field of Greens is your healthy superfruit and vegetable habit. It's the only fruit and vegetable product that literally promises better health at your next checkup. Your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. Do your vitamins or green drinks promise? 
enhance better health? No. I love this stuff and definitely feel healthier taking it. Each superfruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you're resolved to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. And we got you a 15% off first order with free rush shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba for 15% off. Or go to rickandbubba.com. Find the link under sponsors. So there's many options for phone service. But how about spending your money with a company who shares our values? For 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been the only Christian conservative phone company out there. They offer the same dependable nationwide coverage we all want, accessing all three major networks. You'll get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding agendas you don't agree with when you switch to patriotmobile.com slash bubba. Now, switching sends the message that you support free speech, religious freedoms, our Constitution, as well as our military veterans and first responder heroes. It's a win-win. It's money you'd be spending anyway. Now it will be working to help make a difference, and their 100% USA-based customer service team makes switching easy. Now, you want to keep your number? Fine. You want to keep your phone? That's fine. Or you can upgrade. It's your choice. They'll also help you find the best plan for your needs. So check them out at patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. That's patriotmobile.com slash Bubba and get free activation. Springtime is all about fresh air, fresh starts, freshly clean homes, and it's the perfect time to give a fresh look at Simply Safe Home Security. The only home security system we recommend, the system blankets your whole home in protection. It has sensors to detect break-ins, fires, floods, and more, plus a variety of indoor and outdoor cameras to keep watch over your property day and night. It's backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. So you get fast emergency response when you need it most. Simply Safe professional monitoring agents can even help stop crime in real time with no contract and a 60-day money-back guarantee. You can try Simply Safe risk-free. Simply Safe will give you and your family a real peace of mind. So don't wait any longer. Get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for a fast protect monitoring at simplysafebubba.com. That's simplysafebubba.com for 20% off when you sign up for fast protect monitoring. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Hey folks, let me guess. Your medicine cabinet is crammed with stuff that doesn't work. You still can't sleep, you still hurt, and you're still stressed out. Well, reset your health with CB Distillery. CB Distillery's targeted formulations are made from the highest quality clean ingredients, no fluff, no fillers, just pure, effective CBD solutions designed to help and support health. In two non-clinical surveys, 81% of customers experienced more calm. 80% said it helped with pain after physical activity, and an impressive 90% said they slept better. If you struggle with a health concern and haven't found something that works, try making the change to CB Distillery. And with over 2 million customers and a solid 100% money-back guarantee, CB Distillery is the source to trust. They even have several products to choose from for pets. Get 20% off your purchase today at cbdistillery.com with the code Bubba. That's cbdistillery.com. Use the code Bubba for 20% off. Hey folks, Rick here. It's no longer a question of if something's coming, it's when. Now the only shock is what while you still have some control, are you going to do about it? Your first step is to head over to preparewithbubba.com. Your next step is stocking up on multiple one-week emergency food kits from My Patriot Supply. Priced at under 50 bucks, now's the time to buy in bulk. Since 2008, My Patriot Supply has helped millions of American families prepare for the uncertain future from natural disasters like hurricanes, floods. These one-week kits with ready-hour foods provide over 2,000 calories every day and sealed in Inside a rugged ammo can, these ready hour meals last up to 25 years in storage. 25 years. Just grab it and go in emergencies. Stock up on these one week kits your family needs at our special website. Preparewithbubba.com and protect yourself. Protect your people. Get these kits for under 50 bucks this week only at preparewithbubba.com. This week only. Preparewithbubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. It is 25 minutes till top of the hour. Thank you so much for tuning in to the kickoff hour here on the Rick and Bubba Show. We do just what the hour is named. We kick things off 
for the guys. 866 We Be Big. If you want to join in, uh, we'll be attempting some unscreened phone calls. Uh, 866 We Be Big. Uh, you help produce this hour. Uh, we will. Um, uh, we will showcase the, the last month's charity of uh, the uh, Rick and Bubba Buffalo Wild Wings charity charge, uh, the Find You Foundation. We've talked about them and how they come along the special needs community, uh, and we'll be uh, discussing them more uh, and uh, letting them uh, uh, give you some more information on their foundation and the great work that they do as we honor them today uh, with the a check presentation from last month's Buffalo Wild Wings Charity Charge and then promote this next coming Monday Be done. And, uh, Be done. And, and the Charity Charge at participating locations of Buffalo Wild Wings. Uh, and so that's there for you today, too. Don't forget Adler is back, so we can't wait to hear how it was on the road with his three-year-old daughter, Ruby, uh, where they went to, to, uh, to totality to Austin, Texas, uh, where it was cloudy. Uh, but he says we he got a little bit, uh, so we'll get an update from him and the travels of Super Dead headed to uh, see the uh, to- total eclipse. And then Bible Study Live today, noon central. 866-WE-BE-BIG is our number. We're doing unscreened phone calls. If you want to weigh in on anything we've discussed, uh, maybe uh, your love for Mel Gibson like uh, Greg's, uh, that's on the table as well. Uh, let's jump out. It looks like, uh, is that 813? It's 815. 815. 815. Okay, good. I didn't have my glasses on. What's up? Unscreened phone calls. I'm down in Dolphin, Alabama. Just uh, call and talk to Hounds about uh, you guys have a, a team at Jacksonville State getting ready to play for a national championship. I haven't, heard, I haven't really heard you say too much about that. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, by the way. Is Shannon O'Keefe bowling? and bowling. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Did yeah, say bowling? Yeah. yeah. Oh, here we yeah. go. Yeah. No, I just, I just yeah. Now, yeah, bowling. This guy's about to find out why we hadn't brought it up. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Because we actually wanted to promote them, not yeah. make fun of I them. I do want to promote uh, them, but I mean, you got to admit, when you heard no, bowling, you was a little No, listen, it, it's a great story, uh, and Greg Seitz did a phenomenal job in bringing this crew in. And to, huh. to start the bowling team at Jacksonville, and they're probably going to win Is the national first title year? in the first year. That's pretty good. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome, that man. Yeah. Let me give them that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to uh, – and Hey, yeah. Greg. Uh, By the way, and it is strange because a lot of – Can you smoke? <laughs> I need more of that. Uh, go ahead, Elmsy. I don't well, I'm just going to say you... the the it's weird how they they're doing this too, and they've done it in baseball as well. But Conference USA has their eight nine members for most sports, right? Yeah. But for like baseball has an extra team or two, and bowling has a ton of teams. Yeah. Hmm. And like Vanderbilt's in there, and um. There's just like five or six teams that are outside the traditional conference just for bowling. Gotcha. And they, they've said, <laughs> we actually sat with the coach. So it's a husband and wife duo who's the, who's coaching. Yeah. And we sat with them at the red tie event. Oh, and I asked her, I said, I, you know, she said, talking, she, he said didn't care. she said, listen, our, you know, our conference is so stacked. It's like if we, if we can win the conference, that's a, that's a big deal for us because that shows us if we've got an opportunity to win. The national title or not? Now, whether now the there's going to be other teams in the conference that obviously make it to the regional and tournament and all that. We'll have to face them again, but they're in the final four yeah. and likely going to win the thing. Yeah, how about that? In the first year. How about that? I can't remember and, the last time. I- and evidently, I'm getting texts from <laughs> from uh, guys on, with inside the athletic department that says that my dad is all about this now. Oh, love that! Right. I did see Tony's up. text about yeah. that. That's yeah. funny, and that's the second text I've got yeah. about this. Yeah, funny, so, funny, so Mac's funny. Getting into really on me. I laughed hard yeah. when I saw that. No, picture. anything, Jack buddy, State. I'll, I'll pull for him. Calm down, we got it, buddy. That's I, mean, a, I got that Jack State charity. room in my house. Y'all, if, y'all got Jack State if room. Mel Gibson, if Mel Gibson was on the bowling team, you'd be all in. Uh, well, boy, yeah. Hey, the phones are just stacking up here. Let's see if we can get to some. Uh, it says Kevin. I guess you've called before. Kevin, checking in? Uh, yes, sir. Just going to see if y'all have uh, been keeping up with those killer bees lately. Uh, no, I have not heard from him. Heard from How's he doing? Bees. 
Well, I was watching TV the other day, and O'Killer Bees was on that show, Moonshiners. It was like he's running moonshine for them old boys. Oh, boy. Yeah, I, I know. That's, that's, that's an old, old episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's been, it's, he did that a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, it, says, back. it says hey. Grant is checking in. Grant, yeah. what's up? What you going to say that, Grant? The Rock is coming to give Speedy the people's elbow on his candy ass. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know. All I heard was the yeah. last. Part and let me just said. reiterate to Greg because we've been doing this a long time. Yeah. There's a video option of this show, so when you do yeah. like signals uh, and stuff, yeah. people and see that. That's yeah. fine. That maybe this, that's yeah. they can even read your lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah they when can. You pull the, they can. When you pull the microphone well, away, good. they really can. Yeah. read Oh, well, that's yeah, right. That's right. a little bonus. I just want you to remember that because apparently a you forget a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? That's pretty good, huh? Say. Is that so? I guess that guy, since we brought up WrestleMania, he's wanting to be The Rock all the time. Is that it? Yeah. And I and look at Speedy. That's another thing I need to. I get Mel Gibson movie was not as good as WrestleMania that you were on fire about yesterday. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I just wanted that. to give information. No, we'll, I get it. It's we'll not, talk about things good, we don't know about. But it's. I mean, <laughs> let's go to Tom in Pell City. Tom, if Mel Gibson wrestled, you'd be all in. I like I was saying off air. Hey, Mel Gibson. I think this movie's his best work since Passion of the Christ. <laughs> What's up, fellas? Hey, how you doing? What's up? Hey, man, I'm in the bind. I got a favor to ask. All right. Number Too one, much helium? Who's been, who's, yeah, who's been the uh, married the longest in y'all's group? Greg. Uh, me. Greg. Okay. Greg. Uh, how long you been married, Greg? 35 years. <laughs> oh, wow. How about yeah. that? What do you think that, Tom? Yeah. Can you That's believe it? Good, you feel That's sorry for good. Lisa? Well, yeah. But. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I saw y'all's house during COVID, man. Y'all got a nice house, bro. Nice yeah. house. During COVID? But, uh, yeah, when you were yeah, there. When I had the back. Yeah, during the COVID thing. Yeah. They showed the. Oh, doctor. the yeah. video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He can't, you know what, Tom? You, you you can't hide it, can you, Tom? Uh, you can try to hide no, it, but you can't. can't. You can't hide it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you may have just saw the servants' is. house. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a five-year anniversary coming up tomorrow. Oh, man. That? Five. And five. Do you want Greg to yeah, sing there. to you? How about this? Go ahead, Greg. I know what, you got 30 more. Look out for that seven-year itch. Right, see, to get where I'm at, you got to get 30 more of those. Oh. How about right. that? Right. Uh, <laughs> How about what do I need to do for a five-year anniversary? How about that? Ooh, five Ooh, years. Five years, Greg. Uh, he wants to know. That's a biggie. That's it a biggie. Is. It is. Tommy, congratulations on all seriousness. That's right, Tommy. All right, brother. Yeah. Bye, Later, man. All right, let's Bye. see what he says here. Greg, what, what would he do? What should he do? I'll just take her out in a nice place get you something to eat. Like pizza, maybe? Yeah, maybe <laughs> pizza. That's what me and Lisa do. So. Yeah, just make it simple. Yeah. You know? Just, uh, make... just go buy her something nice. Well, you think buy you... some great advice. I don't some, know. Some hey. Best suggestions I've heard all day. How do you like that? I, I, I tell you what. On Netflix, there's a good movie. Mel Gibson's in it. Y'all uh -huh. can get some pizza and watch it. Oh. I hate to say this. On but the I don't line. Like we got tools here to pull this off. <laughs> on All the right, line. Uh, let's go to, uh, it says Huntsville, but up north Alabama, 256. What's up? Hey, turn your radio down, kid. Hello. Uh, oh. Huh? <laughs> this is Chad. Uh, what hey, up, Chad? Uh, okay, Chad. buddy. I can't handle that. Speedy. Chad was trying to weigh in. I think it was Chaz. Chaz? Ch oh, yeah. Oh, it was Chaz Bono. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Yeah. Your favorite, Greg. Good night. Look at that. <laughs> uh, let's go to 205. What's up, 205? Is this a... It's not me, is it? <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> What'd is. they say? It's, it's not me, is it? <laughs> yes, I did. I'm, I'm still there. I'm still there. Okay. <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just had y'all playing in my ear. I'm sorry. Did uh, Bubba have a falling out with Cedar Springs, Alabama? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I'm no. Serious. Is he not the pride anymore? No, no he's he still is, the pride. He is the pride. Yeah. Yes, he is the pride. He will always be. You the drive pride him through Cedar there. Springs. They'll come out yeah. in droves to hey, see him. Hey, look, you can't. You can't. I mean, you're from where you're from. He's also still Shakespeare's worst nightmare. <laughs> he is. He is. And the, and the master. Of the king's English. Pizza in a cup. Watch out. All right, we'll take come a break. On, we'll man. come right back. That was. Hey, I got a good riveting uh, screen phone calls. There you go. Look, you, the audience, you asked for it. You want to check in. So there it is. Can I? Well. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm just looking at this I, well, I want to. I, I, I got to ask a question about Cedar Springs. Okay. Cedar we Springs, Alabama. Yes. You go okay. through there a lot? Uh, I do, every day. <laughs> I got one question for you. Okay. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.
Okay, if you're facing $10,000 or more in credit card debt, medical bills, or other unsecured debt, or struggling to make monthly payments, you need to know there are special services available right now that can significantly reduce what you pay each month by 40% or more. And that means if you qualify, you could save hundreds of dollars every month. Most people don't know that these services are available to help Americans with overwhelming credit card debt get significant savings and immediate financial relief without filing bankruptcy. That's why accredited debt relief was established, and they've established a special hotline for you to call and learn what savings you might qualify for. They've helped consumers pay off over $1 billion in debt. They're A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau. So don't wait. Get the relief you need. The information's free. So call the accredited debt relief hotline now, 1-800-885-3500. 800 885 3500. Programming services not available in all states. Hey there, you and aisle two. I see you by the fiber and laxatives. You still using those to manage your constipation with belly pain? If your symptoms keep coming back, you may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. So you may need more than over the counter treatments to manage it. Ask your doctor about how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative, it's a once daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two, it may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual usual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-LINZESS. And Doug. Being a spokesperson's easy, kid. Just say, customize and save with Liberty Mutual. Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. That's not it. Let her be mutual. Mm-mm. Liberty musical. Nope. Lumberty um, line. It's two words. Liberty mutual. Got it. Don't not pay at libertymutnoodle.com. Wow. I guess I'll just do it. <clears throat> Only pay for what you need at libertymutual.com. That's a wrap. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Underwritten by Liberty Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates. Starting with one store in 1978, Boot Barn has become the largest Western and workwear retailer in the nation. Supporting those who feed, build, and protect America, we offer the largest selection of cowboy boots, work boots, Western wear, workwear, and outdoor gear. With over a half a million pairs of boots and thousands of top quality jeans and clothing, it's an honor to support the people who make our country so great. Boot Barn. Keep West. Resolving to eat healthier this year? That was easy. Actually doing it? Not so easy. That's where Field of Greens comes in. Better nutrition is a key to health and longevity, and a healthy diet could even help you avoid health risks that run in your family. Field of Greens is your healthy superfruit and vegetable habit. It's the only fruit and vegetable product that literally promises better health at your next checkup. Your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. Do your vitamins or green drinks promise better health? No. I love this stuff and definitely feel healthier taking it. Each superfruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was doctor selected for a specific health benefit. Some support your heart, lungs, and kidneys. Others support metabolism for healthy energy and weight loss. If you're resolved to get healthier in 2024, it starts with Field of Greens. And we got you a 15% off first order with free rush shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com. Use the promo code Bubba for 15% off. Or go to rickandbubba.com. Find the link under sponsors. A wave of concern is washing over America. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of our fellow citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming presidential election. Hey, this is Rick. This is why we're standing with AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now listen, AMAC is more than a senior discount organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and hope our nation returns to traditional American values. Now, as an AMAC member, uh, we're not only going to enjoy money-saving benefits, but also the AMAC magazine, a free Social Security and Medicare advice, a trusted voice in Washington, and a community community of like-minded patriots who love this country. Take advantage of this election year special. Four years for $30 and be part of the solution over the next four years by becoming an AMAC member. You're strengthening a movement dedicated to preserving the principles we hold dear. Join now. AMAC.US slash Bubba. That's AMAC.US slash Bubba. 
There's also a link at rickandbubba.com. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Day without him, brother. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here on the Rick and Bubba Show's kickoff hour. We appreciate all of you for making us part of your day. Uh, as you just uh, heard on unscreened phone calls, hey, you never know with this hour uh, what will be discussed or what we'll do. But uh, in most cases, we kind of skim the surface of some of the bigger stories of the day, and then we uh, jump into them a little bit more when the main show starts. That's going to be coming up right after top of the hour where Rick and Bubba, as well as Adler, joins us. He's back. Uh, from being super dead and headed over into Austin, Texas for the uh, solar eclipse. We uh, will hear from him and see how that went, get a recap, uh, and a whole lot more today. Also, uh, let me make sure that you know this portion of the show is brought to you by fieldofgreens.com. Uh, it's part of my day. Every morning when I get up, I do my field of greens. Uh, I try desperately to get over towards the kitchen area where the refrigerator is and uh, mix me some field of greens and then jump in the shower and head this way. That's, you uh, that's what I do. Field of greens could very well be the healthiest thing you do every day, and we want to make sure that you know about it. Uh, they've got all kinds of flavors, too, wild berry, strawberry, lemonade. Uh, they got lemon, lime, and others, and it's completely improved our life. Those of us that take it, we've talked about it, uh, and we want you to join in. Uh, let us uh, show you how much... Uh, we uh, uh, want you to be a part of this, that you have a 100% money-back guarantee. Now you're going to save 15% off your first order, plus get free shipping at fieldofgreens.com. Use promo code Bubba to unlock those savings and save 15% today, or you can find a link at rickandbubba.com under the Sponsors button. All right, so as we went to break, uh, Helmsy was looking as, at his computer. Uh, Cedar Springs, Alabama was brought up, uh, and he, you said you had a – Cedar Springs yeah. question. And I don't want you to get offended because I'll use location checks and stuff like that. And you don't know this area as, as well it's as okay. Greg. I mean, I went, to school, I went to school there. One of my kids played there. Yeah, but, but yeah, I don't were, know what you're talking about. You were a 204 guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, bud. You didn't go behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't know. You pretty much 204, Playhouse 431. Everywhere. Well, that's true. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. He, he may the, have had a gig at the old school. <laughs> you never so know. at the four way, <laughs> at the four way uh -huh. by the Cedar Springs Baptist Church. No, exactly where that is. Okay. Then you may know what I'm going to talk about too. Mm -hmm. I know Greg's going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. If the off the front of the hat, like if you pull up, I'm going home. I pull up to that stop sign. I got cedar. I got church here on my right, mm -hmm. and right across the street, I got a house. Yeah, basketball go. There is a big, gigantic white dog. Yes, that is always roaming around. Oh yeah, that she lives actually across uh, in the the brick house. Okay, that would be to your right. All right. Every morning, I want to go pet this dog. Listen. Is it a nice dog? Like I, I want to so. get no, out. Dog, it no. looks like the nicest. It will. It sleep. <laughs> It'll sleep. I'll be leaving, and it's laying on the center line of the road, asleep. I've, but I've, it's a four way stop, so it's okay because everybody's stopping. But yeah, that, I think it's a female too because it's kind of known. Actually, I'm not saying well. Say it, Greg. Some people like when you know how every community has this little Facebook page. They were even saying that, that uh, like giving the owners a hard time because they hadn't brushed their hair out. Oh, stuff. he's matted up. But and it wasn't bad. That, no, I, I hadn't fine. really seen it. I that hadn't. Bad. But no, that dog. And every now and then, there's another dog that hangs with it. Now, what I don't understand, sometimes they have that dog in the backyard in the fence, but the big white ones always, always out, mm. always, and always roaming, and always. It looks like Ain't it's just hurry. inviting. No, not in a hurry at all. Just inviting someone to come. I think pet. you need to get out and pet it. And I just don't want to be attacked if you know. <laughs> you don't but I, I've I, seen the dog laying in the road yeah, before, right in the right. either road. coming home late from a trip <laughs> or going, and I'm like, what? Is, this dog's gonna get hit. So you're telling me that's just a thing? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's known for it. And I, I do think it's a female. I may be wrong, but I think it is. Well, I, I won't when so you get badly. Out and check, it looks like a, just a friendly pet. When you get out and pet. pet it, flip it over and see if it's male or female. Greg, well, I, I, I think it's a female. It's tough to find out and see. But, uh, but yeah, I know though. exactly. That dog, listen, for years, I've always, I'll, I'll even roll the window down and speak to it. <laughs> <laughs> no idea the name. You say hey to it? Okay. Uh, All right, that was my question. Okay, I want. Right. I wanted to. I but wanted to know I, if the dog I, is I friendly because I really want to pet the At dog. At that four way, that dog is a. Staple, it just looks like and it. everybody knows him. Yeah, and you've, and you've. What What do you like when you roll the window down? What do you say? I say, hey, girl. 
stuff like that. You holler yeah. like, hey, girl. It may not be a girl. I think mm-hmm. it is. Somebody told me it was. They may not know. You know how you see about. those dogs and you think, well, that's a mean dog. Or you mm-hmm. think, oh, that's a sweet dog. Yeah. It, this looks like a just a sweet, friendly, like would be the greatest pet ever. I oh. think it's, I may be but stepping it's out. Huge. I may be, it's a great pair of knees, I believe is what it's, it is. Yeah, it's a oh, huge wow. dog. I think that's, that's a, that's I think a big that's in there. I may be wrong there. I'm not um, a dog expert. Okay. I'm close. Uh <laughs> Y'all do realize that at the end of this month is one year since I had them puppies. Good they were born. Gracious. That's when crazy. That hell started. <laughs> Woo! And uh and boy, your life changed for a while. Good night. You as remember long, you remember as long I, as I'll never weeks. forget how you said you went to Bojangles just to get some food and thought yeah, well, come back and then all hell broke loose. <laughs> Them puppies dropping everywhere. Um, Speaking of your house, um, I understand you're having some weird dreams. Y'all, and I've had this dream for at least, I'm going to say three times over the last few weeks. Okay. I keep, you know, we always talk about that you hate to wake up and it's almost time to get up. Yeah. It's 10 minutes and I got to pee, but I don't want to get up. Yeah. For some reason, I keep dreaming that I, and there's nothing weird happening in the dream. You know, when, like I, I'm not like getting up and like there's George Washington in the room. Or something. Right. I, I wake up. And I go in the bathroom and I turn the shower on and I've had I've hit my snooze and I'm getting ready for work, but it's a dream. And then all of a sudden I'll wake up and it's ten o'clock. I've what? got like four hours left to sleep. But I keep having a dream that I've already got up and that I'm getting ready to go to work. I've had it about three times. <laughs> and like I say, it's nothing weird. I'm brushing my teeth. But you, is it in the bathroom? I'm like, golly, I'm tired. You is know? it one of those dreams where it's like so real? Yeah. Uh huh. And it keeps happening. I keep dreaming I'm getting up, but I'm not. <laughs> I, and, but the good part is, and I, and because I love to wake up and have hours left to sleep, mm-hmm. it's usually 10, 11 o'clock. Ooh. And I'm like, well, I'll just turn back over. Yeah. Wow, well, what a weird dream. Oh. But no, I've had it a few times. Well, we can have some uh, dream experts. I'll keep you up. Uh, Email night. us. What's that mean? I don't know, but I keep getting up and getting ready for work. And 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 I'm mad because I gotta get uh-huh. up. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I wake up and I go, Well, I ain't gotta get up. Do you go ahead and pee when you get up? I mean, it just depends. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> and hurry up and get back into bed. I do. You're so I'm, excited. I don't want to get awake too much. I wonder what that means. So you're already up, your mind's going. Yeah, I'm, got I mean, light I'm on getting you. ready. I'm in the you know, I'm I'm getting getting my shower, brushing my teeth, getting mm-hmm. dressed. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I'll wake up, man. It's ten o'clock. I'm still in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do, what are you wearing? I ain't been eating a lot of pork. Yeah. You know, port gives you weird dreams. It does. It does. Well, it's called dreamland. That's right. Um, so do you, uh, when you get up and you're brushing your teeth, have you already put your clothes on or is yeah, it? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm usually standing there in my shorts. Okay. Uh, or sometimes I think I have got, I don't really you already remember. Got your, your already I, I just remember getting up. And it's like I've turned the clock off and I got to get up. Mm. I dream that I turned the clock off and everything. Mm. And then I, I go in the bathroom and it's like I'm getting ready and all of a sudden I wake up and I'm I'm like it ain't time. And you're saying that it's it's not a variation of the dream; it's the exact same dream, well, kinda. Eh, just the getting up part. Uh huh. It's just weird. Yeah, that is a weird dream. Mm-hmm. How about that? I'm gonna keep keep a head count, and see how many I have. <laughs> now, what but now I'm mad when I do that. And what wake do you think up. it means, Helm? If you, I don't know. If you wake know. up. And it's like, say I get up, the clock goes off at 2.15. And I, and I wake up and it's 2.10. I mm-hmm. can't stand that. That makes me so mad. Oh, it, oh it, so I get so this, angry. At least during this, every time I've woke up, I've, it's been nowhere near time to get up. Right. I've laid around and just, and, and like squirmed almost, because I don't want to get up and use the bathroom because it's 10 to 15 minutes mm-hmm. before I normally get up. And yeah, I yeah. should just get up and run back and be to bed. Or, or just be, be up. up. But, it, but worst case, just... At least run, use the bathroom, come right back, and, and I, get 10 minutes to just lay in there. And I've done this a couple of times since I was working this weird shift. Somehow at night when I was setting my clock, I, I, I changed the time mm-hmm. and get up, get dressed, be showered, be fully, and then look, and it's it's like an hour earlier than I thought it was, and I don't need to be up. <laughs> That's wow. I've done that twice. I think it's the drive. I think the drive I is, in so, there and is go, so on you. I'm going to go, I have done, got up, gotten ready, mm-hmm. and I don't even leave for another hour. Golly. I don't. I listen. It's the, a weird world I live in, is. man. The drive is not terrible. I mean, I get tired of it at times. Okay, but when you do it, it's the time. It's crazy. People I always see, say, "I don't know how." You, I don't the see drive how you ain't. Do it. The drive's not a problem. The drive is not bad. It's when you it's do it. It's the time. You're right. right. Oh yeah, hundred percent. You're right. Can't all believe right, it. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Rick, Bubba, and Adler all join us for the main show. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Patch 
six minutes past the hour. The Rick and Bubba Show ready for another day uh, as we inch ever closer to the big year ender coming up on December the 18th. Uh, we start this hour with the national anthem. show and uh, today is gift number four and the 12 working days of christmas as we work our way to that big year ender coming up on december the 18th we have a lot to unpack on the program today we'll get bub in here and we'll kind of walk through uh, the buffet of items that we will work through today your phone calls will be part of it too at 866 we be big uh, we have uh, speedy and we have uh, the birthday boy adler and we have greg back into the broadcast plaza and teleport helmsy uh, is quarantined at his house. Bubba is uh, is quarantining, uh, just kind of staying away till I return on Thursday at his house. And of course, I continue uh, the quarantine as patient zero. Uh, tested positive for COVID uh, several days ago. Uh, by, by all practical purposes, it seems to be over. Uh, but I am following uh, the protocol uh, that I was asked to follow. So we'll return to the show barring some sort of um, un unforeseen turn. Uh, on Thursday because tomorrow would be uh, day 10 uh, that I have been away since symptoms started and it would be like day 14 since I was exposed. So uh, so that, uh, that'll that be tomorrow. So let's welcome back. Uh, no, what is today? Tuesday be Thursday. Welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. How about it, buddy? Rick, glad to be here. Thank all of you for being part of the Rick and Bubba show. And uh, Rick, we continue to, to work our way through this. And uh, so far, so good. We just take it day by day. I tell you what, we got a lot of Bubba in that in that camera today. That, uh, that, that, that's all good. Hey, I tell you one thing: uh, if you're if you think you're going to be too far away from the Odenville Christmas parade, get you a look today. <laughs> the, uh, how about how about this? We'll we'll talk about. Uh, we got a lot on the table, Bubba. First of all. I, I mean, I'm getting to the point now. There's, there's not a lot to, to update. Things are, are pretty much the same. Uh, praise the Lord. Continue. When I say continue to improve from, from the, the mild symptoms that I had, I, I feel kind of, you know, like uh, I basically am improving from a, from a cold is what it, what it has been like. Uh, now I have lost, the, and I'll tell you more about my updates on the continuing weirdness of not being able to smell and taste. Uh, but, uh, but feeling better, I even talked to the doctor yesterday and, uh, I asked him, I said, I'm, I'm really starting to kind of go stir crazy. I walked a little bit on Saturday and that helped got outside. I said, I, I'd like to kind of step into the world of exercise today, but what, what, what should I do and not do just kind of see where I am. And he said, well, don't do some full blown deal, but, uh, but get on the bike, get on old Peloton and, and see how it goes. So rode the Peloton yesterday, nothing intense, about a 20 minute deal on it. Uh, which I can, that's another story and didn't have any problems. You know, it didn't, it didn't cast me into some overwhelming fatigue or anything like that. So I honestly, not a doctor, I, I, I sense that the virus is gone. Uh, and, and now that, uh, that I'm getting back to a hundred percent. And when I say a hundred percent and Helmsy and I were talking about this in the break, when I say a hundred percent, I mean a hundred percent at 56 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, it's <clears> like, did I get up with a little bit of sinus pressure? Like I do every <laughs> December. Yeah. But did I stand up and it go away? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, do, do every now and then I go <clears throat> and cough. Yeah. But I do that every year at this time. Uh, do I ache a little bit and hurt in places? Sure. But I always do. So nothing abnormal, I guess is, is the better way to put it. And I do feel much better, uh, than I felt, um, you know, days past. So, so you know, a, a, a 20 minute ride on a bicycle might be a hard workout for some of us, Rick. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Bubba. I mean, I, I did not, for some of us. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I didn't do a lot of heels or anything like that. You, you, you would have been fine on that. Mm -hmm. Um, how about, uh, I think most anybody could have done that one, but, um, the, I will say this, you know, Eddie Van Adler is having a birthday today and I picked this coffee cup mm -hmm. just for him today with my buzz box coffee. As you see, I'm drinking out of a San Antonio. San Antonio. Mm -hmm. This is when we, our family went to San Antonio, went to the Alamo, went to a big rodeo there and spent some time. Of course, you know, you got to go on the river walk. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so this is a collectible cup. And we will today, Bubba, we have a song for Eddie Van Adler on his birthday. Of course, Edgar's has brought us another birthday cake. You know, now the Rick and Bubba show would never think if you have two birthdays back to back, just do one cake. 
uh, no. and, and recognize no. both people. We're going to have a no. cake for each person. Yeah. It, right. and, and yeah. Even, even though, uh, uh, I, I bet we're building up a lot of birthday cake. I hope it gets going somewhere. <laughs> you know, but, we, uh, we, we talked about that with them, but at the time we ordered it, every, we, we weren't shut down. So we just let it happen, but sure. We're, oh, we're showing the cake today and it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it really is. So this is now Adler really had two birthday cakes with his picture on it. He did. One, one was Speedy's <laughs> and one today we just put Ruby herself in there because it is Ruby Tuesday. It is. It uh, is. It's it, Ruby it Tuesday. Is, it is Ruby Tuesday. And so we have his daughter, Ruby. Uh, Edgar's did another magnificent job on this uh, beautiful and I'm sure tasty uh, birthday cake. And, uh, and, you know, when you come from a musical family, Bubba, Adler's dad, the great worship leader, Michael Adler, has written an original song that he will perform for his son's birthday. It's the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Uh, we're rolling. Thank you for being with us. Brand new hour begins now. Start this baby with a national anthem. Let's go. Seven and a half minutes past the hour, the Rick and Bubba show. How you doing? Uh, let's uh, let's get ready for another one. A brand new hour uh, on a brand new day. Uh, we got Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, and Helmsy. They've already kicked uh, kicked off everything with the kickoff hour. Eddie Van Adler returns. So the YouTube spirits is back. Uh, we kind of clunked along without him, but uh, thank you for being patient with us, tubers. Uh, but the man himself is back, so we'll get an update on what was it like to try to take a three-year-old all the way to Texas to experience totality. Uh, so we'll get that story today along with the other stories that are available. Wednesday Bible studies back today. Second Corinthians, we're getting toward the end of that letter. Boy, this has been a fascinating uh, walk through Second Corinthians. Uh, noon Central, 1 o'clock Eastern on the Rick and Bubba YouTube channel. It'll be archived soon after let's get him in here the silver tongue one the man with a golden voice professional lunch eaters man of the year the inventor of pizza and a cup shakespeare's worst nightmare and the master at a king's english ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for bill bubba Hey, How about it, Rick? Friends, neighbors, associates everywhere, welcome to the little party we call Rick and Booba. That's for our Spanish listeners. Yeah. You know, sometimes, I don't know why, but this whole town just seems so hopeless.
Tommy. Uh, Bubba, how do? I'm good, sir. How are you doing? Uh, big question. Did the archive make it yesterday? Did, uh, <laughs> did, it, uh, did it get delayed? Did it get flagged on the YouTube channel? Do we know? Did it survive yesterday? We're yeah, good? everything's good. Good. All right. Well, yeah. we were just a couple times. Adler, we were, you know, Speedy was in there. We were doing our best. I, I think the only time was Bob Seger at the beginning. Everything else was covered. Okay, good. Yeah, so that's well, good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Um, so if you do watch the YouTube archives, I, I do want to, because I, I, I had some people asking me this, and we, we do this. If we find a shirt that we like, we'll buy multiples of it. Bubba is not wearing the same shirt every day. We no, I, I've yeah. got a whole bunch of black ones. Yeah, Bubba's, for four yeah. days in a row, it looks like Bubba's had this shirt on. He has yeah. not. You talking about the man in black? Yeah, these, these, are, these, these, are, these are different. I definitely look better in black. Yeah, that's for yeah, sure. These are, different, black, these are different versions. Different. This is the different versions of the yeah. same shirt. It looks like on, so. On, if, <clears throat> so some of you on the archive archives, you, you're, you're thinking it's the same archive. It isn't. Hmm. If you'll notice, other people are wearing different shirts. Or is he doing yeah, like? The same style, too. i got different colors, but I have an abundance of black, and I always seem to look better Black. Yeah, was, was it was it Steve Jobs that wore the same clothes every day? Well, it wasn't the same clothes. I, I mean, same, same style. Yeah, yeah, he had that, not the same. He clothes. had a black t-shirt yeah. and jeans, or he had a yeah. turtleneck. And Bubba's yeah. doing that now, but these are all clean shirts. Yes. Okay, he's not wearing. He's <laughs> not, we know. He's not wearing the same shirt. And Bubba, I'm not helping you any because I've got two pairs of pants, uh, multiples, yeah, like man. three gray and three black. Love them. It's all oh, I wear. Too. Yeah. I got a pair on them yeah. right now. Yeah, and I've got about six different hoodies. And the logo's just a little Slightly different on each. So Slightly. I'm not helping yeah. when yeah. I come in. Mm. There, everybody thinks it's probably. Hey, yeah. it's well, I, I call it the uniform. Right, yeah. yeah that's that's, it. that's it. Uniform. It's almost like put, yeah. She says you can wear in the uniform tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Absolutely. like I say, if you remember the old days, if you went to a gas station, I mean, they had that same cover on. Oh, cover did. all on every day. Black yeah, shirt, little dicky jeans. So we we have a. Welcome back, Adler. We have a. We'll get Adler's update today. Glad you made it back, buddy. Hey. Two, two. Testing. Alive. Am Test- I alive? Yes. Testing for Adler. Wow. Okay. Travel with a three-year-old. Yeah. How about that? Mm. That was a great time. Yes, that's good stuff right there. So, you know, really traveling on commercial airlines can be a miserable experience by yourself. Uh, so when you uh, when you add a three year old on there, it's ooh, uh, ooh my. you're bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they just got you. you know, yeah, they, they got there's nothing to do. Yeah. So we'll uh, we'll get that update today. Couple of things I'm getting email about a lot. Uh, I'll hit those today. One of them is not going to be good good news for Greg. Not good news for Greg. And one of them, Poor Bubba, Greg. is one That's that you one of them that you and I have been studying, Bubba, for years. And it's one of our favorite uh, UFO deals. You know, Netflix has gone and they have done the. Uh, What's his name? Calvin. Yeah, Calvin Parker. Oh, Calvin yeah. Parker. Yeah, one of the best, one of the most important interviews we ever did for me, from my interest. Well, today, you know, when someone sends you an email, and I've got multiples on this, but then somebody you know uses all three of your names. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I have an email today that says Richard Lawson Burgess. If you have not gone to Netflix yet and watched them interview Calvin mm-hmm. from Pascagoula, episode one. If you don't do anything but look at episode one and listen to minute four through seven, and I think you should play it on the air, you are missing your best of moment. Well, all right. So I, 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 don't, I don't know. So you what don't have to of... talk me into no, uh, Calvin no. Parker discussion no. at all. And the reason it being, Rick, I think it was 1972 or three. It was the first time I had been exposed to UFOs mm-hmm. and UFO abductions. Mm-hmm. And there was a TV show on at the time, and I think it was called UFO. Do you remember yeah, this, Greg? I, I sure do remember And they would, they would kidnap people and slam this helmet on them and fill it up with this green uh, yes. liquid that you could breathe. Yes. I and I was horrified that. of that, being grabbed in the middle of the night and that can shoved on your head. I remember UFO. that. And, it abs- yeah, I and remember. then if they brought them back out, it was like liquid oxygen they could breathe. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. lungs yeah. could breathe. Yeah. And, if, and, if you, they got, and if you broke out of it, you, you would take that helmet off and you threw up this green yes. stuff and coughed and you it's could like breathe air again. It's like you're in the womb again. Yeah, it was crazy. So was anyway, crazy. Yeah. I, so I was horrified that there was a, 
actually that was actually going on in real oh, life. You yeah. sprayed it happen. I've seen some sort of YouTube thing. We've interviewed <laughs> we've interviewed Calvin Parker. <laughs> right, it? there it is. I give you the heaves now. It. We've interviewed Calvin Parker on the show and apparently Netflix is now doing a Calvin yeah. Parker. It's, Cause hadn't he it's, pa- did he pass? Yeah, he has. Yeah. 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 Did you know a witness um, has come forward to that now, Speedy? Did you see that? There was a lady that said she she was off in the distance, scared terrified for years to yeah, say. I remember that. Yeah. But yeah. she yeah. said she's seen it. Yeah, I remember is that. Is she too. just piling on? I don't know. What you, what was you gonna say? I was, I was just gonna say it's episode one of the Netflix series. Uh, yeah. it breaks down Calvin Parker. I watched the trailer. Ooh. Is the whole series it's, about him or no, somebody, no, somebody's no, calling the best of moment, but we had him on the show, so I don't know. Bubba Rick and Bubba. Bubba, also, we must a- ask about uh, some sort of water leak you have at the house. Mm-hmm. And I keep getting emails from Steeler fans that want you to pick another team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll cover all that. And if that's not enough, we still have the 12 working days of Christmas. I don't know if you mentioned that in the list or not. I did. And, I did. And, mm-hmm. uh, Rick, the fact that um, we, we, we've got the former head of the Israeli space defense who has come out and said, we, there's aliens out there. They've already contacted the Americans and us. Bubba, when I saw the, the headline, and, and I'm just going to tell you, I mean, w- when we just have him saying that he has met with, what was the title of this galactic bunch? He, the he, Galactic, galactic Fed- League. Yeah, the Federation. The Galactic League. So, mm-hmm. so anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at that today. The Galactic too. Federation. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Let, yeah. Let's get our galactic uh, yes. space yes. creatures correct. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I will say this too, Bubba. And also, and of course, when I see the, the story, I heard the guys talking about the story uh, out of uh, Minnesota. I don't want to, you know, offend anybody in Minnesota who thinks that, that uh, you know, this is the epitome of, of, uh, of America's evil that someone put Christmas lights up and may have offended the rest of the neighborhood. Um, So Bubba, here we go. So I I wanted now, let me tell you, is is, uh, for uh, this is don't, don't picture some big production here because here's what I've noticed. Well, I think to myself, you know, back the first time we were all in some sort of quarantine, you know, this is before young Broderick, you know, had a full-time job. So I had him get his camera stuff out and he shot me doing spiral dogs and all that. Well, I had, you know, illusions of grandeur that I could do that again. I can't book him. I, I can't get him. He's, he, he is, uh, he is under the gun and working, uh, hours on end at his job. I can't even get my own son to book him to be my cameraman. He's drawing so, a check now, but yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah so, he's, out, he's outgrown dad. Yeah. I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't book him. So I'm not going to host this. I'm simply going to give you a visual. Uh, you know, we, we started doing the Griswold Christmas lights here. And and this year, uh, for a couple of upgrades, Bubba will be proud. I've gone to LED lights. And I'm talking about now, we're, we're over the top, as you're going to see. And I've even added a little movement on some of the lights, Ooh. which is hard to catch on the camera, mm-hmm. but I think I eventually do. All right. So, Bubba, just, just go with me virtually right now. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can go too. And uh, Adler will play it, and I'll just walk you through. So here I am coming, you know, on one end of the house. Okay. And now I'm walking Bubba through this, and I want to take you, Bubba, as if you're walking with me through the winter wonderland, which kind of I've got my it. mask on while I'm watching, Rick. Okay. So, so, so you see, see right there, you can see some movement on the windows, but I'm going to help you to see that a little more. The windows actually have some blinking lights that are moving a little bit. But now I want to take you as if you're walking with me through this winter wonderland of the house. Cause I think this is going to bring you Christmas joy. I already and feel it, Rick. I already feel who, Christmas joy. Who feels joy. the Christmas joy I, right now? I do. All right. So look now we're, we're going to I walk. just smell hot chocolate. Look at this. Mm. We're going to walk right down this path. And, uh, I know people in Minnesota are crying right now. I'm sorry. Um, but mm. we're going to go ahead and do it where we live. So, so we're, we're coming down. How through dare here. you? Yeah. And yeah, how, how dare me, uh, put up Christmas lights. So, so we're moving here and a minute, Bubba, I'm going to show you, I'm going to get close enough where you can see some of the movement of the lights on the windows, because this is something that we've added this year. And I'll give you a better shot here in a minute. Now I want you to see as if you were walking in to our home mm-hmm. as part of the winter wonderland, you know, like, Hey, we're coming by Merry Christmas, uh, Burgesses, you Let's know, and visit some hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's some hot chocolate, but then right here, because I realized, I don't know that you can see my movement of the light. So I come over here for a minute to let you kind of see, see him blinking. 
Oh, detail yeah, now. I got them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 look at that. yeah that, that was some, one of the ads this year I, I, I was hoping that you would enjoy. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that that was that's kind of it. I, that was me kind of taking you through the look. Oh, I like did, that. Well done. Did, did that feel good? I wouldn't Rick, stop singing carols. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I need to sing a carol. I feel like I need to step up. Uh, I, I could literally smell hot chocolate and cinnamon for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I was smelling cinnamon. That was mm. spice tea. You thought it was cinnamon. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> yesterday was one of those things. You know, when you when you have officially been declared to have COVID-19, people treat you a lot different. They do. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and, and so, you know, this is I've, – I've been living as, as a leper. <laughs> uh, but um, so I got um, a um, – a text yesterday from from a friend of ours that says hey dropping by a little goody uh <laughs> to say thank you to you and your family leaving it on the porch okay yeah so and now picture Standard. you know we, we've got the tree going we've got we got the, the the lights whatever so we go out there now i don't know whether there well, hey we know about all this uh so that that was one email we're back thanks for being with us today the the other and this is bubba this is gonna be bad news for greg bad bad news so uh even though when you go back and especially with our 30th anniversary in the last year of the rick and bubba show you know the best of bits have become even more and more prominent so as you go and peruse through Rick and Bubba history there on iTunes and the Google store and all these places where the best of CDs are, or wherever you get Rick and Bubba archives, there's Spotify channels and YouTube channels and wherever you go and listen to that, just remember that when you're listening to Rick and Bubba best ofs, those best ofs have captured a time capsule. It's yes. a time capsule. Yes, it is. It is. So capsule. whatever yes. was appropriate and acceptable in that day is what you're going to hear. Because uh, as we know, the left has... Uh, you never know when they're going to be afraid of another word. Yeah, know. you know, you don't know what the hit list is right. going to be ten years from yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, and you should be judged on that time period. If you said it, let's check right quick. Was that offensive then? No, it wasn't. Okay, you're clear. Well, here's bad news for you, oh, because we know that the uh, <laughs> that that the and one of the greatest Rick and Bubba bits of all time features this word, and mm. and that we know that the M word with the little community mm. has been done away with. I, I look, I, 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 uh, I can respect, hear that. me out. So you said, which I thought was fair until the sign in Boaz, Alabama is changed from M word wrestling. Hmm. You will continue to use it because there actually, like it's there's actually little people still using the word Yeah, because they, they, that's what they called it. Mm -hmm. Multiple reports. From this part of the Rick and Bubba audience, the sign has finally changed. So they, oh. the micro, there you go. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Greg. Oh boy. <laughs> so no, the, no, that's fine. And, and you know, yeah. I told so you. I'm just saying this is the marker you were looking for. You remember? So I, wa I wanted to let go. you know the marker that, is checked. The, the marker is here. They have finally crumbled. Of course, okay. outstanding marketing on their brilliant sign. I'm with it. Great right handwriting. Yeah, great sign. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you'll remember, I think it was back during the, the 20th anniversary tour, and mm -hmm. the young lady that came to the tour and was holding up a sign telling me to quit using that word, and she was a wonderful, beautiful girl, and, and mm -hmm. I felt so from that point forward. Now, I've messed up, now. but from that point forward, I've tried to yeah, quit. Yeah. Where does it say the different word? I don't. They don't use any else. word no, that covered. I can find. They've just covered it up. Can I tell Might you? Might want to invest uh, in another sign. Right, well, Greg, you know if, the if, budget. <laughs> every group can, you know, decide their mm -hmm. own verbiage, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't understand. It seems like every whatever word you use, if it's used in a disparaging way, of course, you're eventually going to think it's a bad word and not use it. Mm -hmm. But honestly, and again, I, I'm. They have to decide for themselves. I wouldn't want to be called micro or something. I know. Or, or I wouldn't want to be called LP. LP. Mm. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't feel good. It means less. I tell you one that never but changes. That's what they want. That so. never changes, and there will never be any hope of it changing. And that is fat. Nope. No You're going to be called fat. It will be called fat, and it will never be. Yeah. What if people say, well, that's offensive. I mean, don't call me fat. Well, well that's that, plus size. Though. Some of that's call out me. there. Well, no, that's out there, but we're not. We're not that, you down. think society for a minute is going to come off fat? Well, I, I want to go back to what, what you, yeah, because I want to go back. <laughs> back to what, in our day, you yeah. had fat, you had slow, you had this, you know, oh, you yeah. didn't. 
Bang our day. We, well, it's what it was. You know? Let's think about what and you did. It wasn't negative, but it was just a descriptive word. It was. It didn't mean anything disparaging. Well, you would, you right? would say, do you know so-and-so? And, and you would say, well, what, I don't know. What, you, you know what, yeah, yeah, you know, he's got, got blonde hair, fat. And you would go, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah. but, but let's, let's go back size, to what Bubba said about right. this thing of trying to protect yourself from words and labels. Mm -hmm. it, it, you're wasting your time. For instance, Bubba just said it, and he's right. We do it. Do you know at one time in history... And I can change it just by the tone of my voice, make this word derogatory or positive. Mm -hmm. It was a compliment that meant you were well-dressed, you were well-put-together. Someone would say, now, he's a dandy. Mm -hmm. And people would go, thank you for saying my son's a dandy. <laughs> now, if I see your son now, and I go, hey, he's a dandy. He's a dandy to good. So you see what I mean? Yeah. The word didn't change. It's, it's just context. My, it's just my inflection. It. Yeah. Yep. But you, well, at one time, if somebody said you or someone you loved was a dandy, you were like, "Well, yeah. thank you." Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if we call Seems you a dandy, dandy, it's like they're going, they're taking a shot yeah. at me. Yeah. He's saying I'm good. There's a dandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't he a beaut? Yeah. Ain't he a beaut? Ain't he a beaut? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. So the, I think we're trying to, and Bubba, you've said this for years, and I agree. I think we're trying to reach some word utopia that does not it exist. Can't. So what's that. happened as usual? Why would everybody just suck it up? We yeah. might have had a few words that maybe could be tweaked, but we overcorrect. We over, okay. then one leads to another that leads to another, and it never ends. And it's and basically if everybody will just lighten the blank up, yeah. right? <laughs> how, about up, this? how about lighten up Francis? Lighten up Francis. Yeah. Well, let's go back to this. Then was that used oh. in? Uh, was that? Uh, Full that metal was, jacket, or no, was that Pee Wee Herman? Stripes, stripes, stripes. stripes. Lighten up, friends. But didn't Pee Wee Herman use it too? The guy in it was Francis, was his nemesis, I think. Right. Was and didn't he tell him to lot? I don't know. I, I, I know on stripes because remember the guy right. said, if you, right. if you call me this, I call me Francis, I'll kill you. If you do this, <laughs> yeah, I'll touch that's my right, stuff, I'll stripes. kill you. And, uh, and Sergeant <laughs> Huckle said, Sergeant, lighten, up, yeah, lighten up, Francis. <laughs> okay. Because he said, if you call me Francis, I'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you want to be called? Psycho? Psycho. Yeah. So back to this again. What a great move. Not only are, are people, there's words that, that are ever-changing, okay? Then we get into the combination, which is where we are now, to Greg's point and, and Bubba's point, too, is we also are in a weird time where people want to be a victim. So now if somebody doesn't have a word, they're upset that they don't have a word that they can be bothered mm -hmm. by. Yeah. So then they oh, go yeah. declare a I word. But then we're making up words oh, yeah. when it comes to pronouns. Right. Sure. We're Z, Zer, Zam. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Zip, zop, zip, zip, zip. I and, don't know. And, and it's ever-changing. So there was a time, and I know some of you out there, I hope you have people with you that can help you if you're one of these that struggle with difficult truths, okay, which seems to be a large portion of our society now. There was actually a time, so wait for it, when you were told to have confidence in yourself, to not let other people define who you are, and for you to not be bothered by people who may say things to you just because they say it doesn't mean it's true. Mm -hmm. You know what who you are. You don't let these people dictate who you are, and you actually persevered through it and lived a life that if people were trying to make fun of you, they looked bad. Yeah. Now, I realize that concept is lost now. Right. The concept now is... Let's go out and, and de-weed society of any weeds that might bother you. Have you ever tried to de-weed anything? Yeah, yeah it's I, a lot of work. And, it keeps and moving. It's it keeps probably, changing. Oh, it keeps it, popping up. Yeah. It's probably better to go back to the old school thought. Prepare yourself and your children how to persevere and how to cope as opposed to create an atmosphere where they never have to do those things. Exactly. Well, yeah. as opposed to being hung up on every syllable and what it could mean, they, you know, we had a little thing we were taught as little kids. It was sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So we didn't pay any attention to words. No. Should we just take right. that phrase and just and say that it's it has become extinct? Yeah, well, you talking about it's it's about as extinct as a as a brontosaurus <laughs> right now. <laughs> There's Hulk. Hey, what a great movie. Hulka. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Hulka. That, yep. that movie. Oh, wait, wait, we've got the audio. We do? Yeah, we have it. it up. Okay. I didn't know we had the actual audio. Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> I need that in here. <laughs> yeah, we need that. Also, you call me Francis, I'll kill you. Will you see if Pee Wee did it too? I think Pee Wee used the same phrasing. And uh, uh, I just I think yeah, wasn't right. they, that fat kid? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, plus size kid. Yeah, right. So I'm trying you to say get, fat. It's okay, Rick. But you now we try to go plus size. It didn't happen. Bit. Imagine playing for the people we played for in oh sports. And say you're a big old lineman, and they oh, wanted you to get oh your fat God. A moving. Oh, oh, and yeah. they called you. You get your plus size A moving. Yeah, that it just oh, yeah. doesn't work. Oh no, it goes back to no, what I, I say. The whole word. Every time I, I speak, just about if I start to do stories on that, I say these men, if they were coaching today, would be in jail. Oh yeah, and they would. Now, so they, they produced a pretty good product, though. They did. 
But now, if you were a little overweight and you were loafing, he would he would refer to you. Well, <laughs> get your. But listen yeah. to what Bubba just said. There's you got been you an, moving up. There's <laughs> even been an attempt to protect fat people, but it hadn't worked. Fat's still alive and well. <laughs> It'll be here with us. It's alive Rick and well. The F it's alive and well. <laughs> Bottom of the hour. More Rick and Bubba next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is where individual tastes may come into play. But keep in mind, I can't taste or smell anything. Don't Stale. miss that. Yeah. So... So anyway, and it's like Sherry has a scented candle, and that's where I go to try to figure out where I am on my smell. Mm -hmm. And and, and until I can smell it, I I have no smell, Mm -hmm. uh, and I can't smell it yet. So anyway, so I look in the bag, and it is – have you ever had – and I don't know, Bubba, this is one of your favorites, but I know it's one of Sherry's favorites and mine too. Have you ever had chocolate pecan pie? I don't think I have. I I like it, it, though. It's pecan pie, but it also has a little bit of chocolate oh, in it. I think good. I have had it yeah, once and, or twice. Yeah. And so it was there, and he left instructions, put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. So, you know, it, this is what I love about Christmas. But Ooh. then as I see it coming in here and everybody's cutting it, I realize, you know, Sherry's excited. We're all, and I realize I'm not going to be able to taste this uh, wonderful gift, no. um, you know, from, from a friend. And so, but yeah. Bubba, it happened again. And, I think it's our, like I said on the show yesterday, I think we're, we consider food to be artistic. It's art to us and, and we love it so, so dang much. Hmm. And, and I, I found that if I've never tasted something, then I cannot taste it. I had something right. last night that tasted like somebody just dumped salt in a, in a bowl. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I know what pecan chocolate pie is supposed to taste like. I know it. Right. So I found myself getting a piece and, and heating it up. And then as Sherry would, would eat it and, and, you know, and, and, and big love would have some, as I would eat this pecan pie, I knew what it was supposed to taste like. And it's almost like I could use a, almost like a, a superpower to, to convince myself mentally what it tastes like. And I honestly began to taste it. Hmm. Well, I, I think what you're doing is you're seeing the trick that your brain does. You know, you, you've heard people that have to get the uh, cochlear implant. Right. They can hear music that they have heard prior to losing their hearing, but they can't hear new music because their brain doesn't decode it. And I, I think it just kind of shows you how how your brain sees what's around you and you know what to expect. And that's kind of how part of the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the key is, and I really think this is a really cool study. The key is if I know the taste, you right. mean I've already experienced it. Right. right. And it's like I can go get it and mentally mm. bring it back. Now that doesn't mean it tastes as as wonderful as it did before I lost. Because really what everybody says, and I'm gonna be sure I have this right, those of you out there that know this, I really haven't lost any my taste buds are fine. It's just I can't smell. So not being able to smell makes it impossible to taste. Right. It's right. not like the, it's not like my right. taste buds have gone downhill. Mm-hmm. It's the smell that's costing me. The 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 inability to smell equals the inability to taste, uh, and and that's what I was told. So I I, I assume that's accurate. You know, uh, I, I think the um, I think the anticipation of what's going on uh, with our brains is is a much bigger part of us sensing things than we even know. Uh, and I learned a lot of that with my, my mom going through dementia and all that stuff. It, it was very educational how that our brain, it expects things based on where it knows that it's at. Mm-hmm. And when it doesn't have that ability, it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's not happy. It, you know, and it does, it kind of, it tells you what to expect when you eat things that you know, or you hear a song that you know. And, you know, you kind of listen to it and you kind of taste it, but your brain is filling in a lot of the gaps. Yeah. And I think what it is, only we, those of us in the heavy community that appreciate food, I think only we would put in this kind of effort. Everybody else that has lost their ability to taste has told me this has been an opportunity for them to like diet or not eat much. I've even had people say, I can't even eat like this. You know what I say? I can't relate to that. I'm still trying so hard. (laughs) I'm trying so trying hard to, make to taste. It work. Yeah. Y- y'all so are believe- you are you cutting back at all? Can you tell any difference as far as what you are eating? <sighs> Not really. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm still eating pretty much what I want to, and I'm just working hard to try to taste it. <laughs> 
Uh, so top of the hour, we'll be back. We got a birthday song yeah. from Adler's dad for his birthday. Uh, so we'll we'll listen to that and watch that with Adler when the Rick and Bubba show continues. It's top of the hour. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ken Osborne, here we go. MyPillow.com slash Bubba. Yep, yep, yep. $25 extravaganza sale. It, it, <laughs> it's not going to get any better than this. We call it the speedy sale. MyPillow.com slash Bubba. Right now, these items, and lots of them, are $25. And listen, we're not done. You also get free shipping. Okay. Uh, let me run the list for you. We're not talking about minor savings here. First of all, let's start with the premium Giza My Pillows, twenty-five dollars. My sandals. You've heard Bubba and I rave about ours. A lot of you've looked at the price in the beginning. You went, eh, I'll wait. Well, you if you waited, or if you were like us, just pick up extra pairs. Twenty-five dollars. Six pack My Towel sets, twenty-five dollars. Four pack dish towels, twenty-five dollars. Uh, a two-pack multi-use my pillows. These are good for traveling. Uh, Twenty-five dollars per kale bed sheets. Twenty-five dollars beach towels. Twenty-five dollars. And there's there's other items. I don't have time to list them all. Twenty-five dollars and free shipping. So uh, take advantage of the twenty-five dollar extravaganza sale before it's gone, uh, and support this longtime partner of the show, and, and they're doing this to help us and celebrate our 30th anniversary. MyPillow.com slash Bubba, $25 extravaganza sale underway now. The link will get you there, too, at RickandBubba.com under the sponsors. Uh, folks, he's back. Uh, there he is, Eddie Van Adler, back in his spot, is producer of the Rick and Bubba YouTube channel, uh, providing uh, just uh, all sorts of content and fun, the live show. Uh, he went to, I thought you went to somewhere near San Antonio, but I understand it was Austin, right? San Antonio? Yes. yes. Austin, too. We went to Austin, visited some uh, some dear family friends that have a daughter that is Ruby's same age. They're like kind of like pen pals, but it's really just like, you know, we record a video at our house, they record a video at theirs, pass them back and forth. There's really no pen involved. There isn't a pen. No, right. there's there, no penmanship. Yeah, right. But that's, frankly, the three-year-old's penmanship is pretty bad. Yeah. It is. So it's about Greg. like Greg's. Yeah. 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 I can't say anything. Mine's horrible. But um, it was uh, an adventure, guys. I was so happy to be home last night and sleep in my own bed. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, always good. Use my own bathroom. Frankly, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Oh my goodness. You know that's probably uh, one of the most awkward things about staying at someone else's place yeah. is the restroom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it it's is. Bad, it's yeah. very awkward. Not good. Um, I was speaking of, in restaurant. I was in so many restrooms uh, at the airport. Yeah. Like I was in a, a restroom on an airplane. Mm. I was in I, family restrooms uh, are more common than they used to be, which is I felt like I, I had an easier time finding the family restroom because a couple times I had to go just straight up in the dude's restroom with Ruby, mm. oh. and uh, I'm like, "Hey, come over here, kiddo." <laughs> Yeah, don't look yeah. over there. Look, go. it's a a paper towel machine. Look at it. Look right. only at it. Look directly <laughs> right. at it. Yes. Look stare at it. Stare <laughs> at the, the paper <laughs> towel machine. Yes, I don't. Mommy and daddy don't have money for counseling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Daddy, what are those sinks on the wall? Right. Those aren't sinks. <laughs> yeah. Asked many times. Oh yeah, I bet. <sighs> <laughs> um, so yeah. did you? Oh my goodness! Such a stressful. Uh, other so than tired. the travel, how was the experience? Did you get to see any of the eclipse? Yeah, everybody was wondering. Did, did Ruby see eclipse at all? All right. So here is. I took a, a little like time lapse of <laughs> our setup here. Here is the parte. Oh boy. And we've got bounce houses. We got little trampolines oh. with balloons. I Thank mean, it, we had a time. We had a time. But you can actually see in my timeline down here of the video, bri oh, bright, dark, dark, bright. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you can tell. I mean, we we were in totality, and honestly, we got glimpses. But we, 
I never got a clear view of totality. I'm yeah, so sorry. Uh, that hurt yeah. a lot. There it is. Uh, it it's also, got a little dark. It hurt a lot, like when. Bring uh, that picture up. We're, that. we're trying to. Uh, when we're trying, when I'm trying to get Ruby to to check it out, and she says multiple times, "I don't want to look at the sun. I don't want to look at the eclipse." <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Wow. Well, that that's that's why we we yeah. came. Yeah. That yeah. is why so we came. That's here. why we yeah. came. Wow. Came yeah. to Austin for this. Yeah, and you don't yeah. Want to look. So there okay. you go. Yeah. It goes back to hey, yeah. I'm three. Oh yeah. Okay. You can see how dark oh, it got. Right. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. It was pretty, yeah. and okay. We got some glimpses. It, it could have been so much worse. It could have been. I mean, oh yeah, look at that. Nothing. We could have seen nothing, and mm. we 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 were able to see as it was starting. That's dark right there. Yeah, those three little boxes are pretty impressive right there. Yeah, yeah. Right. It you, was pretty. Do you good. think? All right. So let me ask you this: She didn't want to look at the sun. Probably a good thing for her going forward. Yeah, all sure. Right. <laughs> Secondly, did she even care about it getting dark? Did that freak anybody out? Did you say, "Look, Ruby, it's dark in the middle of the day"? Could could a three year old have the concept that it shouldn't be dark right now? I had to say things for the entire group. I was kind of the the a lot of small kids. Yeah, a lot of small kids. I, I was things like, "This is it, guys. We're in it." Oh, you the people? Oh, you they kept doing that. This is it. You became the the dad at the theme park. Isn't this great? Yes. I Aren't did you do loving that. standing yeah. in line yeah. for an hour and a half for Dumbo? Yes. Isn't this awesome? Yes. Um, at the beginning of this trip, if I could take you guys to the very the very yeah. beginning, um, huh. I am packing up the night before, and Aaron packed uh, the kid. And I packed myself. Um, smart. Yeah, uh, I had on my back all of Ruby's clothes and all of my clothes in a in a big backpack. And then Ruby had her own little girly backpack. But for most of the trip, she didn't really want to carry it. So well, I had, had a too. pink backpack on the front of me <laughs> oh while I had all our clothes on the back of me. That was most of the setup. So, of the, so the, the idea that your three-year-old would just love carrying a backpack and think it's nice to be like Daddy with her own luggage, that 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 forecast was incorrect. I mean, we, all we had was toys and like a stuffed bunny in there. It wasn't yeah. that heavy, frankly. <laughs> I thought just, she would be able to pull her own weight, but I guess not. Mm. Yeah, no, so it, was, it was fine. Um I my wife is going to be so mad at me for even telling you guys about this, but Good. I had this. I have this uh, high powered portable fan that uh, runs off of like drill batteries. Yeah, and I can also make that like a power yeah. bank. And I'm like, I'm bringing this fan, and no. Aaron's like, Don't bring this fan. And if you do bring the fan, don't tell me about it, please. So I bring this fan. Oh, that's a hassle. I, I'm all jazzed up about it. I, and here's the thing, though. I knew that I was going to be spending so much of this trip just making sure Ruby had fun, and that means I'm going to be just sitting around at next next to a slide or something. And if and I'm a big bug magnet, I'm very weird about bugs. Didn't know that. Oh. And so I said, I'm bringing this fan. I don't care what anybody says. I'm bringing a fan. And she didn't want you to bring it because she thought the fan's embarrassing. She thought it was embarrassing. Well, where'd you carry it? How'd you thought get the, it was terrible. Yeah. Well, did you carry it, it on in the, the plane? Backpack. It was oh, in the backpack. Uh-uh. Yeah, I didn't check anything. Yeah, so yeah. it was just I'll I'll carry I'll on. I'll carry on. Yeah. We were super clean. Fan and all. So I get the ba- the fan packed up. That means you didn't change clothes. I, I wake up <laughs> at three fifty, and I wake up at three thirty. I wake up Ruby at three fifty. We are in the car at four fifteen, <clears> headed to catch our like five twenty flight, whatever. <clears throat> I think the I think the airport's going to be abandoned because it's four o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and I get there and there's like two hundred people in line at security. Oh, oh sure. So I didn't bother doing my TSA pre-check mm-hmm. number. So at that point, and I also can't find it on my phone, and I also have a kid with me. I had to call Aaron back. No, uh-uh. I no. wake her up at three. What's our number? At four o'clock. What's hey, what's our, our what's, what's our number? Our number? So that's not start. a good vote of confidence to start nah. the trip. Oh yeah. boy. I get on, I get on, and I did the, uh, on the airplane, I had Ruby window always, and so that meant I had to sit in the middle seat oh, for every no. flight. I'm in the middle seat. And that other seat over Elbow next, did, did, would you ever get a three-seater? Probably not for, it was always two, wasn't it? It was, it was all, it was three, it was three, but. You were middle. I'm in the middle. Oh, I know, that's yeah. what I mean. Okay. Yeah. Tiny. Was, thank goodness you're tiny. Uh, yeah. Well, Yeah. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. And don't Little think person. I don't know that you large people are scoping me out looking for me. I know, and that is called racism. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Large, large oh, men, you're, you're, large women. You're a dream come true. Yeah, because let I'm, me sit by him. I'm very locked in. I don't like it when we're just touching. And if oh. I just try a little bit, I can make it so that we don't touch. Mm. So I end up being like all stoved <laughs> all up squ- the entire trip. Up. I don't. Uh, is my collarbone broken? <laughs> <laughs> 
from being I, I, my collarbone hurts no. when I breathe. Yeah, there are people that can sit down and their girth will literally push you into the middle of your seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, uncontrollably. Yes, and you're just touching no matter what. Right, yeah. If I try a little bit, we don't touch. So that's what I did for four different flights yeah. the entire time. Y'all, mm. it's dark. It's so dark on the plane for most of the trip. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're finally settled. I'm like, okay, this I might actually survive this thing. This is after what I have. Uh, uh, we might actually survive this thing. I, they come by for drink service, right? And I actually have Ruby's little uh, like thermos thing with like a ceiling lid. You push a button, it pops open, and you can drink through the straw, right? That's Ruby's drink, so she doesn't need a drink. Service comes by me, and I, I'm like, I have not had coffee or breakfast or anything. I'm going to get some ginger ale. That'll be good. A little gin and tonic? Senator, a little gin and tonic. No, ginger ale. I have this cup, y'all. Can you not, put a little granddaddy syrup in it for me? Please, <laughs> please, 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 please anybody, please. Somebody. I have me. not taken one sip from it. And you know when you're real tired oh. and real stupid in the mornings, your oh, hands yeah. oh, don't yeah. work? No, no. Y'all, no, I didn't. take no, one no, sip from no, this little cup this. and it drops. Oh, no. I pour the entire thing on both my and Ruby's laps. What is the your problem? The entire cup you did. of what ginger ale. Not her. Your I did problem. I you did it. did it, not the three-year-old. How did she take it? And it goes like in the crack. There's, I'm having to dig ice out from underneath Ruby you on this plane. Lennox Lewis have. is sitting next to me. He's like, <laughs> "What in the world is going on over there?" Yeah. And I'm like, "I'm <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, Lennox." And go back to your tea. Uh -huh. Big, big man. Uh, huge. Yeah. And the, I did not know he was British until like 30 minutes into the fight. I was like, oh, getting a spot of tea I see there, Lennox. So that was interesting. Okay. <laughs> but now I spill my ginger ale everywhere. My Unreal. leg is soaked. There's ice under her. There's ice under me. Yeah. Ruby, Ruby freaks out. And I don't have a single napkin. They haven't given me a napkin. So I'm like, please, can I have a napkin? They come back with two cocktail napkins. Oh, I'm man. like, I'm scooping ice here. I don't need two cocktail need napkins. I need paper towels. Gosh. Flustered. I need a bucket. I, love I couldn't flustered. believe it. My, my leg is so wet. Luckily, I brought a fan, though. Ah! So oh, the fan. Aired everything out. Already the fan is coming in handy. <laughs> Already. Already. First flight, the fan is coming in handy. In fact, I texted Aaron after we landed. I was like, I already used the fan. And she said, how? And then I said, it's not important. Not important. It's <laughs> not important. But I sure was glad I had it. But no, here's, battery's dead. But here's our first look, flight right here. Look. And uh, What's she eating? There's the napkins wadded up on the bottom of the floor <laughs> there from the <laughs> spilled ginger ale. Uh, don't forget uh, Bub and Betty out tonight. Grand Marshals, Odenville, Alabama for their Winter Wonderland Christmas Parade. Uh, be sure and give them a big Odenville, Alabama welcome in surrounding areas. Uh, that coming up tonight, 7 o'clock local time. Uh, and it looks like it will be a beautiful evening uh, for a Christmas parade. So uh, for the rest of you also out there all across, uh, especially the state of Alabama with the flagship uh, there, uh, 1047 WZZK, you may also see, uh, I want, is the truck, are they going to have the truck there tonight, Bubba? Whether it be you and uh, Daddy, and then I'm you and not, video? I'm not 100% sure, but I believe so. Yeah, watch for the video uh, truck. It's been hitting a lot of uh, parades too, where Bubba and I come to you uh, virtually uh, through the power of uh, today's technology. You got Speedy, you got uh, Greg, and you've got our birthday boy, Eddie Van Adler, there at the Broadcast Plaza in Teleport. Helmsy's in, in, at his house, Bubba's at his house, and so am I. Uh, so Bubba, let's, uh, let's, let's talk about uh, 35 years ago today, uh, our very own Eddie Van Adler was born. Uh, so a happy birthday to Eddie Van Adler, our thanks to Edgar's Bakery for another outstanding Ooh. birthday cake. Uh, and of course today is a Tuesday mm -hmm. if you're listening live. So it is Ruby Tuesday. That's his daughter's name. And look <laughs> at Ruby. Well, look there at that. Ruby. I'm just a little bit precious. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, it's going to be refer It's going to be referenced in this song that uh -huh. is about to be played for Adler. Right. But, but I'm telling you, and I keep saying, and I know me coming down COVID positive, it's not going to help. But I told Sherry, I said, when you get to the other end of this, you know, and we both have the antibodies. Uh, maybe Adler will let you hold Ruby. <laughs>
uh, we do want to remind you that our own Bill Bubba Bussy and his lovely wife, Betty, will be the Grand Marshals tonight, Odenville, Alabama, for the Christmas parade. If you're going to be part of that, uh, where you hear us out of uh, 104.7 WZZK, uh, give them a big warm welcome tonight as they come through and present a winter wonderland and celebrate Christmas with you. Uh, so enjoy that uh, this evening. Uh, also, uh, want to remind you uh, that we uh, you know, have some, some other items we'll touch on today on the program, including this one, as we welcome back Bill Bubba Bussy. Hey, buddy. Rick, glad to be here, honored and privileged, and thank all of you for spending a few hours with us each and every day. We do appreciate it. All right, before we get to the story, what I was talking about, I had an emailer actually email me uh, yesterday and said, hey, I hung on to the local number from last year just in case I need it. <laughs> and, and I remember thinking, why is he emailing me that? That didn't even make sense. I mean, why would you do that? And now I realized he was mm -hmm. brilliant. He Absolutely was. brilliant. Was. You know, that was a person who said, look, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I know what 012 can do. It, it can take a phone system and a toll-free number and wad it up. And, you, and here's your, hey, we got you rollover. <laughs> let, let me tell you what does not go together. December and our phone system. Yeah. Now, and, and it's it, it looks like that we're, we're getting, you know, people want to squeeze us, Bo. They do. Why, why they got to squeeze us? <laughs> don't be squeezing our pop. Come hey, on. Don't, don't be squeezing We got to have our this. bandwidth. Hey, if, you, if you can't handle Rick and Bubba, then fine. We can find somebody else, but don't squeeze us. So, uh, so anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be doing that at some point, even if we just have to use the, uh, the local number. And let's face it, today, our toll free number is really even necessary. They're easier to remember. Mm -hmm. uh but uh but yeah. we can do that yeah. so bubba well, our, our local number we had to do that before we we had a we had yeah. a saying for it do you remember what it was i can't remember <laughs> it was hilarious but i don't recall it <laughs> I got, you get over there on your pad bubba trying to come up with something i don't know what <laughs> well, you came I, up with no i i know we used to we, we used did to have something. something for it but i can't remember what it was we did something but i don't remember somebody what it will was. have to call and tell us yeah. all right so i know that 2020 has just been full of all kinds of problems and you can't have anything mm -mm. I, here is, first of all, before we get into this, because it kind of ties in, uh, Chuck Yeager has passed away at 97 years old. Yeah, yeah wow. What a legend. 9-7. Nine, nine, God love him. If he just made a few health choices, he might have he had a longer life. <laughs> you know, Rick, uh, he was part of that right stuff crew and uh, the first man to break the sound barrier. You know how scary that must have been when he was oh, in oh, that yeah, plane yeah. and they were trying oh. to puncture through the sound barrier? <clears throat> Chucky Yeager, uh, 97 years old, went on in. Uh, so this takes us into this story, uh, out of Israel. And I, when I saw the headline today, I just see the headline, mankind made contact with alien galactic federation. Everybody knew Rick, that. this, listen, if you're a UFO guy or you're into <clears throat> conspiracies, it, this is a Christmas gift that like you have never had before. Yeah. We have an Israeli space official who claims that aliens are real and secretly in contact with America and Israel, but they're keeping their... We're back eight minutes to the top. We're hearing from Eddie Van Adler, who's returned from trying to take a three-year-old to Austin, Texas, to experience totality on the solar eclipse on Monday. He's recapped uh, a little bit of it. Uh, Adler, if you got a little more for us to kind of, you can always, you know, remember things throughout the show today as well. Yeah, I'm sure you will. All right, so I brought the fan. Aaron didn't it's want me to. It's already come through. Right. And, and I, I spilled a ginger ale all over right. my lap and Ruby's. Did, right. any, did right. any get on Lennox Lewis? Luckily not, but I had Woo! to like nudge into oh, him with my back man. while I was fixing uh, the problem the whole time. Sorry, Can you tell sir. me what's going on over there? Uh, yeah. uh, what in the, you well, know. If you drop a spot of tea over there, what's going on? <laughs> and, and, you got a fire. Yeah. And, <laughs> thank you, man of a thousand good. voices. <laughs> Add Lennox Lewis to the list. That. And so they give me two cocktail napkins and I get it all cleaned up. I don't know how. And I'm yeah. settled settled back down, and Ruby now needs a drink of, of water from her little drink thing. Oh, no. But I filled up her drink thing when we were on planet Earth and not pressurized. Mm. I didn't realize this. Get I get it all cleaned up, and then I pop the top on Ruby's little drink thing, yeah, and it shoots at me like a fire extinguisher, <laughs> soaking me again no. right after I got dried out. The moment I got dried out. 
I'm out, out of napkins. It was terrible. You but got a low battery on your fan. <laughs> yeah, the battery is actually. I gotta say, I brought the four amp hour battery. I oh, looked not up, trying to I, brag. I looked up the. Uh, it's like a hundred watt hours is the most you can have, and yeah. so I did the math divided by eighteen volts because it's eighteen volts. Bubba and Greg know what I'm talking about. Yeah, power, yeah, come on, law, baby. power stuff. Uh, I will say, on, did you say power stuff? This is he electricity did. stuff. Yep. Uh, the best view of anything that we had was definitely on the plane trip there at sunrise. Y'all, this is sunrise on the plane, and it was pretty neat. Uh, mm. I will say that this was much prettier. <laughs> what, is, what is Ruby picking her teeth? Ruby, it's her credit card. Ruby is chewing on a fake credit card. Again, there's the junk. Does Dave the, Ramsey know about up. this toy? I don't know why she even has it. <laughs> right, yeah, That's right. not good well, financial All little girls advice. need a toy credit a card toy just credit to get card. used for yeah. being a girl. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's that was a good point. Get them trained. And so the, that was that was a little bit more visually striking than the eclipse, but that's fine. It's you, okay. You seem a little bitter about the fact you couldn't see the eclipse. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll be seeing the next one. I'll be mobile the next time. And that, and you know, you also was, be old. I'll, yeah. I'll be a little bit older. Yeah. 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 So yeah. somebody's got to roll us out to see it. Um, Austin was good. I got some we soft tacos. Get him a throw. Got, <laughs> got barbecue. <laughs> oh, did you, where, where did you? Where'd you go? Because I, I, I yeah. love I love the Austin restaurant. Mostly food Rick. trucks. Um, just mostly food trucks. Never we, mind. Went to, we went to festival after festival. Never it was mind. like a kid festival <laughs> palooza. A few food trucks and well, vending uh, machines. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> BB and J's. That's some of the best food from <laughs> food trucks. Went, well, we went to savages. Austin, Texas, one of the places known for oh, food, whatever Harvey he says. Went to concession <laughs> stands. Yeah, they right, have right. famous hey. food trucks there. Got, I will give, got a corn dog. <laughs> I will give you one pass, though, with a three year old. Just no, keep you. it simple. I yes. got you. No, you gotta, I mean, good of course, night. I don't find food trucks to be simple. Where we, where do we eat? Not <laughs> We're standing here with our food now. I eat outside. Where's the table? <laughs> that's a great point. I right. eat outside so much. Um, yeah. Luckily, again, luckily, I had a fan. Y'all, I used that fan so You're much. You're really proud over of this, this fan. Do you have it with you I, now? I, I, He's trying to I might sleep carrying. with it tonight. I loved it so much. Y'all, the uh, the amount of bees that were I forgot how bees. bad bees are in, bees? in Texas. But they're they're coming to our picnic table like crazy. Hey, I got a fan, so I set up the fan to blow across the food. That was in four different places we went to. Like seriously, the fan uh, so the I mean, fan saved the day. Did, uh, how many honest, times did his friends go if he brings up that fan? Here yeah. comes that fan. Yeah. Are I the did, bees bigger in Texas? Too? I kept sending pictures of uh, the fan in use and sending it to Aaron throughout the trip. She, she, she hated that. that. She was like, funny. "I don't miss you. Please stop texting me." <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Let me ask you about the 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 video earlier. Who are these people? Did you bust into somebody's party, or did yeah. you know? Yeah, all these yeah, I, yeah. I wasn't even invited, frankly. Are they relatives? They no, are just it. dear family friends, like from of, San Antonio of, of my family. Actually, um, I had friends from San Antonio make the trip to Austin. I had friends from. How do you know these people from Dallas make Austin. the trip to Austin? I never uh, hear you referenced Austin. The, the people that I know in Austin, my like best friend, my bandmate in high school, and here we is go. married to the mom of. The three-year-old that's best friends with Ruby. Wow! So I had well, I had around. I had a daughter at the same time as my buddy. So they've been you could just, just said that growing up friends for forever. Yeah. yeah. All right. In the backyard, uh, you showed us the video of everybody there. Yes. Do you wish they would have all cared as much as you did about the eclipse? The people were pretty good. The kids didn't look interested. People no, were good. No. Kids. Okay, it was three. tough. It was three. tough. Lots yeah. of clouds. Yeah. We would get a break and we'd be like, there it is. You have to say that a lot. There it is. Uh, <laughs> there look it is. right now. And what I would do is I'd look at the ground, and if I could see like the edge of my shadow, all right, now I can look up. So that way you're not just standing there staring at clouds the whole time. Yeah. So that was a little hack. Of course, Ruby could have <laughs> quoted Charles Barkley and said, I've seen a dark before. Right. It's not yeah. a big deal. You're right. Right. He said everybody I've was losers after before. looking. You're trying to sell a solar eclipse to a person that in this stage of life she's in. All right. A puppet show would be a better sale. Yes, yes, hundred okay. percent. Yeah, uh, the Stomp Rockets were a big hit. Luckily, we had Stomp Rockets okay. in the backyard. There you go. You know? Okay, um, kind of theme. I was yeah. loading up a Stomp Rocket, and you forget that there's two Stomps uh, for the Stomp Rocket. Oh, and no. literally, while I'm saying, everybody, watch out for the Stomp Rockets. We don't want anybody to get hit. Right. I got clicked in the <laughs> temple. Are you in this oh, trip? Wow. I got hit so hard You're in the temple be with a stomp rocket. If it hit my it almost eye, put your eye out. if it had hit yeah. my eye, I would have had to like really do something if like you'd wear just a had patch the fan or on. something. Yeah, really. The fan. Uh, once again, um, I'm going to sleep one night. Ruby and I, I, sh I shared a room with. Greg, a somebody hit a stomp rocket at him and knocked it down with his fan. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I, I slept in a room with a three year old. 
uh, all three nights. Oh, no. Mm. That Tossing was tough. And turning. So you fidget. haven't slept? So I've not slept. Uh, the air conditioning went out at these people's oh, house. No. What? Glad you had a fan. Luckily, I had a fan. Yeah. Um, you and this fan. <laughs> Y'all, I, the fan saved th- the there day. Was a per- there was a repairman during the eclipse up on their roof working on their air conditioning. It's dark up here. Not sure why he didn't get it fixed because he was working like the whole time. Uh, <laughs> that was tough. No, he just used that as a lookout tower. Yeah, he didn't the eclipse. Uh, th- uh, three-year-old girls like the the same thing. I've noticed they if you one person has the unicorn horn, the other person wants oh, the yeah. unicorn yes, horn. Yes, I love it. I settled a thousand fights Uh-oh. over the last four days. <laughs> over unicorn horn. Um, <laughs> but we made it. We got back on the flights. Ruby honestly was such a trooper. It was great. Um, and it was thank y'all so much for the the chance to go out and do this. We made such wonderful, perfect yeah. memories. I slept a total of like ten hours, I think, okay. over the three nights. Good job, buddy. Um, and Ruby has nightmares now. Like oh. that started on the trip. I'm like, oh, cool, a four hour nightmare. Well, okay, good. she's got a good memory. Rick and Bubba. Well, uh, we sure are thankful uh, that when fast-growing trees came into our life uh, that we listened, and now here we are. Spring is upon us, uh, and we really have some beautiful, beautiful uh, trees and and plants at our house because, you know, the experts at fast-growing trees, they first of all want to know where in the world do you live? You know, a lot of times you get fired up about plants and trees, and you may not live in the right climate for, uh, for said trees and plants. Uh, so you really have thrown your money away. Well, the folks at Fast Growing Trees, their experts will actually help you, uh, and uh, they they will say, here's the best things that would look the best, and they would thrive uh, where you live in your climate. So if if you're thinking about everything you would like, a fruit tree, you know, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, so much more, whatever you're interested in, they have it. And, of course, they find the perfect fit for the space and the climate. It's easy to order online. Your plants are shipped directly to your door in one to two days. They have their 30-day alive and thrive guarantee. They offer free, as I said, plant consultation forever, forever. So uh, so they're, they're there for you. Uh, unless you just love going and not having any idea what's going on and then uh, having some wagon dragging all that to your car, dumping all of the back of your car, getting dirt everywhere. Now, if you still enjoy all that, maybe you should stay where you are. But if you'd love to have great plants, trees, uh, and, uh, and free consultation, save yourself some money and have them shipped right to your door, then you need to join us and, and go see the folks at Fast Growing Trees. Just go to fastgrowingtrees.com, code Bubba, get a, an additional 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com. Use the promo code Bubba at checkout. So uh, they got the best deals online, and now we're getting you an additional 15% on top of that. Put Fast Growing Trees to work for you. You'll be glad you did. existence quite because humanity isn't ready yet now the man's name which i can't say how you said i am i am h i h a i m e s h e d now rick he was head of israel space security program for 30 years i am okay this is not some good out there on info wars okay? i know he was a top general in the Israeli army for 30 years. Mm, And he described a so-called galactic federation, which he says runs an underground Mars base. And it's in a secret deal with Washington, Mm -hmm. but the aliens had to intervene to stop Donald Trump. When he appeared on the verge of blurting out their secrets, he told an Israeli newspaper. Whoa, whoa. I, now, that's an ad because I haven't no. read the whole article. <laughs> Wait saying. just a second. I thought all he was going to tell us is that because of his 30 years that he had, uh, that we'd made contact with the Galactic Federation. I didn't know that he claims that they feared Donald Trump. Even even aliens hate Donald Trump. <laughs> Rick, he, wow. he's 87 years old now, and he said the aliens will not come into the open until humanity can evolve and reach a stage where they will understand understand space and spaceships. He said he did not know how long the aliens had been hiding in the shadows, but he said that some of the supposed contacts between this group and the United States had taken place during Trump's presidency. 
Wait a minute. He's claiming modern day in the last yeah. four years? Oh, yeah. You know, oh, Trump's yeah. only been a one-termer. I don't know if y'all know that. <laughs> yeah. So, so in the last four years, he claims the Galactic Federation, which he was already familiar with, uh, contacted <laughs> Trump, that. and they deter determined we're still not ready, and they thought he was going to blurt about it. <laughs> he, listen. It Do just, I hear it, you it, right? It, <laughs> yes. Yes. It gets better. He said, speaking of an agreement between the United States of America and this f Galactic federation or whoever they are he said the alien visitors wanted to work with american scientists to study the fabric of the universe well why do they need us for that if they figured out how to get to us well they don't need us to talk about fabric <clears throat> but the aliens did not want their existence to be known to the general public uh he said that trump was on the verge of revealing this but the aliens in the Galactic Federation are saying, wait, let people calm down first. They don't want to start mass hysteria. They don't want to make us uh, uh, crazy over the idea that there may be life out there in the galaxy and other places. So when will we be deemed ready for this? When we evolve to the point we can deal with it. They might as well pack up and leave and go back. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even. Hey, Bubba, our our people can't even handle twelve working days of Christmas. Yeah, they can't. They can't handle some Rick, we Galactic gotta, Space Force. Yeah, we're uh, mad about somebody's Christmas lights. You know what I'm but saying? Let, let we, me. But <laughs> listen, let me let me remind you of a couple of things. Trump was adamant about having a space force. Do you remember? He this? was. Yes, he was. he said this must happen. He forced it through against the advice even of some military people. And remember, he wanted it to be its own standalone branch. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. thought at the time that he was really Space Force. putting mm -hmm. a lot of political weight behind this, and I didn't fully understand why. I'm, I, uh, it, uh -huh. I'm just reading you the story. I, right, I, I'm, I'm going to try it one more time. I'm going to repeat what I think I've heard, <clears> and <throat> I need somebody to tell me I'm seeing this right and hearing it right. Today, we have a story that an Israeli uh, officer of some kind, what, what, what's his ranking? He's he head, is a he's general, Rick. He was at one time in... back six minutes past the hour thank you for being with us today on a brand new edition of the rick and bubba show speedy the real greg burgess helmsy and yes eddie van adler has returned he's given us updates from his trip last hour if you missed that catch the daily archive on your own time either on our youtube channel or our podcast channel uh we welcome back for a brand new hour mr bill bubba bussy Rick, glad to be here, and thank all of you for joining us now for over 30 years. Wow, yeah. Charity charge, Bubba. It is time for the Rick and Bubba Buffalo Wild Wings Charity Charge. Uh, we thank you for uh, participating at all participating uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. All those uh, are uh, under the watchful eye of Tim Spencer, who joins us. Uh, Tim, welcome back. Good. Good to be here, boys. Uh I know charity charge means boneless. Yeah, ones. so we have, yeah. well, first of all, thank you we're, for the food. Onion, we're right. always glad to see you for several reasons, right. Tim. Okay, we're not going to be, you know, shallow and act like that's not part of the deal. Yep. Uh, but it's always good to see breakfast come in. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> you yeah. know, we have a saying, wings anytime. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. And, and we got them. And thank you for always being so kind uh, in doing that. Of course, as Greg said, you bring enough food to heal a nation. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, and, we uh, and we have that, and we eat on that it's for big days. nation. Take some of it home. It's all, yes, <laughs> and, <laughs> big eaters. And, Tim, since we've been doing this, I, I want to take just a minute before we get into the, this particular charity charge. We've talked about the partnership you guys have had with us over the years at Buffalo Wild yeah. Wings and um, that it's been a win-win-win uh, for a long time. And you had brought in the numbers. We had been guessing uh, what we have given away or you guys have given away over the past two or three years. And uh, you Bubba, brought this seven years, yeah, seven, seven years, years. seven. God. That's right. Seven. Two or three years year ago seven. was the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Over that time, you guys have donated two hundred and sixty one thousand over a quarter of a million bucks wow. to local charities that you, that a lot of times because of their size kind of fall under the radar yeah, big yeah, groups right. and 
you know, uh, so the, a little bit goes a long way with these folks, and they really fill in the, the cracks where a lot of people are not, you know, taking care of various things that need to be done. In my opinion, I think we set out to accomplish this, and and we have hit the nail on the head. No, and, I think so, you know, okay. with the people we've helped, yep. with the money that's been raised, yep. and again, everybody's had to eat, and we've had to open the doors. That's about all. Right, that's, yeah. that's the legwork. Well, yeah. and, and the audience has has really responded in in a big way. It and, was good to use our talent. In yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm glad we had a little bit of that. Well, do, do, use your gifts. Use yeah. your gifts. Uh, and I got so, Mondays on the calendar now. That's right. Go, go <laughs> so uh, we, another it's opportunity. Our day. Yeah, another opportunity is coming up Monday. We'll tell you about that here in just a bit. Uh, but now let's let's look back uh, and and let's see what you have already done. Uh, we have Caitlin Hughes here with us today. Hey, Caitlin. Uh, she Hi. is with Find You Foundation. That's F-I-N-E, and then the letter U, uh, Foundation. So first of all, um, well, I'll just let you, Caitlin, because I don't think anybody uh, can explain it better than you, uh, You know where y'all got that name, which is a great <laughs> story, and, and what exactly you do. So uh, first of all, thanks for letting me be here, and thank you for um all the awareness y'all have helped us raise and the money and everything like that, of course. That's awesome. This is a great opportunity for us. Because like you said, um, we're a newer charity, and we started four years ago now, I guess. It doesn't feel like it's been four years, but um, I started it in July of 2020. And so since then, it's kind of been like uh, an experience and adventure trying to get started and get our name out there and everything like that. Um, but we started, I had an aunt, or I, yeah, I had an aunt. Um, her name was Jennifer. She had Down syndrome. She passed away um, in December of 2020 from just various complications. But um, she lived a good long life for someone with Down syndrome. She passed away when she was 45. So um, she had a, a great life and lots of people around her that loved her. But she, um, just from being around her and watching all the things that my grandparents, she lived with my grandparents um, sometimes and then she lived at a group home called Rainbow Omega for mm-hmm. in, adults mm-hmm. with special mm-hmm. needs. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, that's a great place. She absolutely loved it. Sometimes she didn't even want to come home. Like she was just <laughs> like, yeah, I'll stay here. <clears throat> um, but just watching everything that my grandparents did for her and all the things they had to do to care for her, the finances, like the physical and um, mental toll on them that it took, I kind of grew a heart for the special needs community and then – in high school, I got involved with something called Peer Partners um, at Hewitt Trustful, and that's where you kind of work with special needs kids, help them in like classes, extracurriculars, things like that. And then in college, I worked with um, something called Passage USA at South Alabama, and um, that's kind of the same thing with special needs people. So from that, I met a lot of families, um, and they're all great. And just like I said, it's such like a emotional and physical and financial toll that I wanted to do something to help them because um, even whether you're well off or you're not, like it, it's a lot um, mentally and financially yeah, and is. everything. So um, I want to do something to help them. So we started the foundation and it's named the Find You Foundation because Jennifer, she wasn't very, she's pretty nonverbal. She could say a few things like she could say book and she loved Taco Bell. So she could say Taco Bell <laughs> and then she called Santa ho ho. So like those are some of the few things she would say. But no matter what, when you greeted her, you know, hey, Jennifer, how are you? What's up, Jennifer? No matter what, it was always fine you. So she never had a bad day. Like, she would never look at you and say, I'm doing bad. Nothing like that. So we decided to go with the Fine You Foundation in honor of her. Um, That's kind of where we got the name from. That's awesome. Well, you you hit on it because um, there, there, there are definitely families out there and it's a blessing just like it was to your family. But I, I've said this so many times because of uh, uh, seeing it up front with so many people that we know. And, of course, I have a son that's also felt, felt a call to the special needs community and mm-hmm. has, you know, it, it, even when he was a, from the teenager on, is doing that work now. And, and, and there's, a, there's an exhaustion of the pressures, and it's there every single day. Right. Uh, and, and these are wonderful people. They certainly love their family member. They love this uh, person. This person is a blessing to them. We all, Absolutely. and, that, and that, that's all true. But what you guys deal with is the reality of the responsibility <clears throat> includes financial burden. Right. Uh, um, uh, just the basic, the things that we think are so simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the word I always hear is nothing's easy. 
you know, and everything we do, the simplest thing from going out to eat, uh, you know, like you did when you were younger. And, and like I said, we, I've seen these ministries talking to families at church that mm-hmm. say th- the fact that our child can be in their own place at church with people who are volunteering to take care of them just to give us a chance to go to worship. Right. Without the responsibilities of trying to take care of our child and the needs of that child while the service is going on, sometimes having to leave the service, having to come back. And and I think when when you guys put this foundation together, when some somebody can look to you guys and say, okay, so these things that make the the wonderful part of this person in our life, you take some of the burden part away from us. Right. It's it's a game changer, mm. and uh, just and it, to catch a break, yeah, yep. it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, find you foundation does these things like uh, you don't even think about you know what what what, what treatment needs uh, right. you may have to deal with, and uh, what uh, what what maybe uh, things we need uh, as far as equipment in our in in our lives. These things are very can be very very expensive, yeah, mm. and uh, and very very hard, and and so that's what they're they do and. Uh, it really, really, really is a wonderful thing you guys are doing. So, um, you know, and that name works really good if you want to cheer it. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. find you, find you. You know, <laughs> yeah, I love that. How are you? Find you. So <laughs> that's uh, great. So anyway, let's talk about it, Tim. Uh, what what did the people go out at the participating locations and bring in? I think it's gonna help. I think it is, especially well, he gives with this the number. Size. Let's all do that. Okay, okay. ready? Got, got yeah. it. It was four thousand three hundred dollars. Find you. <laughs> See, it works. I like that. I like that. Some reason Today's I'm doing, fine new day. I'm doing a Braves Tomahawk <laughs> talk know, for some reason. I, know, I don't know why. Still, <laughs> it, yeah, it sounded good. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, uh, so Caitlin, I hope that that takes some burden you. off you guys, as y'all take burdens off other people. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. um we have a event that we do every summer. Um, this year it's on June 22nd at Ferris Artisan Ales in Trustful, and we have. Bands come out like last year. We had a Def Leppard and a Van Halen tribute band. This year <laughs> nice. we have this year we have a Journey uh, tribute band coming out, so it's gonna be great. But we kind of do like a like a um, sweepstakes and stuff like that, money, just to yeah. raise money. That's great, and that's kind of been our main source right now, where we've been able to help like a lot of families. We've paid for therapies. We've paid for. Um, we had a child who was on the Paralympic team, um, paraplegic team, and he needed a new customized wheelchair, so we helped them with that. And then we've paid for kids to go to certain schools where their needs will be met and stuff like that. And it's just been amazing, like, seeing the community come together for us and, like, people like um, Tim who helps us through, like, Buffalo Wild Wings and things like that because, like, the difference it makes with these families, like you can tell whenever, you know, you're Absolutely. you're mm-hmm. talking with them and how like how it really does like touch their heart and it's just cool. amazing to be able to to see that and you know That's great. Yeah. That's then we can do a that. you. What about we go <laughs> yeah. find you? I like that. If you want to find out more, go to find you. That's F I N E What'd you say? You find you foundation.org. Also that'll be in show notes today. Uh, participating locations, Alabaster, Birmingham, Gardendale, Tuscaloosa, Hoover, downtown Birmingham, Trustwell, Pell City, Oxford, Chelsea, Vestavia, Northport. We'll be back on the next opportunity next. Rick and Bubba. Charge of their space defense. And he was uh, served in that position for 30 years. He 30 is now years. a retired general. Mm-hmm. 30 years. I see this title. You hit it, Bub. Ahead of Israel's Space Security Program. 30 space years. Course. 30 All years. Right. Uh, Rick, yeah. he, he has the title in Israel of being <clears throat> the father of Israel's satellite program. And wow. he claims that the world has been in contact with the Galactic Federation, and they recently made contact with Trump, and they're afraid he's going to blab about them before they want to be known. He says they have an agreement with the U.S. and Israel to work together to study the fabric of the universe and that they have an underground base that's already in existence on Mars. On Mars? Yeah. That's 
All right. Yeah. This, Imagine this, aliens this sitting is, down talking is, to Trump. <laughs> Greg, this is where we talk? need we need an Israeli right now that can come out that, that's familiar with the politics there. Yeah. So see if you if you asked us if all of a sudden we heard Bernie Sanders said this, there, we go, know. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need somebody who that's knows this guy good and lets point. us go, hey, he's nuts. <laughs> or, or, or or hey, you know what? There's something to it. Yeah. Well, it seems like I remember back during the Obama administration and I was listening to Coast to Coast a lot then. And it <laughs> seems like that there was, because they call it disclosure, one day there's going to be full disclosure. Yeah, full and, disclosure. Uh, and during the Obama presidency, at one point they were saying he is going to be the one to do it. Yeah. That he is going to he's going to pull the curtain back. Well, apparently they think Trump's going to be the blabber. <laughs> uh, according I guess to this so. Guy. Well, I tell you, letting him lose an election and, and have nothing to lose is not the way to keep it a secret, I think. No. Look, how about DJ will come clean now? If, if he's not going to be president, he can tell him. That's true. Uh, 15 DJ. minutes past the hour, more of the Rick and Bubba show coming up. <laughs> Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Now the listeners were partially right. We believe last year when this happened, we, we said for you to call us on 205-8-BIGLY-7. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. We're, we're getting we multiple bigly? emails. B-I-G-Y. No, L. There's an L. Bigly. Oh, wait a minute. Wait L-Y? A minute. L-Y? L-Y. Yeah. Bigly, right? Yeah, Bigly. Uh, well, no, B- B-I-G-Y, Biggie? L-Y. Yeah. L-Y. Biggest B-I-G-L-Y, B-I-G-L-Y, seven. So do we really call it 205-8-BIGLY-7? <laughs> That's what we say. I That's wish it was that all the time. Yeah. Kind of oh, yeah. I do too. Let's just change it. The heck with this toe for If you if you wanted to get fancy with it, you could call it Colt Bigly Seven, but the the O in Colts would be a zero. Yeah, yeah, that's that's too. That's going to be too confusing. All right, we got. I do need a caller. We got to got somebody's got to tell us what Bama did to LSU, and I, we haven't we haven't heard this yet, so we want to do that. But first of all, butcherbox.com slash Bubba. Butcherbox.com slash Bubba. How, how are you doing this yet? Why are you putting this off? It's one of the things we look forward to when the butcher box shows up. Uh, the delicious meats that are available to you, and let's face it, in, in the old pandemic world, the more stuff you can have delivered contactless to the door. To this, I, I did not see the <laughs> Alabama LSU game. Uh, he's a Bama fan, and he's saying that Bama set some things straight uh, in Baton Rouge. When they went to take on uh, the the LSU Tigers, uh, Rog, welcome to Rick and Bubba. How are you? I'm doing good. How you guys doing? Good. Fired up, Roger. Uh, I know that Alabama won big. Uh, uh, LSU though really has has struggled this year. But uh, you said Alabama had to make a make a statement. Yeah, I don't know if anybody, too many people were recognized, but Alabama was wearing their home jersey in Baton Rouge. Coach O, last year after they beat us in Tuscaloosa, he said, this is our house. Well, we just, you know, we showed up with our jerseys, our home jerseys on, letting them know that before the game even started, this was going to be our house. I don't know if anybody recognized that or not. Roger, I hate to hmm. be the one to break this to you. Um, LSU always wears white at home. When playing the SEC. When yeah. playing in they the have SEC. A that, that, that is their home jersey. That everybody agreed to let them. I yeah, think that score kind of sent a message, though. I do. I agree with oh, that. Yeah. The yeah, score reads yeah, yeah. a whole lot more than the jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. Alabama didn't have a choice on what jersey to wear because the SEC lets LSU wear white at home, and they always do in the SEC. Good point. Mm. Good point. But if they play a non conference team, they wear purple. It's a good point, Rick. Twenty-two minutes now past the hour, so thank you for your help uh, for the Find You Foundation. Find you, Find and you. Uh, so now another opportunity comes your way uh, this Monday in the Rick and Bubba Buffalo Wild Wings Charity Charge. Uh, so uh, you know it's like we're sending you out again. It's time to go out and make a difference again. Uh, coming up this Monday. So uh, Tim Spencer. Uh, all the participating Buffalo Wild Wings. And when I gave you the list going into the break, don't forget in Alabama, that does include the two brand-new Buffalo Wild Wings Go. 
Uh, that's where these are mainly for to-go orders, pick-up, but you can also dine there. They do have some dining in Vestavia and Northport, so they're in the mix now. They are, they're making, and they're making a difference. They're that's making awesome. it happen. So uh, this is an organization, you know, oh, we've been doing it so long now, we're going back and revisiting some of them, and some of them we wish that, you know, just uh, there wasn't a need, but, uh, but uh, there is, and this is another one of those things that's difficult in life, and that is the earthly death of a child uh it is um you know you know you wouldn't wish that on anyone uh i know that tim you've been through that i've been through that and there's there's many others who have uh beckett's blessing box uh i remember the first time that we uh, we met uh this family and they they told us the loss uh, of, about the story of their child uh, the earthly loss and 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 what they try to do is is when this unfortunately happens in someone's life um, there, there's, you start looking, I remember with Sherry and I, Tim, I don't know if you went through this and it was so kind of people. It's like people begin to disinundate you with resources. You need to read this book. You need to do this. And, and here's what we did. And here's, so here's a counseling service and da, 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 da. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. But sometimes that can be a little overwhelming because so much of it's coming in and you're trying to discern, <clears throat> is this even, a, you know, what, you, didn't, you don't know what to think. You can't even no. scratch the surface. No, start. Yeah, and so what happens, Beckett's Blessing Box is a gift resource box from from a family that, uh, hey, we've been there, and here's the things that were really helpful to us. And and uh, so one of the things that's inside every box is a copy of my wife's book, uh, Bronner, and uh, that's in there. I got an email just yesterday from someone that said that God used that uh, book. They were sent one of these resource boxes to, and said it radically changed my life. And so, uh, so anyway, so after over the last three years, they've sent over 500 boxes to 35 different states and seven different countries. Uh, and so here's another opportunity for you to go out and enjoy this great food. Uh, but once again, 10% of that, those food sales is really going to make a difference in people's lives. And in this particular one, just like what we heard, in a time when they really need it. Yeah, and I, the, ours was a little different from you, Rick. Ours was late term. Yeah, but still, um, still man. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, 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 it's the worst thing I've ever been through in my life. Yeah. And it, I went through it twice. Yeah. Mm. So, um, you know, you don't you, – you, you, bad for me, worse for my wife. Sure. Um, you don't know what to say. You don't know how to act. You don't know what to do. Right. You know, and like you said, you're getting caring people. Sure. Um, but uh, I I remember doing this charity. It's been a couple of years, and mm -hmm. the 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 people that came in and talked about it, they just know exactly. You know, the people that've been through it. The only people you really really get not advice, but that understand, right. you know? They and so, yep. yeah, exactly. So when, when we, when we, when I saw this on the list this morning, when I walked in, I was sort of, I'm, I'm glad we're going to do this um, again. Well, again, it goes back to what we just heard from, you know, find you foundation. Find you is we, w this was designed seven years ago for, for what you said. There's some gigantic gargantuan foundations and charities out there. And we certainly are not, there's no indictment on them. No, a, lot, a, a lot of them do good yeah. work. But something like this for them, it, it might turn out to be a couple office chairs. Correct. You know, uh, what what we're trying to do is find those. They're doing great work but don't have those kind of budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you say $4,300, $5,000, $4,500, it's a big deal. A real big deal. And, and for Beckett's blessings, just like Find You, I mean, if they can get a check around that, that's a lot of boxes. I was talking and, to and a lot of lives. I was right. talking to Taylor Morton uh, with uh, Beckett's blessing, and they said they had seventy-five boxes in the queue ready, uh, you know, that need to go out, and this is going to be instrumental. In there that. you go. So yeah, yeah awesome. so, so that that is, and you're and you're right. You know, it's uh, I know you you're the same way, Tim. You refer to it as a club that you wish you weren't in, mm -hmm. uh, but when you're in there, you really can network with other True. people, and for them to know what what it was like and what they need and what was helpful uh, and, and put that in a box. So you, you get something from them immediately that says, now this stuff we know you need. Yeah. And uh, so it's great. And uh, so thank you all for that. And and Tim, congratulations. It seems like that uh, the restaurants just continue to do well. And we do. You're, you're doing well. Your family doing well. Family's doing well. I was just telling Bubba, we started this and my little girl was a yeah. kindergartner. Yeah. Wow. She is headed five weeks left in sixth grade. We're yeah. headed to headed the big to the school. Big school. Oh, headed yeah. to the big school is what they call it. Wow. Rick, he's got her, he's got himself a golfer too. Masters that. week. I heard Masters that. week, Tim. So she Masters played, week. Hey, she's playing golf. 
She's playing golf? She does. Wow. She does. How she about that? And actually, I don't force her to, so it's a good thing. <laughs> can <laughs> she I, loves it. Can yeah. I give Buffalo Wild Wings a shout-out? Yes. I was on this uh, uh, this eclipse trip with Ruby. Um, I had, had so many messes, so many problems, and, of course, I was not prepared. <laughs> um, at one point, I tried to give Ruby a healthy chocolate bar, and she spit it out on the airplane. So there's just chocolate everywhere. Sure. We get off the plane. I'm, f- I'm panicking, and then I see the, the wonderful yellow logo of yes. Bluff- Buffalo Wild Wings yes. in the Houston airport. Yes. I'm like, they have French fries. That's where we're going. <laughs> Not only do they have French fries, they've got – because people are eating the wings. They've got the wipes. Oh, they've got oh, wipes oh, like crazy. Winner. Yeah, baby. Winner. So I grabbed about 20 of those wipes, took them on the road. So thank you so much, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, thank I, you I so much. I keep a stash of them. Whatever it takes. Me. I don't have a toddler, and I need them. Yeah. <laughs> the rarely – Mention benefit. <laughs> yeah. Buffalo Wild Wings. That's right. Wipes. wipes and a fan. Moist wipes. <laughs> Tim, Tim, thank you for thank everything you, you do, brother. Thank y'all. Thank over you. A it's, quarter, it's a team effort. Over a quarter of a million dollars donated in the last seven years. Wow. That's incredible. Love it. And, awesome. Uh, thanks to all of you out there that go out and participate in Buffalo Wild Wings Charity thank Charge. You. You're, you're making a difference while, while having a great time at a great restaurant. You can do it again this coming Monday. We'll be back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. So, I mean, Raj, I hated to take away that moment, uh, but I'm kind of with everybody else. I think the 55 was all that needed to be said. But. You don't have the double nickel? <laughs> right, double nickel. But just Ooh. I didn't I didn't want you to carry out a worse. narrative that may may not be exactly right. Thought he uh, had something. Roger, we didn't want you to get out and tell millions of people that so that you look like you didn't know what you were talking about. And I'm going to go on record. I hate home whites. I hate anybody that wears a home white. The Cowboys, all the people. I can't yeah, stand I do it. Too. Yeah, I do too. I think if you're at home, you need your dark jersey. Yeah, that's <clears throat> a couple of things I'd do if I was in charge of all uniforms, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would not let anybody wear white at home, <laughs> and I would also forbid anybody to wear two solid colors, uh, jersey and pants. And double yeah. numbers. Yeah, the and double numbers, numbers and, and zero. I'd run those things so far out of <laughs> out of college football. They wouldn't be a zero to be found, yeah. and 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 they wouldn't be two people wearing the same number in any way, shape, or form. I wouldn't allow it. No way, <laughs> no how. You know, the strange thing about the LSU jerseys <laughs> is I think their purple jerseys are a good-looking jersey. That's a good-looking uniform. Yeah. But they, they've they got some kind of, you know, they freak themselves out about it, and uh, they got a special exemption when the SEC standardized a lot of things to do that, like they let Mississippi State ring cowbells, so you can't ring those anywhere else. Hey, so, what about the fact that baseball and basketball does right the opposite? Would y'all change that too? Yeah, they do do the opposite. They sure because baseball and basketball do white at home. Yeah, yeah, right. that, but right. that's been their tradition. I like so, that, yeah, I, I don't care for that. Okay. If it had it my way, I wouldn't do that. But that's what I was asking. I was wondering yeah, if y'all would, no, when I you prefer, change, if you get the keys to change something, yeah. are you changing that too? Yeah, I would change basketball too if I'm given that okay. kind of. Well, authority. it doesn't bother me because okay. all of them do it. Yeah. I mean, I, what I don't like is one team has home whites and nobody else does. Mm-hmm. I mean. I want to see a team mix up the uniform a little bit. I hate when they wear the same uniform <laughs> on the road and at home. I mean, give me, give me a couple. Give me, let's mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Don't get crazy. I don't want twelve different versions. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but I, you I don't you want know, Oregon. I, you got I, that now too. <laughs> I know. I want a home uniform, and I want it traditional, and I don't want it changing a lot. I want a road uniform, and then I want one that I call my alternate, just one, and 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 that's it. No, nothing else. And it can and, change from year to year. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, that. I got no problem with that. Uh, if I could be in charge of all th- this thing about the the double numbers, I, I just don't even know what to do about that. <laughs> it, it, I would rather have it, home. Can I tell you the one that I think is the worst of all of this is Florida, who has a legendary uniform with that orange helmet and the Gators on the side, and they can they can wear blue, they can wear orange, that's fine. But when they go to that white helmet with the elf on the side of it, that is the lamest look for them, in my opinion. That's just my – I hate that look. How did you like yeah. the blue helmets this past weekend? It mm-hmm. was the gator, regular gator, but it was blue. It was kind I of didn't a like matte, it. I like their blue. orange helmets. Yeah. And I think that it actually messes up quarterbacks who have to make a split decision when they're they're used to looking for a helmet a certain color that that, that changes. Because I, I think they ought to keep the same helmet no matter what. Bubba, if I was in charge of all uniforms, you would wear one helmet for the season, period. <laughs> uh, there'd be no changing helmets. Uh, and uh, I wish I could be dictator of all sports because there's a lot of things I'd, I'd straighten out. I mean, and, and, and you know what? All of you would enjoy sports more if I could get in mm-hmm. charge of it. 
uh, cause I, I would have that thing running like a filed, a fine oil machine and, uh, and we wouldn't have any of this foolishness. Yeah. And, uh, but I want y'all to know one thing is <laughs> Bama showed LSU by wearing their crimson in there and took over the house and declared themselves a home team. That's it. I right. think another right. reason I don't like home whites cause when you play away, you wear white too. That was so my you point, white you never all change. Year. You're mm-hmm. in the same uniform all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I like want to be either. able to look at a game and know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's right. the location? Right. Well, and if and if I was a player, that would be boring to me that I never ever get to wear the dark uniform. Yeah. I wear dark, white dark every jersey. Week. Mm-hmm. You know, there there was that feeling of, hey, we're playing at home, I got my dark on. We're on the road, I got my white on. I mean, I that's, like that's the way it said, ought to be. The purple oh, jersey looks good and, and on the pro level, I think Dallas's blue jersey looks really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Yeah. Well, and, and Greg, I've evolved. I used to not be a white on white guy, but I like it now. I like white on white. Yeah, I like white on white. Yeah, there was a time I was against that. But uh, I, I'm like but your I, own solid. I, I'm not a big solid guy. Now, no, the solid jersey with the solid pants, the same color. I hate that. That's the ugliest. I mean, that that just needs to be dropped. If I could ban that, I'd ban it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everybody wants to live under tyranny now. Why can't I be the the tyrant? Oh yeah, why yeah. not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Uniform just man, declare it. Yeah, you know what you'd have to do? Somebody say, hey, have you gone to Commissioner Burgess and got that uniform approved? No, we hadn't. Somebody say, hey, he ain't going to like that. <laughs> you know, he said, yeah, hey, boy, uh, you, you better try again. <laughs> Don't let him see it. <laughs> hey, we want our defensive end to be number uh, uh, would be number zero. Commissioner. Five minutes past the hour. Thank you for being with us today uh, as we work our way back. Wednesday Bible study back today. We're almost done with 2 Corinthians. It's been a fascinating run. Uh, and uh, we've got that uh, noon central, 1 o'clock Eastern on the YouTube channel today. Really uh, surprised so many one incredible things we, we quote all the time from this letter and all the history behind it um, has been uh, learned so much during this. Uh, so if you get a chance to catch that, catch that today or catch the archive a little bit later on. Grace and Russell. Uh, actor will be with us coming up next hour. I'm going to talk about his latest project. Uh, so he's been on the show a couple times in the past. So we'll look forward to catching up with him too. Yeah, man, he's been he's been very successful. What a great career for him. Yeah. Uh, so we we got stories. Well, un- <laughs> and Rick Roll Tide Willie. We we uh, will have a video clip of him today. Yeah, we'll we'll get into all of that uh, as we as we move <laughs> forward uh, on the Hard update on. He's, on the he's Kentucky, defending NATO. Uh, the the Kentucky uh, the Kentucky uh, coaches search. I mean, we could do that now if you want to. I mean, we could jump right in there now. Uh, there's no reason not to. So Adler video eight, uh, unless we had something else lined up. I mean, who's going to bump Roll Tide Willie out of this slot? Oh, okay. And he is he is upset. That Kentucky was looking at Nate Oates as a possible replacement he dressed for their coach. Ones. And, of course, uh, uh, Coach Oates has, has come out and said he's not interested in that. Yeah. And uh, Coach Coach, he's staying at Alabama. I understand Bruce Pearl has not said that. Uh, I, I haven't. I'm really not following that, sir. No, that right last now. night I was I, I, I was at a, a, a dinner, and this was brought up. And somebody said, Nate Oates has said he's not interested. Bruce Pearl still hasn't said that yet. Right. And that was at the time. I, I, I'm not following I, this. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I figured you might know. Well, mm. I did have a brief text with him. Right. So um, how's that? Well, did he, did, 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 well, here's did, he, say tide, he's not, did he say he's not going? Here's roll okay. tide. Okay. Here, okay. Here, here, we go. Here, here we go. Look at him. That's Chad talking. Well, K- Kentucky tried to steal Nate Oates from us. They really? tried to steal Nate Oates, but Nate Oates going to stay with us once I'm tired. Hey, Nate Oates loves the tide. <laughs> he loves the tide. He just could not leave us. You love Nate Oates, Willie? I love Nate Oates to death, and he loves me. He, been, he, he loves the tide. He's been good to us, ain't he, Willie? He's been dang good to us. That's, he ain't going to, he ain't finna leave us. That's right. He's in for the long haul, ain't he, Willie? He ain't in for the long haul. He's finna win that dollar for us. That's right. He's going to bring it on home to Alabama, ain't he, Willie? He's finna bring it home next year. 
this coming year. That's right. That's right. Had a good run to the Final Four. We get we get better every year, don't we? Every year we get better and better. Cause Nate for the bring it home. He's got them. He's got them two McDonald All Americans coming to play when the boys it. are staying. That's we it. losing some good players, but we ain't losing the good coach already. We ain't losing no good coach because Nate gonna stay with us. And baby. we got some good players that's coming back. Oh yeah, we got several good players. Tide ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. We we ready to win that title and bring it home. Tide, we don't give a piss. <laughs> About nothing but the tide and Nate Oates. <laughs> <laughs> and Nate Oates. Uh, we almost got through it. Didn't well, we? Yeah, you wish yeah. they'd get a, a different <laughs> a chant there. Yeah, I think our fun. fine you was better. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, that uh, that'll be the email of the day today. Uh, but tide. but anyway, so uh, tell them to go get their own coach. So what he said, Greg, hey, Kentucky needs to get their own coach. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so anyway. So where is the search on that? Hams, anybody know what's uh, what's the short list? It was. Well, Hurley at Connecticut, uh, Connecticut is uh, being rumored, but you know he has said my. Yeah, I think his wife's from New Jersey, and I don't know why you. Other than money, I don't know why you would leave UConn. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. and, you, 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 you appear to have it rolling. You You're do. rolling. So, now I think they can offer a lot more money yeah. than UConn's paying him. So obviously that'll be a discussion point. But you know I think they're in kind of a situation. Is it Baylor? Maybe Baylor's coach and where's Bruce Pearl um, and all this. He's being mentioned, but to your point, Brother, he's. I, I mean, think Bruce would be mentioned for any, and Nate Oates both, for any job. What do you say in the text? Huh? What do you say in the text? Well, get in I just had people asking me last night. I, do I, think, I didn't know what to say. I do think, and I this told is, him he better leave that bluegrass alone. <laughs> get out of it. I, I, I sound like a <laughs> I do think we're in an interesting time of college basketball when the both the Auburn and Alabama head coaches are being considered for the Kentucky job. Isn't that weird? Like, that's an interesting thing. To me, all right. So I'm gonna. Th- I'm, th- I'm just and not just. These are not names that are just being thrown around, thrown around. These are they're interested in these people. Yeah, I'm, I'm th- just. I find that very interesting. I'm gonna throw this out, and maybe because what you said that's changing a little bit. Uh, definitely changed some, but no doubt about that. But I remember, and Bubba, you've quoted this many times on the show. We've talked about it. Is there something to be said talking about Hurley now? But it also ties to Nate Oates and Bruce Pearl too. Hurley is that. One of the, the legendary things that you in the story of Bear Bryant was that when he was the football coach at Kentucky, he realized that he was coaching football at a basketball school. Right. And he, he mentioned this moment when when that was all made crystal clear to him. Is that true? At We've the, all heard at, that story. At, yeah, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, it is true that Kentucky was is a basketball school. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, considered yeah. that. Considered yeah. that. Yeah. So is there something to be said to the Hurleys – and, and I'm going to go all the way out to the other, he's at a basketball school. His program is priority. They're winning like crazy. The football team does not overshadow the basketball not team at Connecticut. You, you're it. I mean, you're you're their focus, <laughs> yeah. but women's and men. Yeah. Okay? So if, if, you, if you go to Kentucky, you're kind of in the same boat. You are. The football team a little more prominent now yeah. than it used to be. But, yeah. nothing, I mean, you're, you're still good. Connecticut, you really got it. Yeah. And then back on the other end of the spectrum, is there, is there some allure? Nate Oates says no in his situation. Is there an allure to be a basketball coach at a basketball school versus being a basketball coach at a football school? Yeah. Now, I know money changes everything. It does. To quote does. Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, you know. That's I'm, a good I, question, and, and, I, and I don't know. And I think yeah. you, you – Scott Drew at Baylor, that was the Baylor coach, I couldn't think of his name. He's probably at this point the front runner for this thing. Billy Donovan, who because Hurley, I think, has said he's he's not. Yeah. Um Billy Donovan, uh Chicago Bulls coach, has said he's staying with the Bulls. Um Rick Patino's name's been mentioned. <laughs> Oh, I don't know Lord. why you would do that, but that yes. name is being mentioned. It's a bit of a um, retread situation yeah. there. Um, a little I, awkward I think situation if, too. I think if you get to that name, then you didn't get the guys you wanted originally. Xavier's coach, I don't know him, but Sean Miller, he's being mentioned. Uh, and then Mark Pope at BYU. Um, Let me ask you this. What about the other Hurley? Um, Bobby? Yeah. He's who, at Arizona State. Is is he – I mean, obviously his he brother's was, been I, good. He's been good. Yeah. His dad was good. Is oh, he yeah. – would Kentucky look at him as this is a guy that could c- come in and go so. the next level? No, his, I don't think so. Was his success as a head coach average? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, not a flop. Yeah. But no, he's not, not a flop. Front, and he's a good coach, but he's not the answer to Kentucky. No doubt that Calipari, his plan was we, we go out, we bring in these first one-year guys, One and, and, done and, guys. and we, we right. see if we can win. That that didn't work long term. People got distraught with him at Kentucky. I think they were ready for him to go. A lot of them are. Is Kentucky one of those places that if you take the basketball job, is it a pleasant experience? I think so. Yeah, I think expectations 100%. are high. Yeah, expectations yeah. are high. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you uh, who's in the same boat but on different sports, the new football coach at Alabama. That's a similar situation. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Is and it so like that? That's what's going on here. Yeah. You've got a guy that's a legend who's won and – He's taking something else, and and now you got to go and fill the big shoes. And we always say you don't want to be this guy; you want to be the next yeah. guy. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, really, the the NIL situation. Everybody's and, and the, one and done. And, and I, that's what I was going to yeah, say. Right. It, Absolutely, it's, it's changed the whole landscape. I mean, you've seen it at other schools. Uh, this may actually be the best time for a Calipari's exactly. format to You're work. Right. I mean, You're right. did, was this a little premature? You think maybe a year two? Well, he I was he, he asked Kentucky to counter the offer. The reports are from Arkansas, and they said, "Nah." Well, in talking so, to an Arkansas fan, still he, one of the highest paid out there. He said exactly what you said. I said, "Y'all sure y'all want that one and done format?" And he goes, yeah, everybody, "Everybody's everybody's one yeah. and done." I mean, I saw. I looked up earlier when I was going to get a refill on some coffee, and I saw where another Auburn player had jumped in the portal as well. And so, yeah, both that's point the, guards that's are, it. are I mean, in it now. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah. And it's constant. I mean, it's how every keep, hour somebody else is jumping in. You you are going to have to specialize in putting teams together for one year. I mean, I, yeah, hate, to, I hate to go back it. to this again. Yeah. You're going to have to be a quick change artist yeah. and uh, be able to put a team together and get the most you can out of them because not only are the people leaving who are not playing, the ones who are starting are leaving. They just want a different scenery. And, that's what, when, when that started, and a bigger thought, check now, yeah. especially. That's another thing that well, wasn't even there. And, and Rick, before. we got kids leaving schools, and I mean, this is public knowledge. You you can read about it online. They're making four hundred thousand dollars starting, and they're unhappy. They're going somewhere else for a bit, for a bit more money. Yeah, four hundred thousand dollars to be a starting guard in basketball in the SEC, and you're unhappy. You go somewhere else because so you get paid. Which is also why the Nick Sabans of the world have left the game. Yep, and uh, they'll. It, it, those kind of coaches can't could never ever live peacefully in this environment. Yep. So you got to look a new brand of coach yep. has to yep. come along. Fifteen minutes to the top. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Just that's that's dead on arrival. Yeah. Did you yeah. see the game? I can't remember which one it was this weekend where they had to keep taking the jersey, the zero jersey, on and off of a guy on the yeah, punt team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had the same me. as the another person on it or something. Yeah, who Good was that? Gosh. Was that A and M or who was that? I can't it's remember so who confusing. it was. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it was uh, it, it was a handle because they couldn't hardly get the jersey. It took like three people to get it on and off. Yeah, because yeah, now the way we do jerseys now, you can't get them on and off. And and don't forget that game, guys. You remember this? I don't remember if it was last football season. We were on the air. We actually, there was actually a college game that featured the same number three times because the kicker was wearing it too. Yeah. Yep. We 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 had the kicker, a defensive want, player, and an offensive player all with the same number. Yep. I, don't, I don't want the same number as my teammate. I don't want it. Right. Why? Why would anybody want that? <laughs> you know, I, I want would, my own number. All the kickers have the same number. Who's out there? Which one is it? <laughs> All right, we'll be back. It's 15 minutes to the top of the hour, 205-824-4597 or 205-8-BIGLY-7. Uh, more of the Rick and Bubba show coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Well, Rick, we have the first person to be vaccinated in the new battle against COVID-19 in Britain. Her name is Margaret Keenan, and she turns 91 next week. She says it's the best birthday present she's ever had as she rolls up her sleeve on this historic day as UK starts its mass vaccination program. All right, help me on uh, how the UK is already to this place. Um, They approved it a little bit quicker than the FDA did. And uh, so they they are rolling it out. And from what I understand here in the U.S., we already have the vaccine in forward positions. We're just waiting on the FDA to OK it. And if I'm not mistaken, what is today? I think they meet uh, Thursday or Friday 
uh, what's the 10th? Is that Thursday? Mm -hmm. Um, and it could be approved at that meeting. Um, so I don't know They they have theoretically been doing their due diligence on this to double check the testing data. But, uh, you know, I was just thinking, I mean, you're giving it to this lady that's 91 years old. What if, uh, Easy. I mean, what if it doesn't go good? You know, is that gonna is that gonna throw the whole? I <sighs> figure off? she's lived long enough. Mm. All right, so yeah, yeah that's. Uh, go, but go, I mean, <clears throat> if you if you wanted to fire everybody I'm up, I mean, maybe a healthy forty five year old mm. or something. I mean, I, I mean, anything could happen, right? Yeah, well, yeah. let me just think in PR here. That's all. You're so right. now there, this is the same one, right? I mean, the, the, they all have a booster, correct? We don't have one that's boosterless yet, do we? No, this will be the first. She gets one, and then she gets another one in like twenty six days or something. Right. <clears throat> um, y'all, well, seriously, what if she turns into some kind of monster or something? Right. No, I mean, can you imagine the worldwide panic? What if she woke up and she looked thirty years younger? Oh, wow! I don't know why I went with thirty. She goes, "Hi." I know all that's funny, but what if she is 91? What if something else? That's what I'm saying. Is I it mean, really a true test? And you do know? you think right. you don't think the Info Wars and the Alex Jones crowd will go bonkers if something happens to her? No. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what if what if it's one of those things where she she gets like superpowers or something? <laughs> right, she starts throwing things around. I, I don't. I don't. I don't see it going positive the only Starts thing flying. is it can go negative yeah yeah and somebody goes that's the lady that got the vaccine there she goes she just flew by <laughs> i mean you got you look guys it could go either way it I mean, could yeah now, now, like, but, like, but i'm with you guys on 91 i mean we, we we're putting some out there that the the window for them is 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 relatively small i mean uh do, do you, do you right, let me ask this do you find yourself hmm. once she gets the booster do you kind of find yourself kind of wanting to expose her to somebody and see what happens? Just see, yeah. <laughs> I do. Well, I, I'm sure they're going to be studying these folks a lot. They'll probably be having antibody tests every three or four days. And, I mean, they're going to watch them, I guess. But it's just, mm-hmm. I mean, they, the the older population is going to be one of the, you know, first ones that's vaccinated. So they got to know, I mean, here we go. You know, we're, we're going up the, we've just gone over the hill uh, on the roller coaster. We're going to see what happens. And, of course, here in America, Trump has said executive order today. Uh, Americans will get it first from our companies, but they, they, they're, they're not. He, he's going to block them, right? What is this, some kind of deal? Uh, we, we don't want you sending the vaccine outside of our country first. What, what is this today? You know, Rick, yeah, I, the, some well, of it's Pfizer's been manufactured out. here, and I think Trump wants to be sure that it's used on Americans first before it's sent overseas. Uh, I'm not. The first phone troll of the day, Patriot Mobile Phone Troll. Make your phone money count by going to patriotmobile.com slash bup. It's your turn to be with us. Release the Kraken, the Rick and Bubba audience all across America and around the world uh, are ready to call in at 866-WE-BE-BIG. The Real Greg Burgess taking your phone calls on the Patriot Mobile Phone Troll right now. If you dial us up, you'll get in. We'll get you in line, and we will let the troll begin. No meaningless shout-outs, no shameless plugs, no baby predictions. uh, None of those things allowed in the troll. The troll is uh, there's a plate of meat that's put on the table. Let's eat. (laughs) Uh, and uh, so you uh, you make the comments uh, and uh, bring the information now at 866-WE-BE-BIG. SimplySafeBubba.com. While you're dialing, I'll remind you of SimplySafeBubba.com. Their 24-7 burglar busting protection for your home or small business. SimplySafeBubba.com. Springtime is here. We love the fresh air. We love the fresh starts. Uh, we love our place freshly cleaned. Uh, but it's also the perfect time to give your home or your business or your property a fresh security look at simplysafebubba.com. Now, this is not the old school stuff. Uh, you don't have to make it uh, fit uh, in a one size fits all. That's over. Customize. You will have indoor, outdoor cameras. You'll have sensors anywhere that you are susceptible to a break in. It's backed by 24 7 professional monitoring. That's less than a dollar a day. 
Uh, and so I go to simplysafebubba.com. There's no contract. You get a 60-day money-back guarantee, and we're going to get you 20% off any new system when you sign up with the Fast Protect monitoring, and you do want that. They can see problems in real time. Simplysafebubba.com, or, or find the link at, uh, at rickandbubba.com under the Sponsors button. There is no safe quite like simplysafebubba.com safe. 30 seconds a pop. The Patriot Mobile phone troll ready to go. Trolling, trolling, trolling. Keep them phone to trolling. Here we come, phone trolling, phone troll. Jerry in Piedmont. Piedmont. <laughs> I sound like a, a roll tide Willie. Uh, Jerry, go ahead. What's going on, guys? We're good. Hey, listen, I think I figured Greg's dream out that he was talking about this morning. It just... It just means that he's a dedicated, rare to go, hard working son of a guy. That's it. Didn't hear it. Uh, what was Greg's dream about? He uh, keeps dreaming that he's already up, getting ready for work, brushing his teeth, oh, yeah. and, and all that. He wakes up and it's only 10 o'clock at night. Uh, oh, okay. And he's still got time to sleep. But he, it, that's been reoccurring here over the last few weeks. Okay. I, that, yeah. It's maybe, bothering so, him. So that's how Jerry has interpreted that dream. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, lines are available. Getting to you as quick as we can. Be patient at 866-WE-BE-BIG-SAM in Huntsville. 30 seconds. Sam, go ahead. This is Sam, the computer. Mm-mm. Wiener. <laughs> Wiener. <laughs> huh. I'm looking for a new job. I don't even. Uh, winner, winner. Thing, I'm looking I, for a new I job. Get, what was that? I get. I don't think he said winner. He didn't. <laughs> but I get what he was doing. But if you're going to do that, you got to have a better robot voice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What? Do, do I even want to know where that comes from? No, Sam, my computer. Yeah. The, right. the voice of the computer. I guess he was trying to be the computer. There's right. been some bits where you've typed in that word. I too, got you. Okay. Trying yeah. to figure out how do we say Anthony. Remember Anthony? Oh yeah. We, yeah, we, we did we a lot of a wiener up. Yeah. Of course. I can't remember. I can't forget that. Those things. Yeah. Uh, we continue Sweetwater, Tennessee. David standing by. There's room for you if you want to join us at 866 We Be Big. Uh, David, go ahead. I wanted to weigh in on the use of a term for large people without saying fat. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandmother was such a kind hearted person, would never say anything bad about anybody. And so when you would ask her about somebody, well, you know, describe them or whatever. And if they were fat, she would say, you know, what what are they like? Well, they're sorty healthy. Sorty healthy. <laughs> sorty healthy. <laughs> well, that, that's that's not bad. My dad was pretty much straight to the point. Yeah. Uh, we were just discussing earlier when I thought I was going to wear an L.A. Dodger bat helmet and be sharp. And he asked me if the words L.A. stood for something else. Other yeah. Than Los yeah. You got to be careful about L.A. What's your helmet there? stand for, son? Lard. And I was like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Just, now the helmet feels different. Uh, lines are available. 866-WE-BE-BIG. <laughs> Philip, Philip, welcome to the show. Go ahead. 30 seconds. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, I, what I wanted to ask you, if you could play that recording there of that man that took that airplane flight down to Louisiana. And uh, uh, I don't know. He, he had a problem with something down there. Y'all, y'all played it here about three or four months ago. Can you recall that? I, I, I'm so sorry, Philip. I do not Phillip, recall. Philip, I'm that. drawing a total blank. Well, can you, Speedy, can you, you be more specific? Well, it's well. We need gear here. Hey, let me tell you. Uh, I don't. Your brother in there doing that? Oh, no, well, you were just in oh, his he, face. Oh, Did you see him? Oh, he lit up like Christmas. Yeah, yeah. He took the call. He, he's he's been mining for the uh, a good call, <laughs> and he, buddy, he had him one. Did you see how excited? <laughs> yeah, he was? Oh, yeah, oh yeah. He was uh, giddy. I, I, the only thing I remember, there's been various. Now it wasn't a few months ago; it was years ago when everybody was playing back the guy who stayed calm trying to land the plane. Even though he, you know, didn't have much time in a plane, he knew a little bit about it. Never flew that kind of plane. They did the movie about it mm-hmm. with uh, um, uh, who we love, Dennis Quaid. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I remember playing that audio. Remember the guy? And he was oh, real, real yeah. calm, and we kept coming oh, back yeah. saying that 
Yeah. I got it on the ground. They wrote Ted. You yeah, remember that? I do remember that. That's all is I that remember. But that wasn't three or four months ago. That was maybe is there a flashback Speedy, I, I was looking at footage. Oh, uh, it's on high eight, by the way, format. Don't see that much anymore. No, you don't. Uh, of you and the Russian jet. I've got you at the hangar getting into it, doing the passes back and forth what? on the ground, yeah. all that stuff. Oh, please. I, I, yeah. Well, I'd love to see that. Yeah. How, how, how do you watch it on high eight? The camera has a screen on. I'm gonna have to download right. it. I'm not sure what the video out our situation that. is oh, to, okay. to dub yeah. it. Yeah. But, John, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Thirty seconds. Go ahead. Yeah, what I was calling about with the bridge collapse uh, and them pushing the electric cars. The cars weigh about a thousand pounds more than your your yeah. typical car, and I don't ever hear anybody bring up uh, the. Uh, our bridge is going to get overloaded in traffic jam situations, things of that nature that, you know, everybody talks about charging the cars, but there's a lot more to that that I don't think our infrastructure is going to be ready for. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I, I know the bridge collapse was because it was hit by a ship, not because electric cars are too heavy. But well, I guess he's, he's, I, I think the, the point is, and, and it is a valid point, and it has been brought up. Yeah. That you know the bridges are built with no, a no, certain amount true. of tolerance. No, that, yeah, I mean that, that one, yeah. that's, that's the why they don't fall point. in. I mean they will hold yeah. more than if it's loaded with eighteen. Have meters. we factored in how much heavier these cars are? But I don't know that you'll be beyond their handling capability. Right. But you are definitely do not have the margin of error that you have now. Mm-hmm. So there is going to be bridges out there that are older that maybe w- was not built to certain standards that are going to have a problem. If you had electric cars lined up end to end. Yeah, okay. I so a lot of that's going to have to be looked yeah. at. That's another thing you don't think about when you start pushing these things. Valid. Roy, Roy, I don't have a lot of time, but you said you know why that what the guy was talking about, Philip. I believe it's, I believe it's a spoiled older man when he got into it with the preacher. When y'all, well, he came and go to a church meeting. Oh. Okay. 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 That still wasn't a few months ago. That that was uh, that was years ago. Still traumatic. But I thought he talked about an airplane. Well, y'all, we flew know. in an airplane. Yeah, yeah. And I did play that bit during the best of week. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's, that's got to be it. Of course, that went months ago. Now that was just weeks ago. It was. Uh, I'm just. I'm all confused. I know. I am too. Hey, hey, you ain't even looking out the window. Yeah, I, I, I remember yeah. all that. I could see why that bit kind of attracted him. Hey, them tires is low. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. So life insurance is not a fun topic. Nobody wants to talk about it. But let me tell you this. It it really needs to be this simple. And when people try to carry you off in these other places, just hold up. What we want to know is I want to be responsible to those who depend on me. And if I pass away, I want them to get the check that y'all said you would give them. Trust me, going through the things we've gone through recently with our family, um, insurance companies. uh, Uh, So anyway, why don't you simplify this and go to someone you can trust, and it's just as simple as it can be. Ladderlife.com slash Bubba. It's 100% digital. No doctors, no needles, no paperwork. When you apply for $3 million in coverage or less, all you do is answer a few questions about your health and an application. Did you hear me? If it's $3 million or less that you'd like your loved ones to receive, you're not even going to see a doctor. You don't have any needles, no paperwork. You're going to just fill out an application. Uh, Ladders customers rate them 4.8 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot, and they did make the Forbes Best Life Insurance list. So all you need is a few minutes, a phone, a laptop, something like that, Uh, and then Ladders smart algorithms work in real time, and they'll find out are you instantly approved. Can you imagine? And that's done. No hidden fees. Cancel anytime you want. You get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. Now, the policies are also issued by insurers with long proven histories of paying claims. Trust me, you want that. If you've ever tried to get a claim paid, you want those that have a history of really doing what they said. Uh, they are rated A and A plus by AM Best. It's going to cost more as you age. Listen to your buddies, Rick and Bubba. Go to ladderlife.com slash Bubba today to see if you're instantly approved. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash Bubba. I'm not really sure where the the stuff that the Britons got uh, is coming from. It was Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer. Was it Pfizer too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess they're making it, I guess, in multiple places then, right? 
Yeah, I, I guess so. I just know that what she had was Pfizer. Yeah. Well, you know, the left has convinced us that Donald Trump is the most evil human being who ever walked the earth, except back when he was a Democrat. But so, <laughs> so, so somebody help me. What is this thing? They're even claiming the companies are snubbing Trump, but they don't understand what's really happening. No, you know, if you, you're going to see these headlines today, Trump is having a, a vaccination summit, he's calling it. And he's going to sign this executive order saying that the, the, the vaccine that's made here has to be given to Americans first, you know, kind of staying with the America first theme that Trump has had. Mm. But the heads of uh, Pfizer and um, uh, the other company, it starts with an M. What's the name of it? Uh, I can't think of it right offhand. But Moderna, Moderna. 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 Thank you. And they are not going to attend this. Well, a lot in the media said, well, you see, they're snubbing Trump. They hate Trump, too. You know, they're, Trump blamed them for holding up the test. They're against him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the fact is. I wish that was Bubba's wow, voice. Wow, I didn't know Willie of Willie and Wanda. But, was Bubba, how about this? Yeah. You know what? He was He was in Span's voice for people he was, who were right? trolls. <laughs> he was in Span's troll voice. He absolutely was. <laughs> But, but because the FDA <laughs> is currently having hearings on their drugs, they can't have any contact with them. The CEOs can't even be in the same room with this guy from the FDA who's going to be there. So they would be violating federal law if they went to this event. Yeah, I mean, guys, it's okay if you want to hate Trump, that's fine. But just get all this stuff factual. These companies are following the guidelines. They're not snubbing Trump. Uh, and, and they don't have to snub Trump. They're, they're trying to develop vaccines to fight a worldwide pandemic and save people's lives. I promise you, probably they don't. They have probably have bigger things on their mind than how y'all want to see them, uh, whether they're snubbing Trump or not. Hmm. They can't be at this news conference, and, and we'll see what happens. And hopefully uh, the vaccine will be rolling out. Now, I heard the high priest of, of health, Fauci, say that, that healthy, relatively young people probably won't see the vaccine in America till March or April. Uh, but I don't know if that's accurate or not. Yeah, I don't think any of them know at this point. So, um, but, you, but you're right. They're, they're, listen, Trump and the U.S. government gave both of these companies billions and billions of dollars. They had advanced orders for these vaccinations. So they had, you know, three and four billion dollar checks handed to them. They don't care what Trump says. Uh, this this is big business for them. And uh, they have rushed this and, you know, burned the midnight oil and good for them. They, they think they've got something that works. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the good news uh, is just be careful because if Trump gets too close to the vaccine, then uh, uh, the, just the, the left will have to hate it. Uh, so, um, <laughs> they, you know, my gosh, I, I still to this day feel bad for hydroxychloroquine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, God, God bless it. I, I think it might could have helped somebody, but unfortunately, Trump liked it. The gravy, please. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Ooh, it brings me to my knees. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I can't start another. Rick and Bubba, Six minutes past the hour, Rick and Bubba show. Thanks for being with us from the Big Boy Studio. And on the bleeding edge of technology, we're coming to you from sweet home Alabama to the rest of the world. The gang all here today. Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy Adler is back. We've heard from about his trip. Catch that in the archive today if you missed it. Uh, and, of course, there he sits, uh, Mr. Bill Bubba Bussy. Hey, 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 hey. Rick, glad to be here, and thank all of you for joining us. And we're very excited about having somebody back on the show we've had before. We enjoy seeing him on the big screen yep. and the little screen. Yep. And that is Grayson Russell. Grayson Russell, actor oh. uh, and multi-talented human being, is back with us. Grayson, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Hello, Jim. How are y'all? We're That's, great. Hey, good. Hey, if you uh, if, if you want me to show you where to find a place? <laughs> 
I've got a stomach bug. No, so. I, I, I was gonna find. I was gonna find a place to get you a haircut. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's still gonna be behind at least one closed door if I am over there. <laughs> so you have uh you do have a stomach virus, I understand that, that we have uh, a stomach bug. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, I'm sorry to hear <laughs> Well that, that makes doing live radio yeah, and TV fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I told Speedy if I got if y'all see me take off running, y'all just have at it for a minute. <laughs> okay. All right, we will. Well, First of all, uh, we, we I heard you talking to Speedy in the break. You you've got a lot going on, but let, let's talk about uh, the, this this latest opportunity uh, with uh, you, you're you're on a series now that's uh, called Blue Ridge, uh, yes, sir. and and Cowboy Way Channel, uh, which uh, you know I'm I'm I we were talking about uh, this channel and and everything that they they show on the channel. Uh, so tell us how this happened. How did you end up in the series? Blue Ridge on Cowboy Away Channel. It was a it was a pretty normal uh, audition process. My agent sent me an audition. Hey, you're going to be um, going out for this kind of um, like volunteer deputy kind of situation for this small town mountain justice show. And at, at first, I really didn't I didn't really care for the breakdown how they had the character described. So I almost didn't do it. Um, and I, I went in an audition and about two or three weeks later, I was sitting in the dentist chair getting, get, getting worked on and my agent called, she's like, Hey, you got blue Ridge. And I had forgotten which show that was, <laughs> um, because I had done a couple auditions back to back and I was like, okay, which, which one is it? She's like, it's the cop one. I was like, okay, 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 okay. And, um, so ended up, ended up getting out there in, uh, in Charlotte for about four weeks, which was the first time I had been back to Charlotte since we filmed Tile Day Nights. No, so was that the first time you went back? <laughs> That's the first time I had been back to Charlotte. Yes, sir. Well, for those out there kind of, you know, cause I have a son who's an actor and he talks to me about this, just what you're talking about. You have an agent, you do these auditions, you get, they all run together. And he even talked about that, you know, your percentage of, of getting them is so low. You just try to overwhelm yourself with numbers of auditions. Oh, and, absolutely. And, and he said, absolutely. now is this true? He says sometimes he will go do an audition knowing that he probably won't get the part just so these people will get a chance to see him and remember him for a part later he might be good for. <laughs> absolutely. I do that all the time. When I auditioned for Greyhound, which was the World War II Tom yeah. Hanks movie a couple years ago, uh, it was we figured up after after I got the part, we got over there and ended up there was seven thousand people auditioning for two parts. Good oh, grief! That's, that, a that's a lot of reads. Good that's night. a lot of reads. Yeah, that's he, a lot of reads. Have you had this happen? He literally said that the person has looked at him before and said, "By the way, you're not going to get this part. Let me get that out there." But you know what? We have this other thing, and I'm going to hang on to your picture and hang on to your information. I think you might be right for that. that, that that's really why you do it, oh, right? Oh, that was Wimpy Kid. That was the Wimpy Kid movies. I auditioned for the lead yeah. character, and they said, no, we don't want you for that, but we do want you for the weird Urkel kid. <laughs> I keep try out for that one. And then I still didn't get it. And then about two months later, they finally said, hey, we want you to try out for that kid again. And and I got it. So that's how it goes. That's how it goes for sure. Can I tell you that's still one of my favorite roles <laughs> yes. you did oh, when man. you're around the campfire yeah. telling scary stories. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, the crazy thing about that was that story changed about five or six times over the course of filming. So I, I knew from the beginning of the movie, okay, I, I'm I've got this big monologue. I'm going to go ahead and start memorizing it. So I started memorizing it you know, at the front end of the two month shoot. And it changed about five or six times over that. And that hand story changed the day of. No. <laughs> wow. But then I had to relearn it all over again oh, that day. What, what has it been like for you again? You know, I kind of have a front row seat on this, the pandemic, you know, when you, when you're, you know, when you're Tom Hanks, the pandemic has no effect on you, but when you're where you are and other actors like my son that are out there grinding and you, you know, he he described it as now the A level people are now auditioning for the jobs we usually get, and, Correct. and 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 then and then we all got put out of work, and of course you know you know had to find some way to make a living. Are you recovering back to kind of, hey, I'm almost back to being able to just act full time again? Absolutely, yeah. What, what what the industry did was it really consolidated with all the all the big projects that were that were still going on that had to be you know. Uh, uh, that had to be waived to continue yeah. going. Um, and so, yeah, it, the, the, that's, that's exactly right. It, it really did 
uh, consolidate. I ended up starting my master's over COVID because I, I figured it was going to be a little bit of a a little bit of a long haul. I did that, and I I worked. I worked a scaffolding crew at about 150 feet up in the air over a paper mill. I was real bored. I was bored to tears. Yeah. I got I got to do I got to do something. And then you come out, and then the riders strike. And, 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 yeah, exactly, you come out do do a couple things here and there, and then the riders the riders go on strike. So then you wait again. Wow. Um, so uh, Grayson, where is home now? Where do you uh, where are you based out of? Home as of last week is Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, congratulations! Oh, cool. That's good. Uh, Yes, sir. Yeah. So obviously I grew up, grew up here in Clanton and then went and did my undergrad at Lee university, which is over yeah. just above Chattanooga. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I play, play a ton of music, got a Southern rock album uh, coming out and I got tired of driving about three hours to, to hop on the bus with a, uh, with Guy Penrod who used to sing with Gaithers back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I've, I've always wanted to live in Nashville. So it's time to, time to pull the trigger. So with that, I hear you're talking to Speedy, and and I hear things like, "Yeah, I was at Dave Ramsey's ranch, where where <laughs> I ended up." Did I hear fiance? Yeah, that? and then fiance yeah, got in there, sure. and then I, I caught a ride with with <laughs> with one of the Robertsons from Duck Dynasty. What 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 is all this? Let's let's start okay. with fiance and work our way back. So my life is Forrest Gump at this point in time. Um, I met my fiance. She was the prop master on Blue Ridge. Okay. uh on this uh this new tv show and ended up we've been uh I, I was traveling back and forth to uh tucson and phoenix where she was at and where she was working after the show um and we got engaged over in new zealand over new year's um mm-hmm. so that's going that's going great wow um, and been trying to kind of get my life over over to nashville and uh and hers as well um but it's the the, the whole weird web of connections it's all god it's all the good lord i um it ended up when we recorded this album, we recorded it out at Mercy Me's studio, which used to be Motley Crue's house that they retrofitted for a studio. Greg. <laughs> and um, through, well, it was really through Andy Irwin. So yeah. Senator Hank Irwin's son, who's a, who's a, a, a director out of Franklin. I met Dave uh, out at, out of the thing over there. And he said, man, whenever you're, uh, this was probably two years ago. He said, man, whenever you're back in town, let me know. And so a couple of weeks ago, I hit him up and said, hey, I'm coming in town. He said, well, come on out to the farm. <laughs> so we hung out there with a couple of his uh, buddies from high school and his production team shooting the breeze for a couple hours. Then a week later, I'm on a flight with Penrod to go play Daystar over in Dallas. And Willie Robertson's on the plane. Now, Will Farrell, Tom Hanks, no problem. But you stick like the head member of the Redneck Kennedys. <laughs> 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 I am... So I, no way, word. I have no word. <laughs> so yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah, for real. And so I couldn't. Uh, I, I didn't introduce myself. And then when we landed, he got off for baggage claim, and I went up to him. And was like, dude, my mom was going to kill me if I don't if I don't come up and say hey. And as the good Lord is my witness, his eyes got that big around. He said, dude, your name has come up in conversation twice today. No. <laughs> Yeah, and I had the same reaction. I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and and I was like, "I don't know what the good Lord's doing, but that's pretty crazy." He said, "Yeah, man. Do you know Dave Ramsey?" <laughs> and sure enough, Dave had dropped him off at the airport and and was was hyping me up. And he said, "Man, when's your TV show come out?" Fast forward the next week, Willie invited me and my fiance to his um Good Friday gathering with a uh, Chris Tomlin out yeah. of Bridgestone. Oh, yeah. So we hung out with him and Corey and Bella and. The whole crew, Laney Wilson was there, met her for the first time. That was wild. Um, so welcome to Nashville. Get rear-ended one day, and then two days later, you're hanging out with <laughs> with all kinds of crazy people. So, Well, that's so, good. But, uh, now, Dave didn't cut your credit card. I was about to say, did, did Dave <laughs> take your credit cards <laughs> from you? But I only got one, and, and, and it's, 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 I keep it paid off. So. Did you pull out an envelope and said, here's my emergency fund? <laughs> yeah. No, you, no. You, no, I didn't. You didn't I have did. your six envelopes with you in there. <laughs> well, hey, that was that was hilarious because when I met him, I didn't know who he was to start with. He just said, "Hi, my I said my name's Dave." I said, "Hey, I'm Grace," and I went in, got something to eat, sat back down next to him. He ended up being a big Tyler Gnats fan, and we got to talking. And somebody said something Ramsey, and then they all looked at me and said, "Hey, Grace, and how's your credit score?" And all started laughing. My mom, my mom's an accountant. She's been an accountant. She's a partner in the firm that she started in in high school. So I knew who Dave Ramsey was. I just didn't know who he looked like. That's funny. And so I'm sitting there scrambling to try to figure it out. 
<laughs> I'm, dang, I'm sitting across from Dave Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle down. Yeah. Um, well, it's that, crazy. Well, a lot's going on. Grayson, thanks for taking time to be with us. It's called Blue, Blue Ridge, the series. Look yes, for sir. our friend Grayson Russell there uh, on Cowboy Way Channel. Blue Ridge, yeah, the new channel. channel. And, uh, and look for Grayson there. And keep listening. Sounds like there's a lot going on. And uh, we look forward to the next time we get to catch up. Continued success. See you, buddy. Congratulations. Thank y'all. Grayson Russell, our guest. We'll be right back. More Rick and Bubba next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Six minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Thank you for being with us. A brand new hour starting now. Much to do on another edition of the Rick and Bubba show. And we start this hour with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. Bubba show, our number 205. Uh, 824-4597, or better known as 205-8-Bigly7. Uh, uh, so uh, well, that's the number we'll be using again today on the Rick and Bubba Show as we give away gift number five in the 12 working days of Christmas as we work our way to the big year ender coming up on December the 18th. Uh, we'll be away for two weeks after that, as is the norm here in Rick and Bubba land. Uh, you'll get best of Rick and Bubba shows. You'll get Rick and Bubba replays. Then we all come back together in January to celebrate our 27th birthday. Uh, we've got Helmsy and myself still in, in at home uh, in quarantine. I, I hopefully re- return to the studio tomorrow. Bubba has returned today. Speedy is there. The real Greg Burgess is there. Eddie Van Adler is there. Uh, and speaking of Bubba, here he is. Bubba, welcome back. Rick, friends, neighbors, and associates everywhere, so glad to be back with you again today. And thank you for being part of the Rick and Bubba family. And it has been Quite a family experience here in December so far, hadn't it? Boy, it has. Uh, it, it was. I felt really bad uh, for you, and I know it, it was not my, part of the motivation because I know we were working through all the different return to the studios and quarantines and all that. So I know it was not in play. Uh, but it did feel like, for those that may not have been informed here on the team, uh, that you had strategically worked your way back to the studio in time for Buffalo Wild Wings to drop off food. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. right. I, I got. Uh, I understand that, mm-hmm. and right. I'm not completely denying that. <laughs> Right, but unfortunately, Speedy thought that it was just going to be them, and I think he canceled it. That's okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll make do. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's fine. I mean, it's. Um, I mean, you probably are thinking. I mean, they didn't have to cancel all of it. Maybe they could have brought some, but uh, <laughs> maybe. But just the, that, you know, there's there's always a high probability there could be a piece of cake in the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, after two birthday cakes from Edgar's, you ought to be in pretty good shape, there, my friend. Right. Well, yeah. I, I didn't see any. Is there any? In there uh, well, we put them in the few, fridge. There's a few uh, yeah. in the fridge. There, there's uh, we, n- none of us wanted to eat the bodies of Adler uh, right. and, and right. Aaron and Ruby, so. Uh, we just cut it in half, and he took that home. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, I just, I just, just cause, because it. it was a pitcher cake. <laughs> you ain't and, gonna... <laughs> yeah, just couldn't do it. <laughs> I, I just won't look. You know, at it. and Greg, you know, I like right. birthday cake after it's sit out for a day or two. And yeah. It's a little crunchy. Oh, right. you ought to be happy right? today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. Be unless good. the refrigerator slowed right. it down. Right. Well, I'd set it out and thaw her. Yeah, yeah. let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we do have a lot to, to recap today. Uh, you did hear me say we're still 205 8 Bigly 7. Bigly. Bigly. Yeah, that. That that well, where I still trying I trying to figure out uh, this thing with the phone uh, is I mean it, it, if you want to get twisted into a pretzel try to follow first of all I brought up one thing today that and 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 uh, and you know, when I was they were testing my audio in the kickoff hour um, I hmm. can't figure out how we seem to have unlimited room if we stay with two oh five eight bigly seven. But if you turn it into the 866 number, suddenly there's problems. Hmm. I mean, shouldn't the phone system be able to handle a volume of calls, whether it's Bigly or whether it's 866? I mean, that doesn't even make sense to me. Rick, I, I'm I'm really trying to work on my gentle spirit right now. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. And I, I'm trying not to destroy people's jobs and hurt friendships. Okay? Bigly. Uh, okay. But I, I mean, I'm 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 really I'm really done with this. Uh, 
this can be done. It's not impossible. It's done with radio shows all over the country. <clears throat> And it was done with us for, oh, I don't know, the better part of 20-something years. I don't know <laughs> why we're having this problem now. And and I'm really done with it. Done yeah. with it. Can, can you, can you <laughs> help you feel me? feel about it, seriously? But, Bob, I know telecommunications is, is not your, your deal completely, mm. but I would think you're probably closer to it than I would be, which is not a – I mean, I didn't say a whole lot. But, but I mean, how can Big Lee 7 work, but 866 can't handle it? That Help me with that. Rick, it's it's – you know, I, I can't talk about it. I just can't okay. talk okay, about okay. it. Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> no, so I, I just, am I asking a legitimate question or am I, I being stupid? I, well, I have some information, but I think if I try to explain it, it's going to confuse you more. But let's say this. And there you go. 23 minutes past the hour. Thank you for being with us today. A lot going on uh, with the Rick and Bubba show. And if you'd like to find out where you can catch uh, members of the show or Man Church services, you can go to rickandbubba.com under upcoming events. Or you can go to themanchurch.com under upcoming events. And you can plug in. Uh, Blake Prime will be out next Friday, uh, April 19th, Park Place Baptist Church, Pearl, Mississippi. Uh, as they start uh, the men's discipleship strategy. Uh, Sherry Burgess and I will be uh, traveling to Op Alabama 1077. April the 20th, we'll be at Op High School. Uh, and uh, Sherry will be talking with the women. I'll be talking with the men. Then we'll put the men and women uh, together, bring them back there and answer some questions as a couple with them. If you want to be part of that, it's a free event. All you got to do is register. Uh, Westview Baptist Church is hosting it. Uh, and we have that information at rickandbubba.com under upcoming events. And then I'll be staying in town. Sherry and I will. And uh, I'll be preaching this, the morning service at Westview Baptist Church the next day on the 21st. So all those are, are coming up here shortly. If you want to find others, uh, you can uh, go to the two options I just gave you. And ladies, those you're asking where Sherry's going, she's doing a, a good bit this spring. Uh, and she keeps reminding me that I don't know how I let her book so many things. I said, I, I didn't have anything to do with it. I was just standing by here sporting. Uh, but anyway, so she'll be with me on the 20th. And then the 27th of April, Sherry will be at uh, Camellia Baptist Church in Prattville, Alabama, for their women's event. May 2nd, she's speaking at the National Prayer Breakfast at American Village in Montevallo, Alabama. Uh, that's a morning breakfast. She'll be the speaker for the prayer, break for prayer breakfast there. So you can find all those at BurgessMinistries.com and RickandBubba.com. All right, so Biden, uh, again today, Bubba, you know, there's a lot of Biden news. Uh, there always is. Where'd he go? Where did he go? We got all. Here we go. Da Basement Joe. Here we go. Basement Joe. So we've got him. You know, he gets angry a lot now. A heckler is going to interrupt him. You know, he's really he can't figure out where to stand on a normal day. But whoever is trying to you know get him up there, propped up, and read things. He's, he's really confused on the Israeli situation. The Biden administration, that's a better way to put it now. You know, they go from, hey, we're pro-Israel to lecturing Netanyahu uh, to stop everything, an immediate ceasefire, no excuse, uh, you know. And then on the other hand, then we'll send Israel, uh, you know, a bunch of weapons. And then over here, we'll try to send, you know, something over to, to and then we'll, we'll, he doesn't know where to stand on this. And, um. So uh, it's it's bizarre, but he gets interrupted uh, by a heckler, and he he doesn't he doesn't like it. So here here we go. Going to get back to work. Well, I tell you what, you want to come make a speech or shush up, okay? <laughs> shush. I'm not messing around with him. He, 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 he looks like he could take me. Ask me. What? What is that? Ask me. What? Ask me. What? 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 What?
If you want to come make a speech or shush up, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's funny. I'm sorry. I'm not messing around with him. He, 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 he looks like he could take me. Ask me. <laughs> I don't know what, what, that what is. was he saying? Ask me. Is he saying ask me or ax me or what's he saying? I don't get it. <laughs> He's got I his fist up. Ask me. What is Adler, he saying? I'm sorry. Could you cue it right up? Ask me. Ask me. Ask me. Apps me? I think he's saying afs me. What does that mean? Uh, that means nothing. Okay. Oh, so this is a misspeak. <laughs> That's he's the definition. To... All right, so let's play a game. Afs me. What's he trying to say? I have no okay, idea. That's a good... I, I don't, I don't ask know. Me. I don't ask know. Me, ask me. Um, that seems the see, simplest. It, it's if he's close fist pumps and he's smiling. Ask me. Ask me. What could he be saying? And he was telling the guy to shush. Could he be saying, help me? No. He, he looks like he could take me. Ask me. I, I got no idea. I, 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 I can't get there. I, I can't get there. Saying, I, I don't, I, the, the, the hand motion, none of it makes sense. You're saying half of me? All right, Rick, this next clip half half, may be. Half, half of me. If, if this is the one I'm thinking I was about. saying Hemi. This is where Hemi. Biden Hemi. tries to tie himself to oh. all these different uh, mm-hmm. ethnic backgrounds. Oh, yeah. He, oh, he, yeah. He has, he's quite the. Yeah, he, he, yeah, 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 he, he is. Well, let, listen to this. Let's hear where he's always from. I uh, was sort of raised uh, in the Puerto Rican community. I had a very close relationship with the Greek American community, for real. I am Joe Bidenopoulos. I grew up in a heavily Irish Catholic community in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and a heavily Italian Polish community. When I say I got, uh, uh, I, I, I got raised in the black church, he knows I'm not kidding. The Persian culture is amazing. As a student of the Persian culture, I probably. Uh, went to shul more than many of you. I come out of the black community. The background of my family is Irish-American. Not fundamentally unlike the Palestinian people. I, uh, <laughs> you might say, raised in uh, the uh, synagogues of my state. Everybody in town was either Polish or Italian. I grew up feeling self-conscious. My name didn't end in an SKI. I was raised in a neighborhood where I felt self-conscious my name didn't end in O. That's kind of how I was raised, like so many Americans of, uh, of Irish heritage. In eight- <laughs> yeah, I mean, and the list goes so on. So, I, I mean, he's, he's got quite the background there. Oh, he's heritage. He said, come after <laughs> Puerto Rican, Greek, Irish, <laughs> Catholic, <laughs> Jewish, Italian, Polish, <laughs> Palestinian. <laughs> number one company still has ties to it the 866 number the other company has ties to it and ties. And, and and it's everything hadn't been handed over yet because of complications on ports and and all this and i don't know it's just a mess rick to but, be wait, but 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 and, and i hate to bring this up because i know <clears throat> in the minute i did it has owned bubba ever since mm-hmm. and speedy you have to admit it even though i know you don't want to admit it again and i understand that because Bubba's working on his gentle spirit, and and he and I are trying to grow as men. We're really working on it, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know I had further to go than him, but we both have have to, you know we have challenges and journeys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, I almost heard you say that though for one day it was done right because they thought we only needed it for for a Thursday. Well, uh, yeah, only needed not it, helping. Only needed it on Thursday. Not helping. Hey, <laughs> not the, helping. The quote to me was, <laughs> not "Well, helping. for some reason, she only thought we needed it just for uh, uh, Thursdays." Wait, but, but wait a minute. We needed so 866. She, We'd be big forever and ever. Amen. I know. I mean, I know. so if the problem is that one provider hasn't handed it to the other, then then it then we should never be able to use it, right? Contest or not. And again, I'm just repeating Does things that, I've heard. I, I, I'm I hope, saying things that make sense. I know. To me. I know. I know. And 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 it and and if they don't, I'm sure there's something I don't know. I got that, but <laughs> it just this is really difficult to follow. But you're not helping, Bob. I just want you to know his not face. Not helping. I've seen that face. Not fa- helping. I have seen that face before, and it's not it's not a good face. Well, <laughs> let me tell you this. I'm, there's a, I'm trying. There's a, I'm trying on gentle spirit. But <laughs> all I can see in my mind is the temple tables being turned over. <laughs> yeah, That's right. all I can That's, see right now. Well, you know what, Bub? I heard a pastor say once, and we forget this a lot of times, and it has to be righteous, okay? Uh-huh. See, we, we have created a version of Jesus that doesn't feature anger at all, and that's an incorrect illustration of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus was also angry, but he just handled it all perfectly. It wasn't that he never was. Mm-hmm. It's just he handled it correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so to your point, to say I want to be more like Jesus, 
turning over temple tables is an option. Yeah. And can I tell you uh, what I think might send him over if they start hammering during the show? Oh, right. what will we do then? Yeah. Rick, you, <laughs> do you remember in Top Gun, the movie, when, you know, they asked for the flyby and they told him no and they did it anyway? You remember yeah. the guy that threw coffee on him, how he was? Uh, I'm right there. I'm right there. <laughs> I want somebody's butt right now. I'm done with it. Today we start a brand new series today. Uh, we just finished up First and Second Peter. Today we start... Uh, J.I. Packer uh, actually went on in back, uh, Greg, on your birthday, July 17th. Uh, he wrote uh, the phenomenal book, Knowing God, taking on the topic of you can know a lot about God and still not know God. Uh, so we will unpack uh, this uh, incredible book, uh, and we'll start with session one today, noon Central Time, live on our YouTube channel, 1 o'clock Eastern. It'll be archived soon after, as is the norm on Wednesday. And then our social media platforms will have a link for you uh, and uh, make it as easy for you to access that as possible. You can get past studies by going to BurgessMinistries.com and clicking on Listen. So, Bubba, we have to recap last night uh, but uh, with you and Betty and being Grand Marshals. Uh, but I, I do have to ask that just one more thing I want everybody to know about this phone thing, 205. Uh, eight bigly seven uh or 205-824-4597 that's the number we'll operate with today for gift number five and any of our phone segments which is my point the phone segments this problem with 866 we be big had had damaged the psyche of the show for three days we thought it was over uh i mean yeah. we could we, we, we couldn't get multiple calls on phone segments no and we truly thought that well this is what we worried about you yep. know we that's we it. we hoped that we would know the show was over before the audience they're kind of done with us other than a giveaway uh, and, and they've left us and we got nothing. We're not getting any feedback on the phones and the and little do we know, and I will have to get on the audience just a little bit. It's okay to email us and say, every time I call, I keep being told that there's no connection. Yeah. yeah. Give us a heads uh, up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, now, you know, th- that affected our psyche for it a did. few days. It yep. did. It did. Yeah. We went from a bank of calls to two and, and I just yeah. staring mm-hmm. at it. I said, wow, something's happened. Yeah. yeah, and so so anyway, we uh, it, we'll, we'll we'll how about this? We know Bigly Seven works, mm-hmm. and, and so we're Big gonna hand. make it happen. That's I mean, right. I mean, it's not like we ain't gonna make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. That's right. So we did it yesterday with Bigly. We'll do it again today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, we'll work through it. And um, uh, apparently, I I, I, I but, but here's what I don't get, and this is your area. Mm-hmm. I thought we were advancing technology. Not helping. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I thought we were advancing. This seems like we're we've gone back to we can't handle this anymore. Like you said, so technology has advanced. Is this the same problem we're having that everybody's got a cell phone but they sound like crap? Is, is this part of that, <laughs> Rick? I, I'm just I, I'm hoping and praying that someone who can get it done <laughs> will come up with a phone company in the near future that can handle these things. Will Elon Musk put together a phone company? I'll sign up today for it. Five minutes past the hour. They are new to the big show. They've been advertising with us on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Uh, but now part of the weekly show, Patriot Mobile. Uh, and patriotmobile.com slash Bubba. Uh, make your phone money matter. Start spending your money with a company who shares your values. Uh, as opposed to taking your wireless money and shipping it off to some, country, uh, some company that you're like, Oh, gosh, what's the latest thing they posted on their social media? I can't be part of this. Uh, so, uh, but you go, well, do I have a choice? Yeah, you do. Uh, and uh, you're not going to be downgrading on quality. PatriotMobile.com slash Bubba has access to the same exact coverage uh, you've been accustomed to without you funding agendas that you don't agree with. Uh, so go to PatriotMobile.com slash Bubba. You're going to send the message, hey, I, you know, I support free speech. I, I'm, I, I support religious freedom, sanctity of life, Second Amendment. I stand with our military. I consider our first responders to be heroes. Uh, and of course, uh, the money you're already spending, as opposed to going, I wish it wasn't going to them. Well, Patriot Mobile's here to say, we'll take care of the wireless needs that you have, and we'll do a good job. We'll have a U.S.-based customer service uh, standing by for you anytime you need us. Making the switch will make that easy. You can keep your same number if you want. Keep your same phone if you want. If you want to upgrade, you can do that too. So go to patriotmobile.com slash Bubba now 
uh, for a free activation. Yeah, 972-PATRIOT. If you call them, mention Bubba, also free activation there. Uh, there's a link at rickandbubba.com under the sponsors. Okay, we slowed down uh, what the president said, and I think we have it. So I think we can understand what he said to the heckler. Here it is. Catch me outside. There it is. So I, 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 think, I, I think we got it. Yeah, that, that, that was it. Catch me outside. How about that? Uh, so uh, I, I don't. Uh, and then yeah. and then we play this. Take me behind the gym. How about that? When we play this going to the break, okay? <laughs> We're all talking about it in the break. Here's one thing that is undeniable. We just played you a montage of of Joe Biden. Some of it cognitive, some of it not. He has tried to say that he is Puerto Rican, Greek, Irish, Catholic, Jewish, uh, a he member a member of the black uh, black community and the black church. He's Italian. He's Polish. Mm-hmm. He's, Persian. He's Persian and Palestinian at one point. Mm-hmm. Now keep in mind, I want to go to the Italian Polish thing here, and and the the other stuff. Remember, and we remember this clip because we played it. He tried to tie himself to the Polish people by saying in his neighborhood. He felt self-conscious that his last name didn't end with S-K-I. Then we play you another clip where he's trying to cater to another group by saying, I felt self-conscious that my last name didn't end with an O. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he just, he just, what, whatever. He's going to say whatever he thinks the audience wants to hear. Yep. Right. And I understand knowing your audience and uh, adjusting some of your humor to it. I don't have a problem with no, that. No, or relating but, to them or but, whatever. But. but this is also the same adjustment he does in his policies. Yeah, and so here's... I don't know that he really stands for anything. I no. think he no. reads the wind no. and uh, wants to see where he can get the most mileage, t- and then there you go. He's a professional go. politician. I'll tell you yeah. what he stands for is how he can take this place in the government throughout his entire career, his political career, various places in the government, now the, the most powerful place in the government. All he's thinking about when he was thinking hmm. was, what have I got to do to keep this position, which also benefits me and my family? Yep. Yeah. And and I and, and I, I'm powerful, and I'm going to leverage this for my 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 good and my family's good. Yeah, yeah. cash man. Uh, so here's 2006, but remember in 2006 this view on abortion. Now where he has a little bit of a problem, and you mentioned the other day, Bubba. I think it was off the air when he had to go to the Pope himself <laughs> because we had Catholic priests that are actually the real deal. Uh, and and devoted to the faith by saying you wouldn't we're, wouldn't give him my we're we're going to be denying you the the Eucharist you are not going to be able to come here uh, because uh, you are doing things that are in conflict with what what the the scriptures say and he and they didn't like it they didn't like it at all no. from a PR standpoint no so Biden goes and petitions this vacillating Pope we have now. Uh, and didn't the Pope get him back in? They said yeah, they had the, to start the, giving it to him. The Pope him? said he couldn't be denied uh, yeah. communion. Yeah. So so anyway, and some of them are still doing it, by the way. Right. So so Biden in two thousand six. But the problem with this moving around on where life begins, you can't be Catholic and move around on this. Somehow he still can do that. I guess if you can be all these other things, you can do that too. Sure. So here he goes in two thousand six, and you're going to hear a completely different view on abortion in 2006 versus now. All right, here we go. Well, I, I do not view abortion as a, uh, um, as a choice and a right. I think it's always a tragedy. And I think that uh, it should be uh, rare and safe. And I think we should be focusing on how to limit the number of abortions. And they ought to be able to have a common ground and consensus as to do that. I think the vast majority of the American people think that can be done. Um, but unfortunately, we're put in a position you either eliminate abortions under all circumstances or it's, quote, abortion on demand. The fact of the matter is I've never known of a woman having an abortion and say, by the way, I feel like having an abortion. It's always a tragic decision made, always a difficult decision. So he's saying that he doesn't think that abortion on demand is something that uh, you know should be one of the options that we're having to do. And it sounds an awful lot like what Trump is saying now, that really the state should make this decision uh, and there shouldn't be um, abortion on demand mandated uh, on anyone by the federal government or really denied anyone if you live in a state that, that says it should be available to you. It's well, a state it, issue. It, it, again, you have you have a spiritual issue here. Right. You have a moral issue here, and you have a legal constitutional issue here. Right. And we have said all along that the Roe v. Wade decision was wrong because the federal government assumed a power that they were not allotted in the, in the Constitution. Right. And the Constitution is very clear 
on enumerated powers that it hands out, and anything it has not addressed is left to the state. It should have been a state issue. It should have stayed a state issue. The Supreme Court shouldn't have got involved with it, and it is back now where it legally should be. Now, we can debate moral. We can debate spiritual part of it, but it should be a state issue as far as the way we govern. Amen. And so in 2006, what you just heard, what we just said, that was the best stance to take politically. Right. At was, that time. At that time. So now, the wind was blowing. Now, a better for the Democrats and their base, they believe, it's better for Joe Biden to say if you deny a woman abortion on demand for any reason, it should be a federal issue, and when you don't agree with that, you're against women's health care. <laughs> yeah, which is outrageous. Uh, okay, except maybe for the baby if they're female. Right, I'm yeah. more concerned with their health care too. Yeah, they don't say that you have opposition to abortion on demand, or they say that you're against women accessing health care, which is not true. Uh, that's bizarre. So just just know that whatever the wherever the wind is blowing, that's where Joe Biden has always found himself. Uh, Kamala Harris, our vice president. Which, if you listen to last weekend's uh, Rick and Bubba University, it was hilarious when Scott McKay was saying, I think the Democrats wanted Kamala Harris to be a viable puppet for them, but she was worse than they even thought. And, 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 and it didn't work out. Here she is, which is always one of my favorites here in video, too, Adler. I always love to hear her expand on any topic. Bubba, she's going to explain to us the nature hmm. of democracy. It's important to, to, to see that, you know, the nature of democracy, there's a duality to it. It has two sides to it. On the one hand, there's incredible strength, right? That when a democracy is intact, what it does for its people in terms of the strength it gives its people and protects in terms of individual freedoms and rights, right? And liberties. There's an incredible strength in that, what it does for its people when it is intact. On the other hand, democracy, extraordinarily fragile. Yeah. It's only as strong as our willingness to fight for it. That's by nature what a democracy is. Well, that's it's about the people. Mm -mm. Okay, that, 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 what that, about the, the Bobsy twins over there? Watch <laughs> that, that, that looked exactly like a Saturday Night Live skit. Yeah. I mean, all they had to do, I mean, it, it, it resembled some I have seen oh that were very God. funny. God. One with Betty White on it that I remember. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, think, Clearly. I think I'm more maybe taken back by the fi fact that the very party in which she is a mm. major player wants to deny people all the things that she said make democracy wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all freedom is wow, in the eye wow, of the beholder, wow. isn't it? Right? <laughs> it's uh -huh. weird. It, well, it's, wow, that's strange. All right, so we'll come <laughs> back. Uh, we have more to cover. Uh, on the program today, uh, stories from within the show and, of course, across the country as well. Uh, some of the stories we've already brought you. By the way, a lot of you are emailing us about Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. We did play that yesterday. and we did Quite a science lesson, I thought. Yeah, and we did comment on it. So if you missed that, it's in yesterday's archives. Uh, more of the Rick and Bubba show coming up right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Well, that, we that's one guy who's getting things done in yeah. this country, and he ain't even from here. Right. Well, and Bubba, <laughs> again, I, we probably wouldn't agree with Elon Musk on, on many things outside of te technology, but we've got a story today. Hey, baby, he's moving to Texas. That's it. Well, you it's know official. what? Uh, he, he's got uh, – he's the second richest man in the world now, and he's got, what, like $50 billion mm -hmm. in, in options, and Texas does not have a state income tax or uh, – they don't have capital gain tax on individuals. Why wouldn't you move to Texas? Mm -hmm. You've yeah, had a lot of them. A lot of entertainers. Yeah. Joe Rogan moved there. Ben Shapiro moved there. Ben Shapiro lived in California his whole life, born there. Mm -hmm. so nice I'm folks. Out. Nice folks. A little flat for me. We're used to hills. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, a little windy. You know, that doesn't always work with somebody with allergies, no. but uh, nice folks. All right. So, Bubba, we, we need to unpack, uh, uh, you know, our, our you know, our, our, our newest business which is we're, we're coming right off last night you and uh, and your wife betty lou uh the grand marshals of course better known as tba uh the grand marshals <laughs> of the of the odinville christmas parade <laughs> okay so all right so let me let me tell you first off betty did not get to go last night what because of our massive water tank problem 
Oh, that's right. And and the guy, let me say this: the guys from Stegall, Brandon, and all, they did a wonderful job. But because the tanks were fourteen years old, the one that went bad, oh. we replaced both of them. Okay, so and then we had it. We had a debate, and I probably slowed the process down by at least talking about a tankless water heater. Uh-oh. And, and we have tankless at other places, and we're very happy with them. But to 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 flip over to tankless, it was going to take a lot more time, uh-huh. and we were going to have to do some venting, mm. and we were going to have to do some electrical work. Mm. And you know, we got company, and I'm like, you know, we just need to get this going. So we went back with the tanks like we had, and they did a wonderful job. And they were trying to get done, but I said, look, guys, don't rush. Let's just do it right. Let's make sure it's right. And the time I needed to leave, you know, I have to be early. Uh, it, it was not going to work out. <laughs> so Betty stayed behind to be sure that the water tanks were done. So we would have, because we had no hot water at that point. Mm-hmm. Once they tore them out, we were committed to new water tanks. So uh, she stayed behind and, and she hated it. She was ready to go. and But it was the right thing to do. And these guys were doing a great job. It's nobody's fault. It's just, you know, it's just, hey, water tanks, mm-hmm. you know. Now, Rick, uh, uh, when I talked to Bubba yesterday, you know how I love frustrated Bubba uh, sometimes when he's just like, okay, I'm done. Uh, he you mean had, like this morning? Yeah. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, you talking about like today? Yeah. So he had he, – he, he was asking about the phones. That was one. It was yesterday about dinner time. He was, he, he was talking about Betty doing the right thing, staying back, making sure all that's taken care of. And then he couldn't get a gas pump to work. Did you ever fix that? Well, I pulled up to a gas station, and they had signs on all the pumps that said, uh, pay inside. Oh, oh I'm like, I'm loser. Not, I'm not paying inside. Have y'all, we got a pandemic going on. What the, you know? <laughs> of all times. Uh-uh. No, thank you. You add all that together, and it was so, frustrated by the I, Well, and, <clears throat> you know, it's a good thing I did leave early. Yeah. Because I, I was headed. I had to go down I-20 East, which is east of Birmingham. And uh, I, the entire west interstate was shut totally down, not one car on it. Mm. And I don't know what the deal was. They were fooling around with those reader boards. I saw a bunch of people down there with lights on. I don't know if one had fallen or was loose or oh, boy. replacing one. or But they wouldn't replace one during drive time. And well, that, There was nobody on it. There was a lot of people backed up somewhere. Oh, they yeah. did. And, and let me tell you, it was backed up. It looked like, it, looked like it may have been backed up to Georgia at one time. <laughs> But, oh, yeah. but, I, but I of think course, Stan, that, that I, caused everybody to get off the interstate, you know, so yeah. that jammed up everything yeah. else. Yeah, I think saying that the statement, they surely wouldn't I, – I, let's just remove that phrase. <laughs> uh, uh, surely wouldn't – it doesn't exist anymore. I mean, people <laughs> will do anything at any time. You don't ask for logic in anything right now. Right. Uh, so well, I, 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 I not, figured that someone had probably hit one of those reader board things or one was yeah. about to fall because they, they had – they were bringing cranes uh, in. And, mm. I, and they, hey, them cranes was hustling down through there, uh, you know, with nobody else on the interstate. <laughs> so I, I figured it was probably oh, a pretty big deal. Yeah. Uh, that sounds big. So, so Betty did not get to go. Did did, uh, did you have a lot of people screaming, "Where's Betty?" Uh, well, yeah, of course. And uh, yeah. she she hated she didn't go. It was a great setup. And I, I'll tell you about it when we come back because I won't have quite enough time to set it up. But I appreciate uh, uh, Stevie Evans who invited us to do that, and uh, the mayor Rodney Christian and police chief Glenn Walton. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and Rick, we we got to reminiscing and and roads that had crossed and avenues that had crossed. I have to tell you all about that. Here we go, 10 minutes to the top of the hour. We thank you for being with us. Uh, our number, 866-WE-BE-BIG. We'll get to your phone calls. Some more of those coming up next hour, uh, Lord willing. All right, so, Bubba, you know, you're always looking, you know, we're, we all have people who influence us, you know, that you remember that I mean, we're living in the time of the influencer. I mean, this person's an influencer. I mean, they, they have they have influence, and people listen to them. If somebody, they say something, they respond and all this. And, you know, I know that, you know, as you and I, th- over the years, the various attempts mm-hmm. to try to do a little bit better and, and, uh, you know, I, I know a couple times, you know, we've kicked the tires on, you know, maybe working out program and we're trying this and all that. And 
Even had a little a, a slight Ozempic run here, which we have another Ozempic story today, by the <laughs> way. Oh yeah, here's uh, everything. So uh, <laughs> uh, of course, you know, hundred people, uh, not so much. But but uh-huh. the uh, but the on the um but that's always out there. I want you to watch this video because I know that you know we all need to be motivated about working out. You know, trying to do a little bit better. And you know, we, we and I at our age now, people just would like to see us walk. You know, like you said. And so here here's a video that I think this this could be the person. Okay, all right, here we go. Ain't never been better than it is now. Life ain't never been it is better Lenny Kravitz, than it is now. Who, who you've always wanted to be. Oh, wow. Uh, that's uh, pretty, work, working out. Even his spotter has to have glasses and look good. They're both have wearing you know sunglasses. Yeah, don't, don't let He has sunglasses and he's working out in leather pants. <laughs> okay. He is literally working out in leather pants. He's just getting a pump before he goes on stage. A mesh tank top. Right. Yeah. All right, so we had that same mesh tank. Rick, I kid you not, that same mesh tank top we wore when we scrimmaged in seventh and eighth grade, ninth grade basketball. Yes, I, and we had to get on the leaper. Do you remember the leaper? Oh, I remember the leaper. I will tell you, of all the workout things, I think the leaper was the one I hated the most. Yeah, because he, it would le- and you, you had that jersey and you had to push the thing oh yeah, up and down, I, oh yeah, and it would cut. Whatever in happened your to the skin. leaper? Did people you know, finally say, of, "What have y'all done to people and, stop and, and doing then it?" You had that, you know, that yeah. pattern on your shoulder yeah. the whole day. It was called the jumper at our place. It was the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, all right. Can, so can, can no I say chain. something, Rick? So, uh, so uh, he posted uh, this and put, "Thank God for today. Grateful, yeah. never been better. Yeah. There are no shortcuts to seize your day." Yes, Speedy. Focus the guy next to him. Uh, because what he's doing is is pretty hard. I mean, he's doing a sit up with, I guess that's a, <laughs> yeah. a lighter bar, but still, I can't like, get past leather pants and sunglasses. I, right. Okay. Look boots. next to him, the, the guy that's up. doing incline bench. What, so what if the guy doing, doesn't look like he's doing it? What? Well, he's about to, he's about to try to lean back. But oh. what if you're just in the gym and you're next to Lenny Kravitz? D- well, doing something? now you're now you're you're mentioning one of Bubba's dreams. Yeah, uh, Bubba, <laughs> will this get you in there, Bubba? Bubba could Lenny Kravitz if he said, "I'll be your personal trainer." <laughs> Lenny Kravitz. Now I want you to think about this. I'll cater the workout to you. We'll start slow. We'll work our way in. And the first day, I'll throw passes with you. Mm-hmm. Huh? I bet. Do you think he can throw a pass? Probably no, not. Probably not. not. I, I have secondhand watching this video. Yeah. I, do um, I, I don't understand what the trainer is even doing. Why does he have to have his hold, hold his feet like that? Uh, these look, sunglasses. look at the look at the boots. The yeah, boots. He's in his stage. He's in his man. stage work. I, I honestly think he's getting a pump before he goes up on stage. But it, where's the stage? I don't know. I mean, maybe, they have a workout facility like this is where he's going to play. I have no idea. I'm just trying I, to make sense of it. I'm laughing I, at the I, tiny I weight say, that guys got on next to him. I would you say, focus on that. Rick, getting to hang out with Lenny would be, you know, that would be tempting, no doubt. Uh, now, would we get to sing Lenny songs as we're yes. working out? Oh yeah, there might what, be some. What if he? What if he had? Would he have the guitar in the corner plugged in, and he could just uh, pick it up? What God, if he bow, said bow, to bow, you, bow. "Bubba, I will be your trainer, <laughs> and I'll be in leather pants, my boots, and my sunglasses every day." <laughs> Do I get to wear my sunglasses? I will. I will play yeah. either if you would like for me to play riffs from my songs, or yeah. just have my songs play. Mm-hmm. And you and I can sing along together as we work through the Lenny Kravitz. Now he's not going to make you do this because that that takes time. Yeah. He's going to have a, a, a start up workout for you, and he says we're going to do Tuesday Thursday. Mm. How about, about just Tuesday? All right, we'll start with Tuesday. <laughs> would, would you do it? Mm-hmm. That would be intriguing. I'll say that. Yeah, Lenny Kravitz. One of the questions I've always wanted to ask musical artists. Yeah. Is what do they listen to? Like. You'd what, be surprised. If he, if he, that's what I figured. I, I probably would be shocked at some of the answers. But that's what I always want to ask these guys is like this guy. Yeah. What does, when he puts his headphones, earbuds, Raycons right. in, right. what's he listening to? I mean, is he listening to Michael Jackson? Is he yeah. listening to Cameo? Is right. he listening right. to Jelly Roll? Is he listening to himself? Uh, now, let me yeah. let me warn you I about mean, this. And if uh, Greg was here, apparently he's had a stomach attack or something. If well, Greg, if Greg some was, of them I've seen like classical music. Well, now, hang, on, hang on a minute. Yeah. Okay, because I want to go down that road. You are right. They say that. What you need to be cautious of, some of them say things trying, as Greg would say if be he was sharp. here, the they're just trying to be sharp. sharp. Yeah. They do not listen to classical music. Yeah. They think that makes them sound deep for them to say that, but they really don't do it. Are they'll throw some obscure music out there to you, like some independent artist, you know, yes. and, and then, but you see, you have to work through what, what do you they think tell you. Say? What they tell you and what What's, they really what listen they really to. Who listen do you to? think that Lenny would say? I would think that you. That would be shocking. Shocking? Yeah. Or would do what I really think he listens to. So shocking. Well, give me both. All right. So shocking, I would be shocked if he told me that he actually is a huge fan of not just country music. Okay. That Western Marty Robbins. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. The old stuff. Marty Robbins oh, okay. cowboy songs. Uh, yeah, that would be the cowboy. most shocking to sure. me. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, what I think he really does listen to is I think he probably does. I'm trying to move from shocking to not as shocking, but still surprising. I think you are right. He's probably Chris Stapleton. He probably likes some of I that. I he likes Zach Brown. Zach Brown. Yeah. I think he loves the stuff that we love, the old funk bands. Oh, I think yeah. he loves yeah. them. Well, he have to. Yeah, he? yeah. and I think he listens to Ohio Players. And Rick I think James. He, he, I think he <laughs> listens to Earth, Wind, and Fire. You know, that kind of stuff. And uh, But remember now, he's... Does anybody know him that could ask him for us? Mm-hmm. I always, well, anytime we have musical artists on, that's Lenny, what I want Lenny to Garrett. ask them. Right. That's my question that I always want. Like, what are you, like, you're going down the road today, you're having a bad day, and you need a song to turn it around. Right, what right. is it? I will, like, I, we can ask Riley Green that. We see we him could, all yeah. the time. Like, well, I, what is it? I will say this, and I wouldn't do it because of the secondhand embarrassment, and, it's, and it would be rude. But I would love for someone to try to tell us they listen to, say, classical music. Yeah. <laughs> and us say, can we have your phone? Yes. Yeah. Let me see that playlist. Right. I'd, I'd like to see yes. it. Yes. You know, let, me, <laughs> let me see the top five songs played right. on, your, there it is. on your device. Now, there it is. Now, now, now I, know, I, know no, my, no, no. I know my answer to you, Bubba, because it, the answer to you is no. But I would ask everyone else, have you found that as you are aging that your musical taste is changing a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bubba, I know you're still listening to the exact same songs you listen to. I, I, same yeah. thing I had right. in the 80s. Right. But I do way. have a playlist that I go right back to 80s, 90s, early 2000s. I, have, I think some I have people been would be different. Where mine's going. Yeah. Some people would be different, but the 80s was you know, such a great decade. Right. I mean, it's obviously now, even more than ever, the greatest decade mankind has ever seen. I Correct. think we ought to put a giant monument up to it. Right. Uh, that... Uh, you know, it's just hard to leave that. You know? Are you listening to more country, Rick? I don't want to say that, but what I do want to say is I've this. noticed you've played some things yeah. the last few yeah. weeks coming right. out of break that right. led me to believe that. There's this weird place, and I do not like pop country at all. I know. It's just too corny, too campy. There's nothing to it. I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It's Zach <laughs> something. And he's Tyson? Be- he's no. become real part. He's become real, <laughs> I was kidding. He's Taylor. become real popular now. Zach Wilson. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Something in the Orange mm, yeah. is good. an incredible song. Yeah, it, good. Is. it is a real good song. It and is. so you get me something like that yeah. with that kind of depth and that uh-huh. kind of just. Zach Bryan. Yeah, Brian. Zach, Zach Bryan. Brian. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Zach I Wilson's so. a quarterback. You yeah. are correct. Wasn't he in oh, Birmingham yeah. like a yes, weeks was. ago? Really, Caroline went, by the way. Playing arenas. My daughter. Now. Yes. Yep. Was Some, he not at When I heard something in the Orange, I thought, is there country music like this now? Because, you know, I know way back in, you know, if I go too far back, I don't want to be there. Mm-hmm. I guess, would they call me, I like outlaw country? Yeah. Is that what they yeah, would say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to get on that yeah. channel. Yeah. There's, there's a channel called I want that. it to have depth. I want it to have pain. Yeah. I want it to be well written. Uh, and and uh, so that's probably the surprising. And I am drifting a little bit more that there are days that I do listen to classical music. Zach Bryan was at Rock the South, and so was Cody Johnson, which you would like. Rick, you need to check him out. Yeah, I'm not. You familiar. like Zach Bryan? Yeah. So uh, last like, year, yeah, and I like Chris Stapleton, of course. But he's oh, all, yeah. yeah. So top of the hour. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Okay, let's talk about. Have you ever, have you ever wondered just? exactly how it is that our politicians enter into public service. Now, we talked about this on this show, and they make moderate salaries, and then all of a sudden they leave, and they've got an astonishing amount of money. Uh, <laughs> we have, we've, we've talked about that on the show. Oh, how did yeah, that happen? As, as the real Greg Burgess said, it must be a good gig. Uh, but Tens of millions of dollars coming in, but where does it come from? Uh, while they're busy earning all that money, who's actually doing the job we sent them to Washington to actually do in the first place. So we all learned from an early age the best way to get rich in America was to get a degree, start a business, or maybe take a job on Wall Street, work hard, save even harder, uh, so that we could make a better life for ourselves and for our children. Turns out it's way easier than that. All you have to do is get elected to Congress. Well, today's the day. Join us at 8 p.m. Eastern Time uh, for a live pre-show event hosted by Glenn Beck on, on Blaze. Uh, and followed by a live premiere. Uh, it's called Bought and Paid For, How Politicians Get Filthy Rich. It'll also be streaming live on YouTube as well. So YouTube and Blaze TV. Head on over to YouTube.com slash at Blaze TV to watch the live event, 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. Subscribers can also watch it on Blaze TV with no issue whatsoever. Bought and Paid For. Watch it tonight.
But the parade was a huge success. And let me tell you, Odenville does a Christmas parade. Mm. They Hey, they get serious about it. And we were lined up uh, on one side of the, like the, the, <clears throat> the school, and there wasn't a lot of people there. There was some girls that danced, and there was a fire truck. And I thought, well, they must not have a lot in this parade. Yeah. And the mayor said, oh, you need, to, you need to see where everybody's staging. So we walked to the other side of the school, and, man, there was, there was floats. You're talking about <laughs> oh, building wow. floats? Snow machines on floats? Wow. Not one, many. I mean, they, they really, really Seriously. do up Christmas. So Christmas spirit was high in Odenville last night. And, Rick, you'll love this. They gave me boxes of candy to throw out, and I mean boxes. I could not. I couldn't throw it all out. I, I, I wasn't even doing the routine because I was just doing this the whole time. You know, throwing Slinging candy. It. Yeah, my arms are sore from like doing the swim, like a Moultrie feeder. Yeah, I was. Right. I was exactly like a big Christmas Moultrie feeder last night. Well, a standing ovation for Odenville for not being yeah. people that have, that have yeah. canceled candy throwing. Uh, we'll come back and. Bubba, uh, uh, anything else from last night? <laughs> yeah, Rick, uh, I, again, I, I met a lady, a very sweet lady, and she told me that she, this is, we're going down Rick and Bubba memory lane here, that she worked at Massey's Corral the morning we threw biscuits off the top of it. <laughs> Golly, what a, what a, you know, that's the first time that you and I had experienced a socialist, too, remember? But they were, their numbers were so small then, right, right. Uh, that you didn't even pay attention to them. Uh, but, but you know, who would have ever thought that woman's logic would make it into mainstream? Yeah, I know. I know. But, uh, the, not the lady I talked not to that last woman. night. That was some other could, lady. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had the first person <laughs> and especially in Alabama that we'd ever met that actually had an issue with us throwing food off the top of a building saying we were wasting food for those that are hungry. Of course, she must have missed all the homeless people that were making pretty good catches. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, we the the promotion was catch breakfast with Rick and Bubba. We had people driving by with nets out mm-hmm. the window. All you had to do is come down, we'd throw you food. So it was, of course, three stories up. But yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, but I'm was, talking about if you're homeless and, yeah. you're worried and you want a biscuit, you're willing to catch it. Yeah. yeah. All you got to do is come down there and hold your hands out and make a catch, you know. If yeah. not, you and might get hit in the face with it. But, uh, you know, you can always pick it up. So we had a, a woman come by while we were doing it uh, and take issue with it as if we were being wasteful. Uh, instead of looking at America as so wonderful, we got so much food we can throw it. Uh, and the fact that anybody that wanted food, all they had to do is come catch it. That's right. And uh, or let it hit the ground, pick it up. I mean, mm. it was in a wrapper. So, uh, <laughs> it, it really, in conclusion, thank you, Odenville, for inviting us. You did a great job. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Police Chief. We we had uh, had a lot of fun last night. I wish Betty could have made it. She hated it. When I got home, I had to tell her all the stories of everything that happened. But we'll do it again. I thank see, you I, for asking. I see you got out the top of the Hummer there. Oh, yeah, the Hummer. Man, they, Rick, they had a Hummer and popped the back on it uh, where I could stand up. I mean, I had a, a beautiful standing area. I mean, it was it, it, yeah. it was about as a, a good a setup as you could have, really. Yeah, I saw the picture, and, you know, just kind of the way you're shaped, it looked like you were wearing a Hummer as a skirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that too. I mean, they had great magnets going on the side. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, <laughs> the the back end popped up. So I mean, even if uh, if I fell backwards, I hit this big wall. You know, I think it's bulletproof. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, good right uh, there. That's sure enough. And, and look, did you see all those boxes of candy I had up there? Open? Yeah. I mean, it was unbelievable. Uh, I mean, look at that. I'm just throwing hard uh-huh. as I can. I know it. You are. <laughs> yeah, of course, you, of course, I don't see a mask on you. Well, I, I, I'm not near nobody up there. I, well, I don't matter anymore. You know, now, now, you, now you're trying to use science. You better be careful. <laughs> yeah. No, well, no, we... Ain't never been better than it is now. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. Yeah, but st- I mean, still here, uh, six minutes past the hour. From the big boy studio out on the bleeding edge in technology from sweet home Alabama to the world. Uh, Speedy, the real Greg Burgess, Helmsy, Eddie Van Adler back. uh, And we're glad we're spending some time with all of you today. Welcome back, Bill Bubba Bussy. 
Rick, glad to be here and thank all of you for joining us. We only ask for five hours each and every day. It seems a very modest request given you got 24 to deal with. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we've gone through the different eras. Uh, you know, there was a time when we would give you updates on what's happening with all of our small children and now we've moved to what's happening with our small grandchildren to <laughs> what is going on if we still have them with us, our aging parents. As Jeff Foxworthy said, if your parents live long enough, as your children's car drives away from your home for their independence, your parents will drive in. And, uh, and so, uh, so anyway, uh, it's a new era. And, of course, uh, with, you know, Dad passed away in December. Uh, Bubba's mom and Dad both have gone on in uh, and— um, the rest of us are, are now have you know, aging parents. You have uh, Adler, who has p- parents who do not age. Uh, they're timeless. Uh, so, but, but anyway, so one of the things we have now is mom is, can still drive, uh, is not a huge fan of driving you know, any, any long distance or anything. The bottom or like, in the rain. Or in the rain. Uh, and now with my sister's car accident and the way insurance companies treat people now, which they ought to be ashamed of, she still doesn't have her replacement car yet, even though her car was totaled after being jerked around by the insurance companies to no end. Uh, but now, uh, so she's driving mom's car. So mom lives in a retirement community, and now we kind of, as a tandem, Greg uh, and 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 my sister and me, we, you know, if mom and and our and our wives and whatever, if if and mom does have a friend that lives close and uh, not far away too. So so anyway. Um, the new thing has been that we, are, Greg, will go by or I will go by, and and we'll go get, get mom's grocery done, shopping done. Now, of course, Bubba, and you, I know you love this one. Mm-hmm. Of course, she doesn't want us to be troubled by coming to take her grocery shopping, and if we can't do it, don't worry about it. I'll find a way to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, right, statements you know, like that. Hey, I'm good. Now, if you don't have time, it's fine. Of course, I'm out of everything, <laughs> but I'll be fine. Uh, you know, and, and so you're like, Mom, I, we, we will come by again. Well, I just don't, I know you just dread this. And you. Just, I said, Mom, as I said the other day, no one needs to be given a standing ovation for taking care of their mother. No. Okay, this correct. is basic stuff. Yep. Well, I know you don't have time for this today. Just just don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I'll I'll figure something out. I'll eat yeah, candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. I don't have anything. Now, don't forget, mm-hmm. she's at a place that, but I'll eat. that part of what she pays for the place includes meals, but, of course, she doesn't like the food. But, uh, right. Yeah. So she's she was eating, there's that. Yeah. And she loves to read us the menu and then roll her eyes <laughs> at, uh, at it. It's her favorite. Uh, you so, about broccolini. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I like broccolini. So I'm <laughs> so broccolini. What I'm paying, I'm getting broccolini. And they had a piece of fish, but that old piece of fish looked like that. I'm, <laughs> and, and the food's cold, you know, of course, and yeah, all that. It is. So so anyway, um, so yesterday was my my time mm-hmm. up. Okay. Now, I will alert, and Greg knows this, I will alert all of you in the grocery business. Got it. No, no, I know everybody, until we change, by the way, and decide to vote these people out, your life as a business person, I don't know why y'all, lo- if any of you love Democrats, because they just make your life hard, mm-hmm. okay? So I realize that you're, 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 in a, you're in a bind of high cost, got that, and people in a generation that doesn't want to work. I got it, okay? So I know it's difficult. And I know you think self-checkout is the answer. And in some cases, self-checkout is great. Can I tell you who hates it? My mother. Yes. Uh, And and people like her. Yesterday would not go to a grocery store. Y'all lost mom's business yesterday, and it was close to her where she lived. Oh, yeah. And I said, so we just going to go over to blankety blank. She said, nope, not going there. Uh, when did I, she boycott? I don't know. It had, you did, you didn't prepare we me like the other week. You didn't prepare me for this. No, we're not going there. All they got self checkout. out. There's nobody to check you out. And I'm not doing self checkout. Mom, you know, I'm with you. Yeah. Right. No, uh, we're not doing self checkout. So that's a no. That's a no. Okay. So you don't want to go there. Didn't you just go there with Greg? I did, and I won't be going back. Yeah, I, I <laughs> and, think and, we didn't even have to do self checkout last time. We were right. And they had like one. They person. got one person. They had yeah. one person. And this is how you, how y'all got her. I don't know who did this. Uh, let me give. I'll, I'll applaud Walmart. Apparently, my mother thinks that y'all got her bad. Uh, the, that y'all got her her suggestion. I told her that was highly unlikely that she was the key to this, but that they are hearing from their customers they don't like the self checkout, 
and they actually send out, we'll add more cashiers they have, now. They remodeled the one where I'm at, and they've yeah. added more. Now this, and I think a lot of it, I read articles, also theft. Yeah, yeah. a lot to do. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think yeah, that has right. had more to do now, with it. Now, my mom thinks she calls mother right under it had My mom thinks she calls on. this, and she says they now have her business because they heard her, <laughs> her, her email. They heard her, her cries from the wilderness. Burgess. Right, yeah. So y'all thank my mother. great value. Y'all thank my mother. And by the grace of Almighty God, we didn't go to a straight-up Walmart that happens to have groceries. Okay. We went to their market thing. Okay. Which is a lot easier to it maneuver. Is. Now, I would like to tell the po- folks at Walmart supermarket or whatever this is, neighborhood market. In my mother's opinion, which is we all know now is 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 changing changing the landscape out there. <laughs> y'all are moving stuff around too much. And she's, yeah. Now that you're gonna have she that. is upset about that. <laughs> and 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 if you want me to be specific, where's the French bread? That was a big issue yesterday. <laughs> Now I will agree with my mother. It does because I guess maybe she gave us this logic through genetics or whatever. She doesn't understand why y'all moved the French bread away from the bakery. I'll have to agree That's with her. Call. I'll have to agree with her on that. It's always right here at the bakery. It's not here today, Mom. Rick, so she can get cash registers put in, but she can't get the French bread back. <laughs> at there. one at one point, we're just standing there as if it's going to appear. No, this is where it this always is. where it was. This is right. where it always <laughs> is. Mom, I love you so much. I really do. And don't expect applause for taking you grocery shopping today. The French bread is not going to show up here. So then I felt bad for the person who wanted to help us. I uh, thought, do you ever see somebody walking mm. up and you go, you don't know what you're about yeah, to get don't, into? Don't do right. Don't do this. Don't do this. And the nice Run. and the nice young lady said, may I help y'all, oh, who was oh, over at the bakery. Bless her. Uh, can you explain why the French bread is not in the bakery any longer? Uh, I'm so sorry, it's not, and and I and I just thought, oh oh boy, mm, here you go. Well, why, why why it's always here? I I know, ma'am. We've we've moved it. Well, where have you moved it? And and I could tell the woman didn't want to say it because it does sound ridiculous. I I'm not disagreeing with my mom. It's now in produce, <laughs> French bread. So y'all have got the French bread in produce. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. And I wanted so much to say, Mom, this, this woman did not move. Yeah, no, she wasn't the one no, making no, the call. She didn't no, move no, the French bread right. to produce. I agree with it doesn't make sense. Maybe it's one of the Waltons that did it. You know, his <laughs> kids are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and she, uh, she says, well, I just don't understand. So you're going to put French bread by apples. Good point uh, you again. Know, you know, it's, yeah. I, I find myself wanting to join you, but yeah. I, do, I really think, let, why don't we just go get it? Well, then we get it over there to it. Well, it's all smushed up. <laughs> I said, it, Mom, it's, 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 this, they, they're giving you a thousand loaves for a dollar. Yeah, I, I said, yeah. you know, a thousand pieces for a yeah, dollar. Sure. But d- just grab it. Nah, I guess I just won't have any. Because it was mushed. <laughs> yeah, I said, what are you talking about? Well, look how mushed up it is. I said, Mom, it doesn't look that mushed to me. It's, it's bread. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you want an apple? Well, what I do is yeah. I get, I get my, here. then then I get the speech of I'm, now I have to learn the 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 plight of the French bread. Oh, well, what I do is I take this and I put it in my refrigerator and I freeze it and then that way it lasts long and I bring it out when I need it. Okay, uh, so they can't be put in the freezer if it's a little mushed. Well, look how they mushed it. And I said, I don't. Well, it's because it. they moved. Great, great, great. I don't see it. I don't see the mush. mush. I'm trying to see it. It it looks like French bread to me. They had French bread a little mush. Right. Well, Mom, can I just encourage you to go ahead and get it? Because yeah, I, I, think, I think you're going to enjoy it. Because right. we can't go to the other place. I got self checkout. Yeah. Right. Okay, what you want? Self checkout. There's unmushed bread. bread, but bad news. Self checkout. Yeah. Uh, so Rick, uh, I tell you what else. How do I get out of here? <laughs> right. Rick, watch out. Now I don't know where y'all are at, but at the old place, when you come through the door, she sees that sales paper they have out there with all the specials. Lord she snatches it up. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. well, then of course you know what you know what happens. Then I said to her, Mom, 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 Mom. Just to make this all work good, get whatever you want. I'll pay for it. Oh well, no, no that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> you, you, you can forget buy, that. You ain't buying my groceries. You can forget that. <laughs> but I, mom, if I could buy my way to a smoother run, <laughs> I'm in. Rick, 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 get the specials and then get over it. Well, that ain't what that says. You know. Yeah. Well, well I, I, they I, even got it right. Y'all That's got this know. right at the door. To argue for twenty cents. Yeah, yeah, 20, you're yeah. right. You're right, Bob. Y'all had this right at the door, and that's now it's not what's on here. I mean, I y'all had it there. <laughs> And now you don't have it priced like that. So Mom, they forgot to get the whole I, I just start holding up the, the American Express card. Just whatever she needs. <laughs> you know, and, and I said, Mom, well, we're, we're literally shutting ourselves down over 20 cents. W- what they what they don't figure in, and I've been through the same thing, Rick. I understand. Yeah. Uh, th- and it goes back to this old business saying that time is money. Right. And money is time. And they're interchangeable to right. some degree. Right. So, um, 
you're burning <laughs> money, you're burning time. Correct. And that 20 cents Burn went away. Time is worth something. Right. It, it is. It's already gone. That 20 cents is already burned right, up. Let's just move on. Unless I'm now at the stage of my life where... I got all the time in the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Okay. So <laughs> I'm getting my so, 20 cents. So, so you, I get that. We're sitting there going, and they're sitting there going, mm, yeah, I got yeah. all the time. I, I can ride this all the way out. And I'm just like, yeah, but let's not. Have you ever got, <laughs> have you ever got behind the coupon person who think they have the right item and it doesn't match? Maybe it's the size of it. Yes. It's only for a certain size, and they argue with the yes. casual. Well, it, well, it or you got to like buy three to get the four. Yes, and then they got to run. Get I it. think they look for me, and it's a plot to get somebody to buy their groceries because I'll do it every time. Yeah. How uh, much? Right. How much is their groceries? <laughs> they, Fifty-five dollars. I'm in. <laughs> move them right along. Can we just move them? <laughs> Whatever savings they're supposed to get, I'll give it to them. <laughs> Whatever it is. But they say it's a different world, though. Yeah. So we got it done. And oh. uh, got, we, we got mom's stock for, she said, well, see, I won't have to worry about this for, I'll be stocked for a month now. Oh, a month. Not a month. Bubba, Rick and Bubba. <laughs> about it? We've got a COVID-19 mm-hmm. update today, and oh, gosh, I almost dread giving it. Uh, I know, I know. It, it, but it, it, but oh, it is out there. I think we, I think we got to be honest about it, you know? Yeah, well, and and here's I hate I hate to do this. Should I should I get into this? Because I know you know with the fact that I I've tested positive now. I've you know we've been brought into this world of trying to to and we're look we're learning as we go. And and you know the vaccine hopefully is going to be. We got a warp speed update today. We'll share with you, and we can do all that right here if y'all want to. But here here's why I, I, some of it gets a little confusing. Would would you agree? So it gets a little confusing. And and I'll even say this to. Uh, about my oldest son, because where, where he's working uh, in New York, he, he tested positive, uh, and then they wanted him to go through the days and then get a negative test. Now, hang on to that before he came back, okay? Now, everybody hold on to that, and that's, from what I've gathered, that's what's going on in football. That's what's going on in a lot of places. We, we test you, and then we try to test you for a negative. Do I have all that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. All right, okay, so stay with me now. Follow, look, we're, I know we're all making this up as we go. I got it, okay? So Bubba mentioned yesterday about even if you've had the, and, and you are correct, you, even if you've had it, they want you to continue to wear a mask when you go out in public or go to restaurants or whatever, which no problem with that. And if nothing else, just do it because I think personally, you got to come up with some somewhat scientific reason for people to do that, because how will you know? You have somebody walk in and say, well, I don't have to wear a mask. I've already had it, you know, and there's no way to prove that, not prove it. Now, with the vaccine, I know we're going to have a card and all that, I think. is that Do I have that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have cards for people, or can we prove? Somebody can just say they've had it. So I understand you can't have hysteria of people pretending they have it or how do I know you really had it. So we've come up with, well, now you may – you may not get it again, but you might could spread it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I said to, you know, a couple of doctors, Greg, one that our parents had talked to and Bubba, one you and I use. And I said, talk to me about this. And, and the word debatable was used. Uh, however, you know, said, Hey, debatable. However, uh, now listen to this. When we go back to this thing about people needing to get a negative test. Okay. We still recommend people that were infected to wear a mask to protect other people. We do know. Now, let me under, underline that. This is, this is from a doctor. We do know that after nine days, you still have the RNA in your nose for up to, stay with me, 90 days, but it's no longer infective. Meaning that up to 90 days, you could test positive, but not be infected or be able to affect anybody else. Well, well, what are we, what are we doing with this? I got to test negative to, to go back. Why are these people not testing positive again? If they really already had it, hmm. because he told me, Hey, don't get a test. He, remember when even mm-hmm. young Broderick, he was like, well, tell Roderick's work testing. him is not going to do any good because he might test positive, but he's not going to affect anybody with the COVID that he had. Right. Right. So then we get to question two, he said, typically, he said, uh, if, if you were to, to go to a second time, like you picked it up in your nasal cavity again, your body would rapidly destroy it because you have the antibodies. However, there's a possibility, and he says, which I, I remind you is debatable, but it is, there is a possibility we wonder 
if you could still pass it to somebody else like a carrier, even though it wouldn't affect you. So that's why we tell everybody to wear a mask. So it is, it's being debated. It isn't, it isn't for sure, but if nothing else, it's a good thing to say so we can tell people to keep wearing masks because we don't know who should have a mask on who shouldn't. And we don't want to get into that kind of crazy. So I understand that. And I will wear a mask, no problem. But the thing that hit me was the word we know that the NRA can stay with a person who's been affected for as much as 90 days, meaning you could test positive for 90 days, but you really wouldn't be infected or would you infect anybody else with the COVID you have? So what good are these tests? If people are testing negative a second at a time, did they ever have it? Hmm. Somebody help know. me with that. I, I, I can't yeah, follow that. I know. Anybody? No. You bring up some good points, though. Why are we testing uh, to go back to work after you've gone through the 10 days? Because, yeah, because the to te- your... if... Well, yeah, I, think, I think they just, you know, they had rules. They know more now about it. They know more about the lifespan of it, and they just haven't updated the rules. I mean, the CDC website changes almost hourly. Right. And I, I don't think it's because they're nuts. <laughs> I think they just are learning more, you know. We're back 22 minutes past the hour of the Rick and Bubba show. Uh, 866-WE-BE-BIG is the number, and uh, we thank you for being with us today. So earlier, by the way, got a text from Mom. She's listening. Oh, Uh, yeah. She says, I'm glad I can help you all with content for the show. (laughs) Well, and, uh, how about this? She wants it right. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't look up. I should have done that that bit earlier. I never could get it. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, told her. I said, "Well, thank you, Mom. I need all the help we can get." That's right, Mom. <laughs> you know, it's just, it was a know, wonderful we're just time. Having again. fun. It was just fun. Just a lot of fun. A lot of time to fill. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Bubba, there's you, a lot of common sense to some of her suggestions. Though. No, she. I well, think she's I, obviously got some pull at Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> she got that done. Yeah, Let me tell you, she's done. Done. I got a couple other stores. I wish she would take. Yeah, yeah. Take we get this French bread thing taken care of. We'll be better. <laughs> well, off. Greg, that, that Walmart went from they got a good review for mom, but now today. <laughs> Somewhere on Google, yeah. there's a, there, she has weighed in on the, on the French bread. Who puts apples and bread together? <laughs> she made a good point. It's Why are we point. moving stuff around? I don't yeah. know who thought about that. Uh, all right, so, Bubby, you said you can answer a question we asked a minute ago. Well, we were talking about various uh, stars, music stars. What do they listen to when they are listening to their iPhone or iPad or however they hear their music? So, uh, Riley Green, country music star, says... Uh, He's all over the road, but said, if you just want to be technical, Mm -hmm. the last five songs that I have listened to were Merle Haggard, Eric Clapton, Al Green, The Band, and George Jones. So he's he's kind of old school country there. Yeah, Yeah. but then he drops in Al Green in the band. Yeah. Um, And something about Bad Bunny. (laughs) Not bad, buddy. What are you talking about? I'm just trying to stir it up. Okay. <laughs> Do Everybody I want to know this? Money. No. Okay. Good. I don't want to know this. <laughs> the younger crowd laughed at that. Oh, oh did they? Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. See, the good news is, head so you're still there. I used to be exposed oh, to current music. So I'm a big okay. marshmallow fan. Okay. When, when my kids lived at home. Yeah. So, see, now that that's over, yeah. there's no pressure for young people to force me to hear music I don't want to hear. So oh, yeah. I, I, now I'm out of the loop. Yeah. I, I don't know what even. Is there a chance that a lot of them just don't listen to music? They're around it so much. Yeah. Where they're like, you know, I just want to get away from it. I'm, I, my downtime, I don't really listen to it. Well, that would be like saying because we do radio, you never listen to any other shows. Like I don't listen to a I lot don't. of talk radio. I, I, I was trying I to did. compare that. The, there's one podcast that I listen to I listen that to is Rick. very similar to this show, actually. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And that's that's really the when I venture out, that's it. And besides, you know, besides that, I, I don't. I'll hit the Dale Clay Junior and, download. <laughs> there here comes coming. the Dale Junior download. Besides Clay and Buck, I mean, I'm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't we are know crystal clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> we are crystal clear on line, that one. Line and verse. <laughs> Look, I feel bad for those two because I know I'm not being fair to them. Yeah. Because they do it's a good tough. they do a good job, and I think Buck. I don't want to speak enough. for you, but we've had this conversation. I think that Rush Limbaugh was so unique, mm-hmm. and he he did what he did in such a way that that they're not duplicating. Mm-hmm. You know, it's almost like if, if 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 there had been something close to Rush, but they tried to go a completely different way, and um, and they're just to me they're just straight information which you need, but Rush Limbaugh just had a personality and and a fun, so I, I just. 
I don't know if I just can't, if that's why I'm not listening or I've just kind of cooled on on uh, that whole format. I don't I don't know because I, I don't watch Fox News anymore. I don't mm-hmm. watch anything. If if this, if I didn't do this for a living, I would have no idea what's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I get here is when I get informed of what's going on. Yeah, that's my people, first run at it. Yeah. Well, people depend on us, Rick. Well, it's just too depressing. I mean, I I, I don't. <laughs> it is. I, I think to myself. I remember one time, and I know, and I, you may be in this camp too. It was it was Dad, I did not. Dad's uh, offensive coordinator, Charles Maniscalco, for many many years. Well, somehow he and his wife and mom and dad went to see Terms of Endearment, yeah. and of course <laughs> years you know, ago, and, you know, and it has a very sad ending. Yeah, oh boy. And so Coach yeah. Maniscalco, he kept saying, I still can remember him, and I was young, going, "Why do we want to feel this way? Yeah, why you why, want why did we leave our work world?" Kind to go escape to go get entertained, mm-hmm. and we took on something that made us feel terrible. Yeah, and, and I, I remember even thinking as a young person, well, that's a good point. So I think that's what the news does to me. I'm like, why do I want to feel bad? Yeah, why do I want to, f- yeah. you know, hear all this horrible news? And then, and what I also, like I've said before, is there's no variation anymore. If I watch this channel, I get this narrative that's never questioned. Or if I watch this channel, I get that narrative that never gets questioned. Not intelligently. I mean, they'll, I agree. they'll throw some bones out there on people they can devour or look make you know look stupid. So I'm kind of like I know how everybody feels. Mm-hmm. I know what what I believe, and I know why I believe it. I don't really see the now. If there's something happening like, hey, there's some emergency going on that's breaking news mm-hmm. and a 9/11 kind of thing. Well, of course, sure. yeah. yeah. Then, then I'm gonna go in yeah. there and get informed. But just the day to day update on the same old thing and the same yeah. old comments and the same old points. <laughs> Same and then old the, crap. And then the next show makes the same points with the same yeah, comments yeah. and I mean, interviews the same guest. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're exactly. I, I, right. I, I'm just they recycle like, those guests. Oh buddy. my gosh! I mean, the the producers need to you know get a little bigger Rolex, Roll, yeah. Rolex. Yeah. Yeah. Greg, Does anybody know what a Rolex is now? Does uh, anybody even have? Greg, that if we opened your phone right now on on iTunes, what would be the song that you were last listening? Oh, to? Oh, that's a good one. Let me see. Well, let's all check it and see. Mm-hmm. Y'all going to love mine. Yeah, I, mean. I bet mine's so Oh, mine was. Uh, How do I know what the last one was? Mine was yesterday. It was Ain't Much Left of Me by Black Bear. Oh, that's a good one. Mm. Interesting. Mine's actually Riley Green, Georgia Time. How, How about, about that? that? That's mm. funny. Look. That Oh, that's a good one. Mm. Georgia Time, yeah. Same. Mine was uh, Crowder. Okay. Mine was. Uh, I was listening to that so whole album. I don't even see what the last one Before that, was. Rick, it was Broadway Girls, Morgan Wallen. Oh boy! <laughs> By the what way, I, we have a, yet another video of sure. the chair of the chair sure uh, Yeah. Also, um, fell I, into some you want to know what the last one I listened to yes. was? The hardest ever by Will I Am and Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? I love it. What a combo! I love it. Wow. I got a uh, Conway Twitty. Never and heard of it. Loretta so. Lynn, uh, Louisiana woman, Mississippi man. We oh. get together every time we can. Or as Ruby River calls it. A pop. Or as Ruby calls it. Wish a wish a huh. Wish a wish a wah. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> well, there you go. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba. They came out with the best guests they had, and they're they're trying to refine it. I, I'm going to have to put it under that because I can't sleep at night with any other answer. <laughs> right. But you see my point. If, if, if you could test positive again, if you really had it, are these people that come back 10 days later and test negative, mm-hmm. did they never have it? Right. Well, That's again, I, I, I think it has to do with that test and – is it picking up the conference virus? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, coronavirus, we've known about. I mean, it's on Lysol cans now. We, yeah. That's been around, but was it this particular one? We're learning more every day. Yep. Bruce is calling uh, out of Nashville. Hey, Brucey, uh, welcome to Rick and Bubba. How are you today, buddy? Well, I'm okay. Um, I got to take issue to some of these suggestions that primarily, and I hate to say it, it's been Greg and Helms yep. are on these TV shows out. So uh, I'm confused. I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm angry in, in some ways. Hmm. It all okay. started. I, I, it was Helms a few weeks ago mentioned this Heart of Dixie. <laughs> oh, and he told it was just it was such a great show and all. And then Greg chimes in on it, huh. and huh. I'm like, okay. So so I sit down with my wife. You know, huh. we watch it. Um, kind of like you, Rick. You're, you're trying to find something you both can watch, and it is. Uh, it's beyond. I, mean, I, I don't know what's happened to Greg. I'm, I'm concerned about him. I guess it's the grandchild. I don't know. <laughs> Yesterday, y'all start talking about this this uh, Virgin River, and I go, okay, all right. Well, everybody's on board, Bubba. I'm gonna call you out too on this. <laughs> so I start watching it. It is the exact 
same format <laughs> as the stupid heart of Dixie. Uh, you know, big city nurse, doctor, professional goes to the small town in the middle of nowhere, just like you said, Rick, yesterday, you called it. And then there's the grumpy old doctor that doesn't want her there, and she sees a patient, and it's not it's not her patient. Well, guess what? The doctor is the exact same doctor in the second one that was in the first one. <laughs> and I'm sitting there predicting everything, so I, I don't know what's going on. I, you know, I, it, it helms. I, I, I'm just confused. I don't know what's happening to the staff. Where do <laughs> the men go? Well, can I tell you this? And, and this and this is a since we're all learning about you know we're all becoming doctors now uh -huh, because of right. the pandemic. Uh, and, and I will tell you what you're watching, and it is sad, it's extremely sad, uh, is that our age is, is telltale. Our testosterone is falling off the charts. Uh, it, we, we, we've lost it. We don't, we don't have it. Most of it's gone. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, anytime you hear, you know, in, uh, two men discuss Heart of Dixie and no one apologizes for it uh, and sends you to that show. Now, I haven't seen that or Virgin River. Can I say uh, I haven't either? Can can I can I please bring up the point? I gave a disclaimer yesterday that I was not recommending it to anybody. You did. I simply said my wife is watching it, and because my testosterone has not completely disappeared, <laughs> that's why I was watching it with my wife. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, you look, like you, and, and, and we did present it, Bruce. These are shows you're trying to find something that you and your wife can tolerate. I think you're saying you don't you don't think it really it, it achieved that it was not tolerable for a man of a certain testosterone level. Uh, well, and, I'm, and, I'm telling and, you as a warning, Rick, don't do, I'm just trying to save you. Don't do it. Huh. Um, because you know, it's, it, you get to that point where you watch so many episodes and you go, okay, I'm, I'm three in, do I stick with it? I, do, I, right. do I need to know, or am, am I committed? Or is it, if I bail now, I get out of this thing. And then, and then it, wait, Speedy, you said you didn't watch it. No, I, I, I had watching these. No. Look, look, I feel bad. He's calling me out. He's correct. I'm going to redeem myself. You need to watch the movie Furious about a tank in World War II and follow that up with right. Boogie Nights. <laughs> Great. No, no, that's, no, that's not what we're looking for. No, Did I go too far? Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. That's not what we're looking for. No, oh. don't do that, Greg. Uh, can can, I, can I make a suggestion, and I'm going to try. Are you trying this, or do you just want to watch things you would like? Do you want to try something you both could watch? Yeah, and, you know, we're, I get a lot of okay. stuff. That's what I was going right. to say. There's Here a we go. trend going we go. on because y'all have been look. solid for years, and I've followed y'all's yeah. advice for years, and it's been great. But there's a trend going right now. we got to turn it around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, look, the last time it happened to me, I got trapped in Downton Abbey. I've never been so glad for a gay character to show up because I knew my <laughs> wife didn't want to watch anymore after that. <laughs> All right, so. See, I skipped that one totally. Uh, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. so. back 35 minutes past the hour thanks for being with us all right so uh the show rolls on interesting uh in the break there oh yeah uh looking at everyone's playlist uh wow a uh, little dirty honey that, that that was uh, crazy uh, cbdistillery.com uh, you, your response has been incredible uh, a lot of your medicine cabinets are crammed with stuff that doesn't work uh, are, you, are you still not sleeping well still struggling uh, still feel kind of stressed out well you can make the change with cbdistillery.com use the code Bubba their targeted form, uh, formulations are made from the highest quality clean ingredients no fluff no fillers just pure effective CBD solutions designed to help support your health. 
Uh, let me tell you this. Non-clinical surveys, there's been a couple of them. 81% of customers experienced more calm, and 80% said that it helped them uh, with pain after physical activity. And then 90% of people said, this is what I needed to sleep through the night and to sleep soundly, uh, naturally. So if you'd like to find out for yourself, uh, if you've been struggling and you can't seem to find relief, go to cbdistillery.com. Over 2 million customers and a solid 100% money-back guarantee. cbdistillery.com. Uh, save 20% by using the code Bubba. There's also a direct link at rickandbubba.com under the Sponsors button. So uh, a couple of other things. Um, as you know, I was When everybody was looking at the playlist, the problem I have looking at mine can be a little misleading because I put a lot of things on the playlist that are nothing but bed music. Mm -hmm. I just like yeah, most of the yeah, bed music. Yeah, I don't really, yeah. I don't really listen to the song. We probably I just, have you. Uh, what do, What do you put? A, break them up in. I don't. That one? I forget I don't. what's the name of that. I called. don't. I, the, the list. These lists or whatever. Playlist. Yeah, I don't. Playlist, do, I don't do that. I just it's all there and yeah. I go find it when yeah. I need it. Yeah, I but look that's at a my good list idea. And it's mm -hmm. just really weird. Yeah. Uh, all right. So more updates on oh 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 Zimbic, you know. Uh, these drugs are just taking over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, doctors are now suggesting that sorry, I didn't mean that, that Ozempic that. could help reduce the risk of MS. Now, here, now where here, do they uh, here, where are they basing? Uh, it? Well, you're not the list is just getting started. This thing does all kinds of stuff. Right it's now, they're started. saying this is the headline. I'll read you the headline. Is there anything Ozempic can't do? Now, what now? Weight loss drug is said to lower chance of MS. Could even help sleep apnea. I can wait, wait on minute, that one. Wait a minute. Listen, though, but don't miss this line. Despite, they have linked 100 U.S. deaths to the injection as well. Mm. There's so, many people that's taking it. No, no, I got you. But yeah, but, right. for, but for a few hundred is, for a few hundred million, that's uh, of course probably if, within the specs. But of course, um, of course, if you're one of the hundred, you yeah, know, it's then, tough. It's then, tough then, yeah, but it's tough they're saying multiple so sclerosis it. by eighty percent. Eighty percent. That is a that, huge. It number. is. That, that's huge. what I don't know how they get to that place. You know how the the study, but I agree that that's a huge deal. How do they? Uh, but right? how do they think it's affecting that? Now I can see sleep apnea if you're you know if you lose weight. Yeah. Gonna help yeah. that. Losing weight helps a lot of things, but uh, unless Bunch unless you know it's the dead of winter, and uh, and you're having a flu. <laughs> well, one, but uh, it's just like what need that extra. Kind of yeah. like what Oprah said on her show that night. She was saying these drugs are here now. Now keep in mind they won't be used by just these people. Mm -hmm. They'll be used by everybody as a shortcut, and if they're safe, then fine. But. But she said there are some people that you can say all day long if you'll eat healthy and exercise. These people are not going to have the same results. Now, there are some people that's all they need. Mm -hmm. Same thing with sleep apnea. There are people that are very lean that still have sleep apnea. But for some people, for some people, if you lost the weight, that would solve the sleep apnea as well. Not for everybody, but, yeah. but for some people. So, and, Rick, they also, th this is on top of these claims already mm -hmm. that Ozempic and these type of drugs slash the risk of heart disease, kidney disease, liver issues. There's also suggestions that it can help with Alzheimer's. I mean, what? apparently it can just do anything. If it, if it would cut the grass and trim the bushes, <laughs> we'd have something. We, 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 stand, stand by, by Bubba. Stand by. Oh, 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 Ozempic. I can do anything. <laughs> Give the injection now. Uh, so the uh, <laughs> I love it, uh, Bubba. Do you see yourself getting back on, <laughs> or is it just too bad, bad of an experience? Uh, yeah, I really, I just haven't had time to deal with it lately. So well, there's I'll others, can't they? I mean, there's other brands, yeah, right? There's yeah, there's other things. You, yeah. Is this the one you took, Ozempic? Yeah, Ozempic, yeah. And you had you had a bad experience with it? No, I, I had a great experience with it uh, up to a point, and then and then it made me uh, a little sick. But it mm. was. Uh, and you that know. does happen with some people. Yeah, and, and it could have been other factors tied into it, too, timing and things going on and scheduling and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But um, I, I know a lot of people that has been on that. Of course, And yeah. the, uh, the Zeb Pound also mm -hmm. that people are losing a lot of weight on. And, and it's, you know, I guess there's a lot of benefits if you, sure. if you have, you know. Well, portly. in my very small, <clears throat> and I will say this, small uh, sample, anecdotal mm -hmm. uh is that i know people that i know personally that it has been a game changer for and I also know people that tried it and it and it made them sick or they had a negative effect so i've seen both yeah. 
Uh, and and uh, and and so um, we'll, we'll so, see how it goes. So to clarify, in the story, they're saying the the drug helps these things, or does it the losing weight no. and being in better health help? Well, them? it's hard to say. They're, yeah, they're, how, do, they're, how do you know? Yeah, that, I mean. that's hard to say. But but as you said, Bubba, if 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 you're struggling with obesity, and I certainly have, and you can address it, it's not going to solve every problem under the sun but buddy it helps i, it, I it, think it is it I is a better people, quality of life right. i think the people you're seeing that it really helps are those that are probably the most out of shape that have other problems Absolutely. that maybe prevent them from being right. you know doing uh doing a little bit better and those that are moderately or they think they're overweight they're probably not but they're right. you know it's more of a and you uh, just you're a, a gray you're, area you don't they they probably don't have the results that the right. other people do well and you're saying without saying every single female we know you know they always think they're oh yes. yeah I mean, Rick, oh, I, my, I, oh my I'm, goodness i i'll be honest with you i know people on it or have been on it that I would think had no business being correct at yeah. all. I mean, they're a rail now, right? Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how they they swing all that, but yeah. And and again, we'll, we'll you know only time will tell. In in the long haul, if we if you have this many people taking a drug and for all different kinds of reasons, there'll be that cone of silence. And then you know, well, that, it is. I mean, the, the, the ultimate uh, test is when it goes to market. So. Yep. So we'll see. Uh, but right anyway. Now it's, you know, coming up all roses, it looks like everywhere. They're they're estimating this year. By the way, these these drugs are going to generate oh. eighty. Listen to this number: eighty billion. Hey, B. Good this night. year, just this year. And I know that we've never seen this kind of money cause people to look the other way and <laughs> be crazy. Yeah, right. Act crazy. Uh, Act so, a fool. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, but mm. that, but apparently Ozempic is going to solve all problems of the entire world. Right. Uh, they even said they sent uh, in, uh, Ozempic injections to the Middle East to see if it can bring <laughs> pe- it peace out. to the Middle East. It can bring peace to Gaza. <laughs> uh, so there you go. All right. Uh, celebrity news. This was an odd story. Uh, Winona Judd's uh, troubled daughter, and mm-hmm. certainly don't want to be insensitive about this, but uh, has been arrested at 27 uh, for indecent exposure. I won't go into the details, but it's here. Uh, and, <laughs> it's and, and and she Great. is currently being held uh, not, not in our state that apparently the flashing took place on an Alabama highway. Don't know the details of the event, Rick. Oh, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all they're saying. Well, they're, well, they're but, here. Uh, you know, we've mm. we've played honk for skin too. We have, and it was more of we a have. fun thing. But um, <laughs> the uh, she she's actually in jail in Wetumpka, I understand. Well, there so, it is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. is. Bubba there, at Rick and Bubba. It no, I'm not, well, it's all, look, it's in all, if it's all a fact, the stories. If it's yeah. a fact, what's the big deal? If it's a fact, it's yeah, it's a, she's had a troubled life. She's yeah. been out of jail and stuff. I did not. Know she that. may be listening to the show right now, based on where she's. <laughs> Your shout there. out, yeah, <laughs> shout out. There's a chance. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but that's the only charge. I mean, she just decided to flash people. Well, I think some other things. Some other things been going on. You might want to read a little bit. No, but she was still flashing. It was just great. Than, I'm saying just saying it ain't like, hey, she she got uh, caught shoplifting, ran outside, and started flashing everybody. Greg, you thought there'd Greg, be something. Greg, tight. I will say that she Greg. she she was doing what we call the Talladega infield. Yeah, uh, but then she also added one that was a little more lewd. Yes, yes. yeah, Correct. but, but what, we, uh, what, what, anybody know what the, what the point was there? I mean, well, Greg, that there is no point. The point yeah. is, I'm I trying. saw the picture. The, Do y'all the, know the, where yeah. where the flashing took place? What yeah. highway we were on? Yeah, right there, at, sixty five uh, and, and something. fourteen. 14 mm-hmm. huh? yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they said they that. got there to yeah, arrest more. her, and there were three trucks in a ditch. <laughs> Well, she was at my well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sometimes activity will get your attention, you know? <laughs> right, right. And then look beside her was the naked cowboy, and he's like, what's the big deal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, had, <laughs> she was at Mardi Gras. She wouldn't be able to pick her neck up. She'd have so many beads hanging. <laughs> well, all right, we'll take phone calls next. 866-WE-BE-BIG. All 10 lines are available. All 10 lines. 866-WE-BE-BIG. Wow. Your phone calls will wrap up the hour, and for many of you, wrap up today's show. I wonder why she was in Alabama. Um, Well, Greg, that's a country song, isn't it? (laughs) Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Two blocked in. I would would say the crown. Now, first out of the gate, you... (laughs) Listen, the first out of the gate, you're going to panic because you're thinking about the royal family. Yeah. But but I'm telling you, Prince Philip is enough. He's a man's man. Uh, Now, look, you know, he had to reel it in a little bit. 
Okay, but he was too but much of a man. He was man. a bit of yeah. a rounder, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was a bit of a rounder. So I'm not talking about we want to follow Phillips, you know, lifestyle. Now he he's he's got his act. Of course, you know he's That's the same so thing with boogie nights. Yeah, Greg, Greg no, quit d- saying not, that. No, no, nobody out, nobody I anywhere watch watch that movie, please. <laughs> yeah, don't do I, that. I, I, I don't want to be associated with that movie in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah. All Can right, I- so so th- this is this is one where I think you'll find enough things about war. Uh, you know, we, we Margaret Thatcher shows up. You know, she's 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 hard nosed. You remember her with Reagan? You know, and we're gonna we're gonna go. You know, we're gonna fight for the Falklands. Uh, you, in the early days, you're gonna get uh, you know some of Phillips' military uh, prowess. Uh, there's, I think, there's enough there uh, <clears throat> and, uh, for you to be okay. Uh, I, look, we wouldn't watch it as a bunch of guys, no. But if uh, something right. to watch with your wife that I think you could find some things you would like, I think that one may be a better suggestion than what you're getting right now. Wait, Rick, you are five stars. Your your track record on documentaries recommended are, are – you're solid. You are, you are gold. And, again, I expect Helms to do his things. I just expect the older, wiser guys like Greg to pull him back in line. So, mm-hmm. Rick, I got no you're, – you're, you're awesome on the documentary. Please keep those coming. Okay. Yeah, well, look, uh, I, I will tell you, I will try, but I'm with Bubba. I'm getting to the point. It's, you realize how difficult it is to suggest anything because, I mean, some of, it's hard to find anything that you do, that you don't go, well, I wish I hadn't suggested that. Yeah, well, so, Podark uh, was pretty good. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, Podark's not bad. <laughs> that bored me. Uh, Adler's, Adler's ran in here. If I, could, if I could defend the show's man card on one other thing as well. Okay, we, we got a phone call the other day from a guy that called in and said, if you guys could pick a, a car, any car from 1960 or from today, from 2020, what car would you choose? Would you go with a 1960 car or I a 2020 get that car? Question. Okay, and so we everybody on the staff was like, I think we'd have to go with a 2020 car. Rick was talking about convenience and stuff yeah. like that. Oh yeah. But then I get on Twitter and people are like bashing us, like those guys are done. They don't like cars from the 60s or the 70s. That wasn't the question. We we didn't say we don't like classic cars. I love classic cars. I know you guys do too. Uh, the question was really. if we had to choose a car from 1960 or 2020. I would choose a 1969 Corvette Stingray. That's what I would choose. But you didn't give me that option, so now I'm going. I'm going modern day. Can I? It, it, so yeah. Is that, that I mean, look. That I bothered recent, me. It I bothered recently me. broke down in my old truck, so I was simply thinking, I want something new that I know works. Mm. And I, uh, I, I was I got, th- I'm just telling you where I'm coming from, and and if anybody thinks this make, makes me less a man, and we could fight. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, but. But 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 what I'm saying is a little this, bare knuckle boxing to yeah, sort it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't care less about cars. I don't care about cars. Rick, don't Rick's say not, that. Don't Rick's say not that. A car guy. Rick. Rick's I, just I not a car I, guy. I don't. And if that's where manhood is tied, when when did somebody make that rule? Rick, don't I, say I, it. I, I couldn't care less about cars. I still didn't get the question. <laughs> I, I didn't answer. It was a bad question. It. I didn't get it. And they made a lot of progress in technology and drivability and all that from 1960 to 1970. Because the know? caller he even said, "I got a rather would you rather." Yes. And that doesn't qualify as a would you rather mm-hmm. to me. But classic social media, they turn it and they don't mention the would you rather. That's hey, right. I'll, I, hey, I'll take my truck right now and I'll run over your Stingray. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> I mean, I'd never even know it. It'd be like a bump. <laughs> Rick, I've been meaning to mention in, in your book, How to Be a Man, there wasn't a chapter called Cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I got news for you. I, I've searched scripture. Cars loving is not in there. Uh, Speedy? No. Oh. <laughs>
Here we go. Uh, phone calls coming in. 866-WE-BE-BIG. We'll take them. Speedy's on the phones. All the lines are available. Well, not now. About half of them full. Uh, so let's uh, let's hear from you. Uh, let's go to Jeff uh, in Albertville, Alabama. Jeff, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. Thank you so much. Go right ahead. Hey, big man. How you doing? We're fine, buddy. Hope you're okay. Well, well you were talking about, about something your mama used to do when you took the grocery store, what she did. My mother used to have a thing. The, you know, the packs you get at Hardee's and Jack's that got the jelly and stuff in it. Yes. Or the ketchup, mustard. She'd get those packs and take them home, then she'd cut them open, and then sometimes squeeze them in a jar. In a jar? Oh, that's that, thrifty. That's, that it, is thrifty. That's thrift city right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. And she, uh, she'd sit there an hour at a time, sitting there just Yo. cutting them packs open. Well, how about that? Getting wow. her own jelly. Thrifty. Uh, it was it was actually a lot of fun. You're doing it too. I mean, I, take your mom out for oh, for, for a grocery. We have a great time. It, so I enjoy it. We have fun. <laughs> yes, she's. I told you she's taste again. Do, do you so y'all, do y'all need more content? Is that was, yeah. uh, we continue. She still ain't sure you got a stress test that afternoon. <laughs> oh, Greg, I, I, that's still going. Uh, of course, I bring up stuff like that to her all the oh, time. She, that's why you wouldn't believe what I got doing this afternoon. <laughs> she, she, she I told her I was having a heart cath in the afternoon the other day. <laughs> I told her she claimed that Chick Fil A wasn't gonna have a drive through, and I accused her of making that up. You no, know, I think she's right, but I keep, really I keep bringing it up like she's oh, making good. that I'll, up. I'll I'll do that yeah. one. Uh, Perry in Georgia. Hey Perry, welcome to Rick and Bubba. Go ahead. Good morning. Love the show. Long time listener. Thank you. But I list, I was I was listening to the uh, Joe Biden montage about his pedigree. What we used to call that in in, in uh, Georgia and Alabama, he must be a Heinz fifty seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dogs. Yeah. You remember having that dog? You've got so many. Oh, you don't yeah. know what he is. Oh yeah. Well, the the problem is, I don't think he's all of those. But it's very possible he's none of those. Yeah, absolutely. He's whatever the group needs him to be. Yeah. Absolutely. In, in that moment, Greg, you 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 get, feel like if if we had aliens land and say, "Take me to your leader." And they carried them to the White House, oh, and they were from Mars. He would declare that he. A lot of people don't know he grew up on the, you know, on the side of right. Mars. You're right. Yeah. That's and on the red I've planet. Got a lot of people don't know about. Experience it. Where I'm, we dirt. I'm, I'm the perfect person it. for this job because yeah. you know the time I spent in Mars. Yeah. <laughs> it was one time when I lived there, I, I became self conscious. I was the only one to have green ears. <laughs> yeah, he would just it'd be whatever yeah. he needed. Oh yeah. Eight six six. We be big. Let's go to Brandon. Nine, Brandon, six, welcome to the Rick and Bubba Show. Go ahead. Brandon. Mark. Hey, B. Brandon. Hello. B Money. <laughs> no Brandon. Uh, Brandon let's, is out. Let's go to Nick out of the great state of Texas. Nick, go ahead. Greg, uh, just had some storms come through last night. About to pick up some wire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad y'all got that. Come on. <laughs> come on, man. Come on. I, I, need somebody to come, I need somebody to come run my hand line. Come on. There you go. I can do that. Can you do that, Steve? Oh, oh yeah. That, come on. That, that's, that's the start, and that's where you, you break in at. Do, do you mm-hmm. think that you could go out on a crew? Yes. Now? Absolutely. Could you, you climb here? a pole now? You've you been here how long? Take me a second. You got to dig in pretty hard yeah, in that spot. I'd, I'd like go to practice. Down. Can I, I know, practice a little bit? I know you got experience with that. Yeah, I feel like one. But uh, maybe that just let me work out of the bucket. But absolutely, I could do it. I'd get real tired, probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're way. You ain't ready for that. There's a few pieces of equipment I see out there. I'm going, I ain't real sure that went around when I was. Oh, really? But most of it's close. How's your little baby back? Is it doing better? <laughs> yeah, it hurts, but it, most people would be complaining and worried about it. And I just, I got sick of fooling with it. So I just going to let it Are hurt. you doing back running up down the driveway or no? Not yet, but I'm working there. Okay. Uh, let's go to, uh, back. let's go to, let's go to, to Big Tate. We're not talking about real. <laughs> Tate, go ahead. <laughs> what are y'all doing, fellas? We're good. Good, y'all all right? All right, let's, let's, <laughs> Tate, let's go. Let's, let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. Let's get to it. All right, well, let's pick it up. Okay. Hey, uh, Morgan Wallen's song y'all was talking about there yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, instead of, instead of cheers to you, let's call it chairs to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's so bad. If I'm not, let me just say, it's always delivery. But let's go a, back to this again. The take, material wasn't that great, but the delivery yeah, was but, excellent. But, but let's go back. Do we agree? Most of the audience doesn't want you to ask us how we're doing even once. Oh, you uh, certainly can't ask it twice. No, you know, I mean, I, 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 so how are y'all? Good. 
Yeah, all right. Like, that's two. Uh, can't do it. <laughs> right. And, and, do you think that's that's searching the mind trying to remember why I called? I think it was. I think he uh, forgot right, where he right, called. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was trying to get the chair part down, right? Yeah, because if you don't want people to ask us how we're doing one time, you <laughs> sure don't want to hear twice. Oh, you're throwing stuff at the radio. Uh, let's go uh, to uh, <laughs> Anonymous out of Huntsville, 100.3 The River. Anonymous, go ahead. Tolerable. <laughs> hey there, I have a question um, about Apple. In iOS products, I have an um, iPhone 11 and 10, uh, um, iPad 10. Sorry, I'm talking slow. I've had two concussions back to back. I'm so sorry. But, um, I, can't, I can't believe you have an iPhone 11 question, Apple and iOS, and you pick this show to call <laughs> uh, for your answer. Yeah, but, I, think but shows, I think it shows concussion. you're very wise. Yes, yes. I want to know why she has concussions. Yeah, yeah what, what happened? What happened? Wreck? Car wreck or something? It, does it involve the Apple or... Okay, well, 40 years ago, come 40, July, okay, okay. I had a car crash in center point. Okay, so car And crash. so if you, if you pull a slinky vertically, that's my spine now. Whoa! Oh, my. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Complain and then Eric. Big Brother involved in the, uh, in late 2019, you know, Big Brother 1984 that, that kids do not know about now, um, and changed medications around. And so pushed a drug that wasn't even for pain, chronic pain. And um, I had a case of syncope or, or black, uh, fainting and went straight back like a domino, killed cranial nerve one. I cannot taste or smell anything, oh, and I get oh choked my. easily. And then right. 17 months later, another concussion oh, oh, wow. because the place were not up to date and up to par and that was because of an annular tear in my lower spine and now your iphone won't so, work and now we got an iphone question yeah and based on this call if you still got an iphone 11 <laughs> i think you might need to upgrade it <laughs> yeah it's cut well i but i'm i'm like you i'm a picture a holic and and all that but um I have not had time because of having multiple doctors and things like that and fighting with the insurance companies and yada yada right um and I'm sorry if I have expressive aphasia and, and trans it's post concussion syndrome and it really sucks oh, because yeah. you go from depression to anxiety and then you've got express you know, just crazy. I hate I'm gonna have but, to say uh, with my original comment. Yeah, your phone keeps cutting out a little bit, sweetheart. Yeah. We're so sorry about yeah. your thank you. Um Speedy? You okay? Speedy yeah, the phone kept Did going we ever out. get to the iOS question? We did not. Let me say this. Let me just say this, ma'am. In all honesty, we're not joking now, okay iPhone 11 is that's we're we're talking three or four back now. We yeah. need to probably. I upgrade. think that's what I got, especially if you're a picture holic like Bubba. Yeah, I'm not. Now he great. is a picture holic. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Nobody you know, knows that about Bubba. I have to post almost daily. Um, yeah, I've never so, even I've never even heard that before. I didn't even know what that meant when she said that. Picture holic. Yeah. What, well, what, it takes a lot of pictures. Yeah. She but, just but, likes pictures. But we're but but you're but, not one. But no. I would up I would upgrade your phone because yeah. I know you, you. A lot of times we try to be frugal and not spend the money, but they get outdated pretty quick. What they'll do. Speedy, you proud of yourself? Mm. Mm. We he's, you he's know what we feel it. like, Speedy? Bowling pins, and you know what you just did. You bowled the ball right in here. Yeah. Knocked us all down. Knocked us nice all job. Down. All right. Thanks, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Good work. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. This is the Rick and Bubba Show. Watch more at blazetv.com slash Rick and Bubba.